Oh, and welcome to our second annual International Creator Day, a day set aside to celebrate you, the creator. I'm Renee Teeley, the SVP of Content and Community here at TubeBuddy, and I am thrilled to be kicking off Creator Day. So April 23rd is a very special day. April 23rd is the day the first video was published to YouTube back in 2005, and it was a monumental moment in the history of social video. There are now millions of creators sharing their content across social, not just YouTube, and turning their passions into professions. Content creators have become some of the most powerful voices in the world. Your stories and content have the ability to deeply connect with people across all walks of life, and we think that's something truly worth celebrating. So this day is to celebrate you, the content creator. Uh, for those joining live, please leave a comment about any creators that you want to celebrate in honor of Creator Day. Um, today, we have some very amazing creators joining us live. We're also going to be airing some exclusive recorded interviews from creators that were not able to make it today, but really did want to help celebrate the day and participate. The full creator lineup and schedule is listed in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Um, but this is not an ordinary live stream. This is a live streaming party. So we're gonna be playing games. We're gonna be giving away special prizes all throughout the day, but stick around because you have to be here to win. Um, speaking of being here, it's about time we bring on my co-host for this morning's segment. So please, uh, please welcome uh, me and joining uh, Owen Video. Owen, are you there? There we go. He's almost here. Owen's basically joining from satellite. So he's, uh, yo, there we go. yo, Hello, what's up, Renee? How are you? I am wonderful. I'm even better now that you're here. I am so, you know, and I am so pumped to be here on Creator Day. And I'm pumped to see John Pullum. I'm pumped to see my boy, Nick Nimmin, in the house. For, for those of you guys that don't know, Nick and I really started you know, in this industry together. We've got Dr. Sten Ekberg. Uh, Dr. Sten Ekberg has not only been a friend to the industry, he's not only been a client actually in one of my programs, but he's actually visited me at my home and helped to instruct me in my health, in my own health journey. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about Creator Day. It's about the community that that we have we have formed. And I'm going way off of script here, Renee, because you know I don't know if you guys can like uh, empathize with this, but like we've got this whole situation going where like we're ready to stream. We've got a computer. We've got all of our stuff, and yet the moment. The moment that we press that live video button, that's when everything starts to fall apart. So I want to get real with you guys real fast. I want to show you where I am because I'm actually in Las Vegas in a hotel hanging out with my family who I have a TikTok channel with. We have a quarter million subscribers and we are serial creators. So I'm going to show you a shot of the fam back there in the back. My these are my kids called the chitlins. I'm kind of holding my my mobile phone today right now uh, because my my uh, my other camera was not giving us the internet signal that we needed. But I'm pumped to be here, Renee. I'm pumped to give away some of the stuff that we're giving away, and we're gonna have a just a totally fun segment. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, awesome. You know, I kind of feel like the beauty of live streaming is you sort of just have to roll with the punches. I know before the stream, we had someone's internet went out, my computer was having issues, you basically are calling in from satellite. So uh, we just roll with it. This is going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah be, I, I'm already I'm already having fun. And I'm already like, this is what it's about. This is what the whole thing is. Uh, is about, and I'm excited to talk about some of the things we're going to talk about today, like um, how we got started in the industry. And, and I, I think I have a really interesting story. And I'm, I'm curious to hear from like digital tools. I see pink. Oh, he was so excited that, uh, that he, he dropped off there. So we're going to welcome him back in uh, as soon as he's able to join. Uh, let's just keep it going. So um, in terms of getting started, for the people in the live chat, would love to also hear how you got started in video. 
So any creators that are inspiring you and then how you got started in video and just learning a little bit about your story. Um, oh, and welcome back. Back again, ladies and gentlemen, you can't stop the unstoppable. Yeah, I think you're now doing it just for dramatic effect. You just want to like continue making that dramatic entrance. <laughs> I do. I really need to find like a great intro and outro, like a fade in and a fade out. And, and uh, that, that'll be the next technology in streaming is like making your errors seem planned. I think that would be a, um, a good, a good, uh, a good uh, top, a good software. But can I share with you a little bit about how I got started in, in this industry? Yeah, I would love that because, you know, you and I have actually known each other for a long time. Yeah. We're around the same age. I think we've been in the industry probably for about the same amount of time. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever heard your origin story. Yeah. Well, it started on a dark and stormy night. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I am in um, I am a serial creator. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Owen Video and I actually changed my name from Owen Hemsath into Owen Video when I got started in this industry, I, I had always wanted to have a digital name, like a name that represented my love for digital arts. And when I got started, there, there was no digital arts. And so, so I, I was actually kind of one of those creative kids in high school. I was in the plays. I was even in ASB. And, and, and when I helped do the, like the pep rallies at our school, I would bring in like projectors and I would bring in people that were like in stormtrooper uniforms. Like I, I had these really big, grandiose deals, but there was no, <clears throat> there was no real outlet for that in the real world, like there, like there is today. Like there was no YouTube at that time. Um, there was barely an internet. This is probably right around the year two thousand. So like all of this stuff, the dot com industry was really just getting started. So when I left high school. Um, I, I didn't know what to do with my life. And I got into sales and marketing. I, I, I figured like all the creative stuff, like that was, that was kid stuff. And, and now I had to be an adult. And so I started working in sales and, and marketing and going from different jobs here and there and time, you know, kept going on. It's now 2006. I'm like 26 years old and YouTube hits the scene big time. And I want you guys to know at that time I was working at a radio station and, and my whole goal at the radio station, I was actually in sales. I hated it. How many of you guys have ever been in sales before? You know, just like, give me a yes, give me a like, I've, I've done that. I was in sales, I was making my living, but I was really unhappy and here's what I was doing at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I'd leave my office in Orange County, California. I would leave the office and I would come to my house where I had a green wall behind me in my garage. And I would use one of these little like snap and shoot cameras to take funny green screen pictures and start like doing these Jimmy Kimmel style like news events. Like the other day I saw a rhinoceros, <clears throat> you know, and a rhinoceros pops up behind me. It's just really silly stuff. Well, <clears throat> believe it or not, I got fired from my, my, my radio job. Guys, I've been Talking. fired 22 <laughs> times. I am not designed for the working corporate world. And that's when I decided that I would start a YouTube channel. That's when I decided that I was going to build a career on YouTube. So I packed up all my stuff. I moved into my dad's basement, which was like this huge for me. Having that kind of support early on was fantastic. And I began to make skit comedy videos in my dad's basement, just hoping things would go viral, hoping things would take off on this brand new YouTube platform. Well, some things began to take off. And that's when I really transitioned into being a full-time creator before there were even creators, guys. Now, here's the thing I want you to know about me. And I'll, I'll kind of land the plane here because, Renee, I don't know if you've ever heard this stuff from me before, like talking about getting fired all the time and like living in my dad's basement. I was probably like my late 20s at this time. And uh, I started making videos and I was doing skit comedy and like one of our videos got like 20,000 views in a week. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like what is, what is going on here? I remembered something I learned sort of on my way in, in the sales industry. And it was this, it was 
you know, the people that made the money in the gold rush weren't the people digging gold. It was the people selling shovels. And I, Azure, Azure is saying we are all in sales. Dude, that is so deep, man. That is so deep. You're absolutely right. But you guys get that? I realized that as a video creator, I was digging for gold when I want, when I should be kind of like selling shovels. And so I began to teach video skills to anybody who wanted to go on YouTube. And I started getting calls from the coffee shops. I started to get calls from businesses. I started to develop channels for them. And that's when I became a serial creator. And really, guys, I've been on that journey ever since. I'm here to tell you that my name is Owen Video. I've been mentored by people like Daryl Eves, Jeremy Vest, and even Nick Nimmin, who's such a close friend of mine. And I teach the business world how to get on YouTube. I have a very successful business. My channel, it's not one of the biggest channels, but I make six figures a year from that channel. And it gives me the time to continue to do the things I love to do, which is writing sketch comedy. I love sketch comedy. And I have a quarter million subscribers with my family writing skits. Um, we also have a couple other channels that serial channel creators and I love YouTube. I love TikTok. I love the creator community. And, and I hope that so many, I want to see all of you achieve your dream of, of being a well-known YouTube creator. So I'm here to support you. I'm here to love on you and I'm here to give away a ton of free stuff today. Owen, I love it. I kind of feel like you could double as a motivational speaker. That was amazing. Um, I also, I, at some point, I want to introduce you to my next co-host, um, later in the episode, um, later in the live stream today, her name is Rachel K. Albers, and she does a lot of skit, like sketch comedy as well. Oh. Um, so I think you guys would really get along. Uh, very interesting that you say that you quickly learned that you really need to start selling shovels. I think I actually yeah. started my video career selling shovels. Um, so I'm not really an individual personal creator. I've mostly created, uh, videos for businesses and I've been in video technology since yeah. very early days. Um, but I actually initially considered myself an accidental creator and producer yeah. I was working at video yeah. technology companies. And then I had a lot of, uh, large companies reaching out to me saying, we're doing all of these amazing things with video but we don't know what to do next. And yeah, so I started good. creating a series, helping them figure out what to do next. So I was already working at those companies, video technology companies, and then trying to teach other people on what they should be doing with video, not just on YouTube, but really using video as a core part of their business. Uh, a communication so really tool, analogy. yeah. Yeah, never really heard that analogy before in terms of selling shovels, but I think I started my career off selling shovels, and I'm I'm still I'm still shell selling shovels right now. That's a tongue twister. You, you know, and it's a very it's kind of like I feel like in a lot of ways the the video marketers the 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 business creators are we're the unsung heroes of the industry. Now I don't mean that to like boost my own ego believe me guys i have enough ego for everybody in this room but there are so many of us that are watching right now we're natural creators i heard someone say that they're like uh, a, a full-time musician i'm seeing other people that are doing um very artistic vlog work and you know i i think i have some of those talents and abilities my very favorite thing to do is edit but there's something special about helping a company who doesn't have these skills or a person who doesn't have these skills and coaching them onto this amazing platform. What, what the mission of our business is, is to help those who deserve to be heard get heard, right? That's number one, because so many corporate voices have a microphone and, and they don't I mean, there's not a special message to it. It's just more corporate, you know, messaging. But the other thing is like, there's really optimistic, uplifting businesses out there and creators out there. And we want to like put that into the negative media cycle, right? Like 
these companies that are really helping people. Let's share their stories and encourage a bigger community. And so this business side of the creator thing has always been very special to my heart. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more with that. So enough about us. Let's jump in and start yeah. playing some games. Cool. Um, so I'm going to explain the games just a little bit. Um, so throughout the entire stream today, we're going to be playing different rounds of the world's newest game, Who Wants to Be a Creator? So each round is going to have its own spin. So it's not going to be the same game throughout the entire stream. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different each time, but the rules essentially will be the same. So ultimately, um, let's see here. Let me, uh, let me get to the rules. So the first round, so this is the, the first iteration of this game of who wants to be a creator is all about YouTube trivia. And we are gonna be playing this game specifically with a live audience. So here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna read a multiple choice question that comes up on uh, the screen here. And if you know the answer, write the correct letter and answer in the chat. So this is for the live audience, write the correct answer and uh, the letter in the chat. Be sure to use both. And uh, then it's gonna be up to Owen to pick a random name that he sees that gives the right answer. So yeah. Owen is gonna be picking someone at random, but the more times that you put the answer in chat, the more opportunities you have to be picked. So yes, don't- and here's the thing, I, I wanna give you guys like fun. a, can I give you guys like a trick to winning? Like how to, how to get my attention? Let's do it. All right. Here's the thing. Write the answer down as many times, like literally copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Cause I'm going to pick the name that I see pop up the most. I'm also going to be looking at who's been contributing throughout the show. So if you really want to like stand out above the crowd, be commenting, but also try to make me laugh. Like try to, try to make it kind of silly and let's see what we can what we can come up with. I'm excited to play. I love to play games. I love to give stuff away. So let's do this. All right. Um, okay. So first question, the scandalous event that sparked the idea for YouTube. Was it Kate Moss's drug scandal? Uh, was it B, Miley Cyrus's VMA performance? C, Tiger Woods affair? D, Janet Jackson's Super Bowl halftime show? So put your answers in and give you a moment. Copy paste. Oh, copy, and, paste. oh in fact, copy, paste, did you? I, okay, so we got Kate Moss's drug scandal, Tiger Woods affair, Janet Jackson. A lot of good. Uh, do you know the answer to I mean, Renee, I know you know the answer to it, but like, did you know the answer before this came up? I actually didn't know the answer before. So uh, someone else on our team actually put together these questions. This is legitimately the only one that I've seen as part of this game. So a lot of these answers actually are going to be new to me. But this particular one, I, I didn't know in advance. It's a pretty interesting one. So who said Owen, someone just said someone just said the Johnny Depp trial. That's hilarious. So so we're <laughs> we're going outside the box with that one. <laughs> Um, I have okay. to move. I have to move my my satellite here so I can see some of the names. I'm seeing like Duke of Media saying D. The Canva Classroom. What a fun name for a channel, man. These are going A plus. Russian is saying Triple D. He's doubling down. John John Putnam's here, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up. The Goodness Fund. C. Tiger Woods. All right. So okay. let's let's uh, let's let's pick a winner. So um, if we can go to the answer. Okay, the answer Hello. is D, and we're giving the winner to Young Bart is our winner for this one. Young Bart, stand up and be heard. Now, we got a whole bunch of Ds coming in right now. I think you guys changed your answers. I really think you changed your answers when you got this. But um, who, that, was our, that was our winner for question number one was Young Bart. So Young Bart, stand up and be heard. Renee's going to tell you how to claim your prize. Yes. So for every round, um, the winner is going to wear, uh, they're going to end up winning a Creator Day shirt. So we've got a couple of different Creator Day shirt options. Um, you can't see it, but I'm wearing one right now. Um, and then we have one that actually looks like this logo. So you're going to wear, you're going to win a Creator Day shirt. Um, we have a form that's going to be pinned in the chat. So that should be pinned at the top of the chat. And 
there's a link in that description. So you're going to want to click on that link and you'll put all your information um, into that form and then we'll send you your creator day shirt. Yeah, really good. All right. So let's move on to the next question. All right. Who is not one of the original YouTube founders? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go with first names here. So A, Kevin, B, Jod, C, Steve, D, Chad. Man, this is a good question. This is a good question. How, you know, while you guys are putting in your answers right now, put in your answers. I want you to know Renee and I worked really hard to find like Jeopardy music that we could play right now, but it was technically and like copyrightly so challenging to do. We're just going to talk through it. But, you know, Renee, you and I were there for like when YouTube really hit the scene, like when YouTube hit the Internet, you and I were there. I'm curious to know how many creators watching us right now, like how old were they, you know, when YouTube was actually this is like like 2006, 2008, something like that. You remember those times? Uh, yeah, I definitely remember those times. So um I actually was working at a company around that time that did some of the video streaming for kind of the back end stuff for YouTube. So I didn't work Amazing. at YouTube, but worked at a company that was helping to, to support that. I actually don't know how old the founders are. I have a feeling they're around our age. Yeah. That's yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Okay. I don't know the answer to this one. I'm excited to see the answer to this one. All right. So we've got enough. Got enough answers in the uh, in the chat here. So let's go ahead and see the correct answer. Kevin hey, Seistrom. Kevin. Guys, you guys knew that one, man. That's incredible. So let's see. Let's. I'm going to go through the comments right now and see what we have. We got Daniel Law said C. We got um, platforms as a guy named Kevin. King Kevin TV says Kevin Seistrom. I'm picking King Kevin TV because the answer is Kevin. His channel name is Kevin, and that sounds like a good reason to win. So, Kevin, uh, King Kevin, you just won a Creator Day t-shirt that we are going to send you for free. For free! Right now. So, go to the form in the pinned comment and claim your prize. Guys, that's how this game is played. Okay, there's no rules. It's total chaos. What we <laughs> need from you is to have a good time and just play the game. Just play the game with us. So, congratulations to King Kevin. Give him a big congrats in the uh, the comment section and maybe even go check out his channel. All right. Congrats, King Kevin. All right. Let's go on to the next question. So where did the founders work before starting the platform? A, Apple. Ooh, that's good. B, Facebook. C, Google. D, PayPal. Put those that answers in the chat. Question. I think I know the answer to this one, but do you know... Renee, who founded PayPal? I did at one point. I don't. I don't off the top of my head. He just. He's trying to buy Twitter. Oh, Elon Musk. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, Elon Musk was, I believe, the founding father of PayPal. Now he may have bought into it early. I'm not terribly clear on the details, but you know, it's interesting that the that a, a PayPal founder is now looking at social and. We we see kind of like how how these all sort of kind of progressed around. I I want I think it's Google, but I don't know. This is actually a really good question. What do you guys think? I see seven five five media saying hello. I see John. Dude, John is actively active. But here's what John's doing. John's putting all of the answers multiple times. You sly dog. That you is smart, sly. strategic. <laughs> You guys, I'm telling you, this is your game to play. Who else we have out there? Uh, Stanley Orchard is saying, I was old, 35, but never too old to start. Hey, look, um, Gary V said, he said he's 42 and he's never felt younger. And, you know, there's there's something so true about that. I don't know how many of you guys like Gary V. I personally love Gary V. And you know why I like Gary V is because Gary V is encouraging people who are 25, 30 years old to really like look at themselves as brand new freshlings, you know, and that's, that's the way you should see it because I'm, I'm closer to 40 and I feel like the whole world is my oyster 
at this point. So um, I hope you guys are, are watching and paying attention to that and not letting uh, anything stop you, whether old or young. A plus Russian is saying D all day long. We've got Van Rail. Guys, I want to see it. Give your one last answers again. A, B, C, or D. Where did the founders of YouTube work before starting the platform? I want to see some answers. Adventures with David. Okay. All let's right, see let's the winner. See, let's see the real answer. PayPal. 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 They were I think Elon Musk. <laughs> it, with, there you go. John Pullum is our winner for that one, even though his answer on screen right now says Google. It's okay, John. You did the right thing. You have won a t shirt. John Pullum is our winner for this next question. Awesome. Well, congrats. Let's see. Yep. That wraps up this particular game, but don't worry. We've got a ton more things to give away. Um, Owen, do you want to mention some of the things that we have to give away? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a ton of really cool stuff here. Um, we are giving away a one year to buddy license. Um, you want me to go through kind of all of them that's coming up right now? You know what we're going to do? So we will be giving away lots of prizes throughout the event. Um, but we are going to start off with a bang and give away one of everything in this first section. So let's kind of go through all the different things that we're going to give away. But we're going to do one uh, of everything right now. This is an amazing creator package, guys. We're giving away a one-year buddy legend license. You guys, I use a legend license for my business. It is incredibly, incredibly valuable. We're giving away an automated channel review. Are you looking to get your channel unstuck? You're going to get a channel review. We're giving away a one-year license to Social Blue Book, an amazing resource to help you get brand deals and to get what you're worth. We're also giving away a one-year pro license to Ecamm, which is the best live streaming video production tool for Mac users. We're going to be giving away um, some merch and some, some vouchers from Spreadshop. Lots of really, really great prizes coming up today. Awesome. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start giving things away. So first up, we have, let's see, what is the first one? First one is TubeBuddy. So we're going to give away a TubeBuddy license. Um, enter the word legend in the chat. And then we'll randomly pick a winner. So right now, right now, guys, that, put the word, that legend. word legend. Now, where's my Scotty girl? My Scotty girl is going to help me pick the winner on this one. Guys, type the word legend into the chat area right now. I'm not sure, Renee, if my chat is populating over here. I don't see a lot of changes happening in my. Yep. Oh, there and there he goes. No worries. Keep putting in that word legend. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a winner for us. Yeah, my chat is um appearing and disappearing. So some some tech issues here. Um all right, so I'm going to like we had uh Chris Wong. Chris Wong, you are the winner for the two buddy legend package. So there is a pinned comment with the form. Make sure you fill out that form. And we'll get you your two buddy legend level license. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next giveaway. And our next giveaway is a channel review. So put the word um, review in the chat. So put it in there as many times as you want, and I'm gonna pick a random winner. I still see a lot of legends. Let's pick next. Continue putting Here we go. in uh, chant. Picking in review. All right. We're picking the word review. There, I see it. I see. I don't want to say any names yet. I'm going to tell uh, Scotty Girl. Everybody, this is Scotty Girl. She's got over 10 million views on TikTok. Say hello, sweetie. She's very funny and she knows it. That's, let me just tell you guys. Okay, let's <laughs> see it. Ready? I'm ready to pick a winner. Chris Channel. Say Chris Channel's the winner. Chris Channel. No, you got to say it with gumption. You got to say it with fire. So yeah, Chris Channel's the winner. Chris Channel's the winner. Chris Channel is the winner. Yeah, Chris Channel. Congrats to Chris. Uh, again, make sure you're using that um, pinned comment so that you can enter the form uh, and that we can get that channel review over to you. Uh, so yeah. next, go ahead, Owen. 
I was just going to say that channel review is so helpful, guys. You know, I, I believe you should all be getting channel reviews, you know, every six months to one year because you get so stuck in your own creation that you, you need the outside eyeballs to help you really dial in a, a plan. And so don't, don't scoff that channel review off. Really dig into it and use it as a point to take your channel to the next level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's going to help you learn the things that kind of are getting you stuck right now and getting unstuck. So next up, we have Ecamm. So Ecamm, Ooh. one of the best live streaming platforms out there. Um, put the word Ecamm in the chat. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Populate it, populate it, populate it, guys. I want to see Ecamm. I want to see Ecamm in there. And here I am. I'm starting to see it. I see you guys. Okay. The names are pop. Look, if you don't know, okay, here we go. Now we're seeing it. I want to see some excitement from you guys. I want to see like all caps, make it stand out. Someone put an emoji, please. Like, okay, here we go. I'm starting to see some stuff here. I'm starting to see some stuff. I'm about to pick a winner. Okay. I, I know the winner now. Let me tell you something guys about Ecamm. Ecamm is a phenomenal product for not just live streaming and doing cool stuff while you're live streaming, but it's also a great product to just use if you're recording screen share tutorials, if you're recording for Amazon, if you're, if you're like kind of do trying to do it live and getting it up on YouTube later, like we do a lot of that. And Ecamm is a very big tool to eliminate editing on the post, you know, or at least minimize it. So I hope that you guys really understand Ecamm. Okay. Ready here. Okay. Here we go. I got, people texting me saying, oh, and shut up and pick a winner. So I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm going to pick, ready? Dr. My Curls. Dr. My Curls is the big winner of the Ecamm giveaway. Did you pick them because it's such an amazing name? Dr. I, my Curls? <laughs> I did. I, she, look, she just said, I need that Ecamm. I asked for exclamation. Oh, and he's gone, but Congratulations again to Dr. Ryan Curls. Make sure that you're hitting the pinned comment, filling out that form so that we can get um, the Ecamm prize over to you. So next up, we have a uh, social blue book. So let's see what the word of the day is for social blue book. Um, all right, here we go. So for social blue book, uh, put in the word blue book. So blue book, uh, one word, Put it in chat, copy paste, put it in over and over again, and we'll pick a winner. I see a lot of people putting in social blue book. Just make it easy on yourself. Blue book, blue book, blue book. All right. And I'm going to pick a winner here. We've got Midnight Wolf Tarot. Midnight Wolf Tarot, congratulations to you. Um, make sure you're filling out that pinned form and we'll get your uh, social blue book uh, prize over to you. All right. So we're a little bit behind time. So we're going to um, kind of speed through some of these. Next up is um, a prize from Spread Shop. So this is a very special prize. We are going to be giving away a um, hundred dollar voucher that you can use on your own merch shop. So if you have your own merch shop, you want to uh, buy some merch from your own shop, uh, you can do that with this $100 voucher. So you don't have to use it on Creator Day gear, although uh, I do think that's a wonderful design. You can use it on your own design. $100 uh, gift voucher. So the word is shop. So put in the word shop over and over. Copy and paste. Shop. Shop till you drop. All right, James, come over here. I'm going to introduce the the announcer of our next winner. This is my son, James. He's my oldest son. Also has somewhere around 10, 12 million on, on TikTok. He's very, very funny. And we got to pick someone, James, that said the word shop. Okay, so we're going to, uh, uh, let's pick someone right now. Pick somebody. What What is the blue name that you see? Win Alico. Win, was it Win Alexa or Win Alico? I don't know. It was something like that. That is our winner. They went so fast. It was hard to see. I think it was Win Alexa was what it was. Give me five. Great job. Is our winner of the Spread Shop merch voucher. 
Awesome. Make sure you're using that pinned form so that we can get your information. Um, next up, this is a very cool one. I'm excited about this one. It is hot sauce from uh, Daniel Patal. Now I have to say, I don't like hot sauce. You may see this later on when we get to the spicy challenge. If you saw the uh, Creator Day live stream last year, you may have seen me cry on camera for the very first time. Not a spicy person, but wow. I actually do love this sauce. I'm not paid to say this, um, but I actually think the flavor is really good. It's still hot, um, but the flavor is just amazing. So, Are we, are we talking about actual hot sauce that Daniel Batal is going to ship to someone? We are talking about actual hot sauce that he took massive care to ship to me and I will ship to someone. Wow. Um, the packaging and detail that he put into this was just amazing. I freaking love that guy. That that guy is like a creator for creators. So that's really exciting. Okay, we're picking a winner. Who is the winner of the hot sauce, ladies and gentlemen? Well, first off, they don't know what word to put in. Oh, um, I just saw the hot sauce. People are People are getting our style here. All right, let's do it. Just put the word hot sauce in over and over. We got we got other people writing ecam. I get it. I'm sorry, guys. That <laughs> ship has sailed. Okay, I'm ready. It's G-Free. It's, it's Jeffrey. It's G-Free is our winner. And I'm telling you why I picked uh, Jeffrey is because he has been playing this games. I've seen that name come up over and over and over again. And, uh, and that's how we're picking this winner. So it's Jeffrey, it's G-Free. You are the winner of the Daniel Batal hot sauce. Prepare to live, my friend. Prepare to live. Awesome. Well, it pays to be persistent. Congratulations. Um, we do have one last prize, if we have time for that. I know we're, we're already a little behind. Um, but if we have a slide for uh, Spreadshop's Team Awesome, do we have a slide for that? You guys have been so great, like just having a good time, hanging out. Like I really love that you're spending your Saturday morning with us. You're spending time, you know, with the community to celebrate each other because we all work so hard, don't we? And people make fun of us and they go, oh, your YouTube thing or oh, your little thing. But it's so much effort. So much of our heart goes into these channels. And I'm so glad you guys are joining us today. All right, so we're back to we're back to Spreadshop. So Team Awesome is um, a service provided by Spreadshop. This is very very special. It's not something that's offered uh, very often. Essentially, the Team Awesome um, group over at Spreadshop will help with strategy. So not not every creator has already um, done some type of merch launch, but if you're creating merch, you want to make sure that you're getting in front of the right audience, um, that you're launching it in the right way. Um, and the Spreadshop team is going to help you put together a full launch strategy for your merch. So something really, really special. So key. Um, so put in the chat the word awesome, because this is going to be awesome. Put it over and over. Awesome. I want to see it. You know, getting my merch... Uh, first of all, I know the team over here at Spreadshop, and they know what they're talking about, guys. Most of the creators that I hang out with, you know, 5 million subs, 10 million subs, their money comes from programs and merch. And having a merch thing set up is so, so, so key. Are we ready to pick a winner, Renee? Let's pick a winner. Let's do it. Are we ready to pick a winner? Here it is, the winner of the Spread Shop Team Awesome giveaway is my good friend, a fan of TubeBuddy, a creator among creators, A Plus Russian. A Plus Russian, stand up and be heard. He's been, I'll tell you, A Plus Russian is around and on all the streams, is answering all the questions, and it's a pleasure to see your name with the right answer or with the right word. So uh, A Plus Russian, congratulations. All right. Well, congratulations. You are definitely in for a treat. So I have the pleasure of working with Spreadshop um, on the Creator Day merch, and their team was fantastic. I worked directly with uh, with DJ over there, and I got to tell you, they just went above and beyond, and we're super excited and just truly a partner uh, in this collaboration. So um, congratulations to you. Uh, I uh, do not think you're going to be disappointed in that. All right. 
So we are a bit um, a bit behind on time. So we're going to move on to the next um, to the next segment here. Uh, so Owen, thank you so much um, for joining. Um, I'm going to bring on a new guest, um, Rachel K. Albers. So she's going to stick around. We're going to do a session together, um, and then she's going to join me as a co-host. And Owen, I want to introduce you to Rachel K. Albers because I think you guys could do some really fun, amazing um, uh, sketch comedy stuff together or just, you know, entertain each other. It's always good. Creators supporting creators. I can't wait to, uh, to do that introduction. And I can't wait to be what to continue watching Creator Day from uh, for the whole rest of the day. It's really exciting what you guys are doing. And thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, thank you, Owen. All right, let's bring on Rachel. <laughs> what Whoa, oh, my God. Jinx, co-host twins. Let's do it. You know, I feel awkward calling you Rachel. I'm like compelled to always say Rachel K. Albers, like the full name. Well, it's in my contract, Renee. So you better. You better. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, I owe some money. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, welcome. So um, I don't have like a great introduction to you other than you are one of the funniest people I know. I rave about you all the time internally. Rachel fits <laughs> into... Um, I don't know if you would uh, classify yourself this way, but I view you as sort of a business comedian, um, really oh, adding yeah, yeah. humor to uh, what normally is kind of dry topics. Well, you can be my hype woman. I'll bring you on the road with me. You're hired. <laughs> Get those red M&Ms in my dressing room, Renee. This is a no, demand. I'm all about it. That's yeah. an order. <laughs> Yeah, you know, business comedian, I will say I wear the title. I'll take it. I like it's what the kids call me because I tell them to. That's what I like to say. <laughs> right. So nice. Uh, yep. Um, awesome. So in this session, um, I originally wanted to call this session uh Rachel K. Albers teaches Renee how to be funny, but I did not want to set you up for failure. So <laughs> So in this session, uh, we're really going to be talking about how you can add humor to your YouTube videos, even if you're not naturally funny. And see, that's the first myth we're going to tackle today, Renee, because I believe that there's a comedian inside every person. I think humor is a natural part of the human experience. Like even when you're standing at the grocery store and like you're in line and something awkward happens our tendency is to be like, -dum -bum like, whoa, something's going on there, right? I think that we all want to make every moment that we can lighter. So I think people are naturally funny. They got some mindset issues, maybe some creators with like meditations, put them in the chat, right? Like, what, how can we meditate our way out of this imposter syndrome, Renee? That's right. You know what? I, I don't have imposter syndrome. I think I'm hilarious. The oh. problem is nobody <laughs> else does. <laughs> See, but you know what? It's you, all, sometimes all you need is an audience of one. I loved it. I sit all, I laugh at myself all day. I think I'm my biggest fan. So that's where you got to start. Start yep. making yourself laugh, right? So before we dive into some questions around how to infuse humor in uh, YouTube videos, I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit about your own videos. So I know you have a show called The Awkward Marketing Show. I think yes. you have a few other shows too, but I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, Owen was talking about his sketch comedy on his channel and I take a, a bit of a different approach because yes, I have done it. My claim to fame is I've done over 165 characters in my, in my, I think four, almost five years of, of doing sketch comedy, but I call it business comedy. And one of the unique ways that I use YouTube that I think is different than people who kind of consider themselves 100% YouTube creators is I'm taking my YouTube content and infusing it all over my marketing flywheel, like in all different places. It's in every stage of my onboarding when I bring a new client into the, you know, and I'm repurposing it all across the internet. So I don't identify first and foremost as a YouTube creator. And that's also why I love TubeBuddy because it helps me spend less time figuring out YouTube, right? Like who has time for that? Um, and instead, and that's why also I've kept my channel kind of into, well, I'm going to say I kept my channel small on purpose. We're just going to say that's the strategy here, but I have a little bit more of an intimate channel. And I think my story 
is helpful for those creators that have smaller audiences because the truth is, despite having a small YouTube audience, I have been able to take and republish and repurpose my my videos in so many different ways that they have made such a massive impact on my business without having to have millions of subscribers. So I use sketch comedy and I have all of these characters that I've done over the years to talk about business, to teach about marketing and to kind of make fun of some of the marketing things that drive people nuts and and make it feel more accessible, make it feel less awkward. That's that's where awkward marketing com comes from. Yeah, so um, I'm I'm a huge fan of your show. So I watch it all the time on uh, on YouTube, but also on LinkedIn. So I see a lot of the content on LinkedIn too. The repurposing there, which is which there is great. There we go. Yes, and sometimes I'll post it natively on you LinkedIn, and sometimes I link to YouTube. I kind of you know switch it up um, to see kind of how the algorithm is is playing today. And I think that's another strategy to use on different platforms as well. Sometimes you're driving people back over to your channel. Sometimes you want to kind of look at a platform like LinkedIn or Facebook, for example, wants to keep users on those platforms, right? So they don't really, they're not going to privilege content that's driving people back to YouTube. So I'm always kind of doing a both and. Sometimes I'm driving people back to YouTube, but I take a little bit of a algorithmic hit when I do that. Sometimes I, I uh, post natively. And so I'm just basically reformatting the video. It Like I'll reformat it for Instagram. I'll reformat bits of it for TikTok. And that way, when I'm putting all this time and energy into creating these really high production value comedy videos, it's not a one hit wonder. It's not like if it doesn't perform massively on YouTube, well, then I'm like, why did I waste the time? I can take and repurpose this across every single platform. Yeah. Yeah. So smart. We do the same thing. So we figure out kind of strategically, yes, there are times if you are sharing a video uh, on LinkedIn that that's a link over to, to YouTube, it's not going to be promoted as much. But maybe strategically you want to do that and it's worth yeah. it's it's worth taking that hit. I want to build the channel slowly but surely, one subscriber at a time, Renee. That's really uh, one brick at a time. Well, you certainly get a lot of views from me. So one of the things that I love about your show is that um, it is entertaining. So I think it's, you know, it's it's funny. You've obviously got a great style, um, but but people can learn from it too. So it really is very entertaining very uniquely you um, and, and, and also very informative. So, okay. Are you trying to be my best friend? Because yes, <laughs> I we, thought I already was. What do you mean? <laughs> yes. This is it. This is the moment. Everybody's on YouTube and witness the moment that <laughs> happened. We're BFFs. Um, so what are some tips that you have for other creators who um, maybe you're naturally doing kind of informational, educational style of, of content and, don't feel it's not that they're not naturally funny. They just haven't necessarily figured out how to infuse a little bit of that humor into their content without it feeling forced. Yes. And I'm glad you brought up the informational aspect of this because people often don't want to infuse humor into their content because they're like, you know, I'm talking about kind of a serious topic or maybe this is, you know, going to distract from my main message. But here's the thing. They did studies back in the day that when people watch the news and they watched a comedy news show like The Daily Show or Stephen Colbert or something like that, they actually retain more information than when they're watching the straight news, which is so fascinating because what humor does, it, it actually helps our brain break down and understand and remember complex, difficult concepts. And that's the other thing about humor being such an important element of, of informational, but whatever videos that you're creating, because in a C, I was just talking to a photographer client the other day. She teaches people photography hacks. And when she got started, she went, she, you know, she tried to learn how to use her camera using YouTube videos. And it's just like, gosh, 35 minute long, like, you know, some guy with a beard, like sitting there being like, well, here's the aperture. And they're like, <laughs> sorry, if you got a beard, no shade. Like I love the be actually, I do love a bearded man. So I don't know, like this is we're, we're turning this into a love line situation, but this is where she started. And it, it made her completely tune out the information. When we infuse our content with comedy, first of all, it keeps people watching longer right? They're, they're having a good time. They're enjoying themselves. They're going to stay, which as a teacher, if you're an instructor, if you're trying to, you know, it, teach difficult or just 
long concepts, you want to keep people on there as long as you can, right? That's going to help your algorithm. And so humor helps you do that. It also makes you unforgettable, right? In a sea of boring people, you know, talking about, you know, just being talking heads, the humor is what helps you kind of rent space in people's brains long after they've watched your stuff. And that's kind of the secret of my show, Awkward Marketing. I'm talking about kind of like, you know, I'm talking about search engine optimization and how to market to your clients and writing copy. And this stuff can be overwhelming and intimidating for people and hard for them to understand. And just like, it's not their favorite topic. And yet they remember, because they'll be like, oh, I remember when you did that office parody or you were like doing a launch, you know, and it was saved by the bell. And they remember the saved by the bell. And then they remember the things that I taught them about launching their program or writing their copy or whatever. And so it makes you memorable. It makes your content memorable. It makes the, my sister is studying for this big HR examination. I mean, what's more, what could be more dry and boring than human? Really, she's learning all of the details of human resources. And I'm like, you got to associate the things that you're learning with like memes. Like you got to make jokes out of it because when you're sitting there taking the test and you remember the meme, you, it's going to help you remember that like seven stage anagram that you had to remember for all of the HR tips that you're trying to jam into your brain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in terms of humor, um, obviously there's lots of reasons why you want to incorporate humor into your content, but I have seen it where it just falls flat, especially a lot of businesses do this with wraps around marketing and, and other things like that. So what is your advice for like things to avoid um, in terms of trying to incorporate humor into your content? Well, I got a few tips that'll help you kind of stay on the right track. Um, when I'm helping people infuse their content with a little bit more humor, first of all, I like to say, start with spr sprinkle, don't spray is like, I, is what I like to say. Meaning, you know, people get intimidated. They're like, well, I can't just come up with like a million jokes a minute. And I'm like, you don't have to. And in fact, if you're not like a, a comedian, probably you shouldn't. And a little goes a long way. I was doing my makeup today and I was teaching that to my kid. I was like, you don't need your entire face covered in blush, just a touch, a little goes a long way. So I like to say sprinkle, don't spray. When you're just getting started, I like to say, start with levity over hilarity. It's finding the light moments, finding the you know two core elements of comedy are truth and surprise, okay? And so there's so much, that's why we say it's funny because it's true, right? So we wanna be looking for the truth that we're kind of shedding light on and there's different ways to do that. But- and, and we're looking to be unexpected. We're looking to, infuse. I think sometimes people go wrong because they like do the same old played out dad joke that you've heard a million times. And you're like, womp, 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 you know? So yeah, I kind of like dad jokes. <laughs> I mean, listen, I got, I got, a, I got a million dad jokes piled up right here for the rest of our co-hosting today. So uh, I'm glad to hear it. But, you know, it's all about just keeping things light. You don't have to be like a stand-up comedian. Um, and really it's about thinking like a human being. People get too in their heads about this stuff. Like I was saying with the grocery store, humans are naturally looking for the humor in every situation. So I see, especially with like business accounts, they're really trying to like have this very staid like suit and tie. And then they've got some like, you know, Michael Scott office joke that they put it in. And everyone's like, oh God, this is awkward. Cringe. Right. And it's like, you're talking to people whether we're running businesses or we're creators that are doing this as our passion project, whatever it might be, there is no like business version of ourselves, right? And we've seen that, especially over the last few years in the great resignation, people are like, you know what? I am a human being first and foremost. I don't have like a suit and tie version of me that I pull out to go to work. Honor the humanity of your audience. And I think the last thing I would say about what to avoid is you want to avoid making fun of your audience, being cruel or mean to your audience. Sometimes people will like, they, they, <laughs> they defer to kind of poking fun at the people that they're, they're trying to serve. They're trying to speak to. And if you look at my show, awkward marketing is kind of uh, an indicator of what to do instead. I create these really exaggerated characters and exaggeration is one form of humor. I create these really ridiculous, wild, exaggerated characters that people might see a little of themselves in, but they're so extreme and so wild and funny that it, it it doesn't feel like an attack, right? So we can all laugh together at ourselves and feel like we're in on the joke. 
versus I think sometimes I see humor that it's like it's so close to truth that you're that there isn't any comedy to it. I'm like, you know what you can do is just like, stretch that out, make it super exaggerated. And then it becomes like kind of more clownish and funny and it, it creates a, a more safe environment to receive the joke. Yeah, I think that's a good point, actually, because there is a fine line between like, you know, poking fun at someone and just an insult. <laughs> like there's there's a you can yeah. quickly cross over. I have seen at conferences before where some of the speakers will try to have a little bit of like fun with the audience, but it turns into like insulting them just a little bit. And so you hear some like awkward laughs. Like people are like, do I laugh? Do I not laugh? Like that's kind of, that's not. That's As not a comedian, that is the la the worst. I'd rather a heckler than a, like a, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh, but I've been there. We've all had a tough room, you know? And yep. then you just got to roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of rolling with it, um, these are all great tips around infusing humor into, into your content. Um, I'm taking notes back here. Um, but I'd love to move on to, let's play a game. Let's Ooh, let's, okay. let's yes. do a game together. I like to play. Let's, let's do it. All right. Let me. All the games are slightly different. So let me see the rules oh on this one. All right. This is why um, I'm not good on Twitter, Renee. It's all about the one liner over there. And I don't know. We're going to see. Yeah. No, I have a feeling you're going to be great at this one. Okay. So this is a <laughs> what do you mean game? We're going to show a an image. And then you are basically going to come up with a caption. And I would love for the audience to come up with a caption too. So while you're playing, the audience can come up with a caption. If you want, you can steal a caption from the audience um, or come up, come up with your own. Phone a friend. In there. <laughs> I will phone a friend here. Now, these are creator YouTube content creator related captions, right? These are yes, make it make it relevant to content <laughs> creators uh, if possible. Um, okay, and then we're have some bad in jokes chat, in here. I can just feel it in my heart. Everyone in the chat, come up with your uh, best um, meme uh, saying for this meme as well. And then we're gonna give away some Creator Day shirts. So um, after uh, Rachel K. Albers, after you come up with your memes. We're going to have you pick a winner from um, the live audience here that's one of your favorites uh, from the live audience. And then we're going to get right. a So let's okay. get into it. Oh, oh, okay. Boop, 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 boop. You know what this makes me think of? All right. I want to see something in the chat here. Help me out because you know I'm not the one line queen. This is why I can't tweet to save my life. Oh, uh, this little baby. I just want to pinch some cheeks. I just want to squish you can, him. You can steal an answer if you want, but I have to say, if you steal an answer, you might also want to designate that person as the winner just to give back a little. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what? This is all about community over uh, competition. I'm here for that. Of course, got to cite right. your sources. No joke stealing in here. I that's like that is a cardinal rule of com comedy. Not cool to steal a joke. Okay, you know what? Okay, we're talking about YouTube creator specific stuff. This is my face. I'm going to give you mine. This is my face when I post a new video at the same time that a big news event happens in the media. And then I'm like, right? You post some great content. And now it's like everybody's talking about Johnny Depp, like Owen was saying. And it's like, oh, gosh. Of course, today is the day that Janet Jackson shows her, you know, shows her nipple on the Super Bowl, right? Do we have a sensor button? <laughs> oh, can I say nipple? Yeah, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I mean, go uh, keep saying it. <laughs> all right. All right. So that's all me. Right. That's mine. Right, I told you I'm not a one line queen. This is okay. It's, it's lightness. It's lightness over hilarity. That's the thing. All right. Let's pick a winner. Oh, from okay. I see vlogs set. by Taisha. It was when you, oh, God. And now I, I lost it. Let me go back down. Oh. I saw hers. It was so funny. When you do a viral video idea and your video doesn't go viral. See, this is why I need a writer's room. I need a writer's room. That's my winner. That was my winner. When you do a viral video and it doesn't go viral. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. That's why you got to workshop your jokes. They're not all winners, people. Can't yep. win them all. <laughs> teamwork. Teamwork on that one. Um, all right. So for the person who won, make sure you're filling out that pinned form at the top so that we can get your Creator Day t-shirt to you. This is the only thing I have to show for the Creator Day t-shirt because you can't see my t-shirt at the moment. So we'll get that Creator Day t-shirt over to you. All right. Let's uh, move to the next one. Ooh. 
<laughs> what is your caption for this? I mean, okay, all right. This one, it just never stops being hilarious. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm losing my pods. Oh God. All right, help me out here, people. Oh! Ah! This was not planned as part of the show. This, this is was show comedic, comedic relief. <laughs> the show must go on. This is, you know what? And also another comedy tip is you just want to live in the moment. And, and an improv tip is you respond to what's happening around you. So instead of the AirPod falling and me being really awkward about it, although you could make an argument for that, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to make it part of the experience, right? This is show business. We're leaning in. That's the um, yes and approach, it's right? The yes and. Yes. <laughs> and let me think of a thing. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to have the guy in the center is a content creator and the girl in the dress, the woman in the red dress is TikTok. And the blue, and the woman in blue is YouTube, right? I think yeah, that's I love it already. Right? Oh, so I good. think she's doing the awkward laugh. She's doing the awkward laugh. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate it though. That was I need it. Does my laugh not seem genuine? I need to work. I need to work on my genuine laugh. <laughs> I'm just insecure. All, that's another thing. Uh, here's, a, here's a wonderful tip. All uh comedian i mean like the heart of comedy is just like you know insecurity so if you doubt if you look in the mirror and you say who am i every day you too could be a comedian okay let me look in the chat let's find a winner here <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh um okay wait, wait 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 let me let me see it come on people some of these are like right on the Honey, nose, like up. very literal. <laughs> okay, me, I Claw shot Sham YT me uploading. See, this is the thing; they go so fast, and we had to read them. Me up, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find me uploading long videos versus YouTube shorts. I think that's so. We've got the long video is in red, maybe, or maybe that's the blue, and then the YouTube shorts is over there. Who knows? Who know? we'll I'm going to guess it. that the red dress is YouTube shorts. And okay, if YouTube you shorts, are thinking yes. about uploading YouTube shorts and you haven't figured out the right strategy for that, we do actually have a session later on talking all about shorts in general. So whether it's for YouTube or TikTok. So stick around for that. Um, for that Boom. Session. All right. So for, Boom, for the person who won uh, that meme, um, make mm -hmm. sure you uh, hit the form on the, the, pinned, the pinned comment there so we can get that Creator Day t-shirt over to you. You notice how I'm not even trying to win here, Renee, because I am a giver. Okay. That's. <laughs> oh. You're already a winner. All Damn. right. Caption for this one. What my mom says. Um, I love this one. I love this one. Wait a minute. Ain't you took funny about giveaways. You just moved on. So can we go back to that last meme? These giveaways are not a joke, people. <laughs> How about that? Ba -dum -ba -dum. There we go. Okay. I like this one a lot. Um, okay. I'm looking in the chat. Should I make this video as one? Right? Yeah. You know, this is me because I never do this. This is like, and it, this isn't even funny, but this, this is why you have to lean in. You just got to try, got to experiment with stuff. But I feel like this is me when I'm doing my keyword research before I title my video, like before I make my video, because I'm always putting out my videos and then after the fact i'm like you know i gotta optimize that have you ever heard of optimization rk yeah i heard of it and i you know i'm ghosting so yeah that's mine now you see i'm really i wasn't lying when i said i'm not the one line queen no i, I didn't mean, even get an awkward it. laugh from renee on that one it's okay yeah. it's that's serious business right there you gotta optimize your videos. keywords are not a joke keywords are no laughing matter um <laughs> okay i'm gonna uh right, who's our winner pick from chat i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking i'm trying to find Ooh, uh, think insurance when your channel is a johnny depp fan page i mean it's relevant it's hot it's now and that's a new that's another tip here is that when you're struggling with humor and you want to kind of play around look to what's happening in the media look what's happening in the news hop on the train have some because oftentimes a joke that wouldn't perform elsewhere like when a topic is trending it makes you funnier just because people want to are interested in the topic at the time. So I like it. I'm going to give it Johnny Depp really is like he's <laughs> he's the theme of the day. He's the mascot of creator day for better or worse. We don't he's know. Definitely, definitely the theme. So I feel like you're setting me up for this, but uh, we also have a session later on talking about trends and how to capitalize on trends. 
Um, so that actually is a really great way to go viral. So if you haven't had your first viral video, hopping on trends is a good way to increase your chances uh, of doing that. The goal shouldn't just be to go viral, but um, obviously we want more views on our videos. So uh, have a session all around that. So for the winner of, of this one, make sure you're filling out that comment on the pinned, uh, filling out the form on the pinned comment so that we can get your creator day t-shirt over to you. Um, I think that's, oh, we have one more meme here. All right. This is, this, this is, is a her. personal favorite. This yeah, is this my, is uh, this is my, scary. <laughs> it is a little scary, but that child lives inside of me. Let me just tell you that. And if you know, you know, um, you know, what comes up for me about this is like, when you post two videos in one day and then you don't post anything for a week and you're like, the algorithm can burn itself down. I don't care. Right. Like that's my vibe when I, cause I'm the kind of creator that Sometimes I do batch out a lot of content and then I release it over time. But I also am always telling my, you know, my, my clients and the people that I advise around their content marketing, when you've got a hot idea and you are feeling inspired, don't write it in your notebook and, you know, put it on the page for later because you're going to lose the steam. You're going to lose the juice. And sometimes, like I was saying about content repurposing, you put something on YouTube, it may not make a massive YouTube, YouTube splash right away. And then it's your job to distribute it, to re, you're the promoter of your own content, right? So put it in your email newsletter, put it on your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your TikTok, your Instagram, your, your Snapchat. Do people Snapchat anymore, Renee? I don't even know. Uh, put it everywhere you can and live in the moment. So that's mine. It's not very funny, but it is true. Okay. Um, let me see if somebody's making me funny in the truth. I learned that today. Yes, truth and surprise. <laughs> All right, who's our winner from chat? Uh, YouTuber is posting an unedited one hour long Minecraft game. <laughs> like I, that is, <laughs> let's play. That is kind of like a burn it down. Like I do what I want kind of an attitude. So there you go. That's our winner. Love it. You know what? And that video may get a lot of views. There's like, there's so many crazy gaming videos know. that end That's up getting views. You also never know. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> never I mean, know. You, you gave a good tip, tip for like jumping on the trends or jumping on the hot, but you can't predict virality. You really cannot. People spend too much time. That would be my other tip. We were talking about what, where people go wrong. People spend too much time trying to go viral. And that is probably the most cringe. Like when you see a video that you can really tell like, especially from a business, like a company, and they're like hopping on a trend, it's like a year too late. You know, when those TikTok trends go and it's like six months later, and then like some corporate, you know, dude is like, we gotta get on TikTok. And then they're doing a dance that nobody's been doing for six months. Don't, come on, let's, it, let's move There's on. some humor in it, but not in the way that they want. It's people Correct. laughing. It's, it's, it's a gift for them. us. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. where our group awkward marketing came from. Oh my gosh. This is me right now. This is literally me right now trying to meme my way through the day. Oh. Is that is that your meme? Is that is that your caption for this one? That's it. Let's just go. That's I'm, I'm going to ride hot with that. Mm -hmm. That's your easy out. All right. Let's pick one from the audience. Okay. Okay. We got some wild ones in here. Y'all are thinking outside the box. Okay. Hold on. Give me a joke, people. Lay one on me. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I need a joke. So this is the thing, you can't force it. You got to live in the moment. How to remember A-B test. Uh, yeah. I, you know what? I'm going to give it to them. They tried. And that's all, all right. you need. <laughs> A for effort on that one. Uh, so for the winner, make sure that you go up to the pinned comment and fill out the form so that we can get you your Creator Day t-shirt. Um, so that wraps up the what do you meme section, but we still have some additional giveaways. Uh, so I I think the yes. first giveaway is from Spreadshop. Is that our, there we are. Okay. So um, for this one, it's another, it's another one for the live audience. Um, we will be giving mm. another hundred dollar voucher that you can use on your own Spreadshop account. Um, so if you want to buy some merch for yourself to give away to friends and family, whatever it may be, you've got a hundred dollar voucher to give that away. Um, enter the word shop in the chat, copy and paste, copy and paste, enter it as many times uh, as you can. And then, uh, Rachel K Albers is going to pick the winner. So you can randomly yes. pick someone from the audience. 
Control C, Control V. Let's go. Maybe it's a Command C if you're on a Mac. We're just going to, you know, we're going to make. Okay, let's say, give it to me, baby. Bow. You know what? Casual Leanne, that wrestling fan. I like the Casual Leanne, that wrestling fan. You rhyme and you're a woman after my own heart. So let's do it. Love it. All right. Make sure you're filling out the pinned comment. Um, get your uh, information into that form so that we can send you the hundred dollar voucher from Spreadshop. Um, mm. Amazing team to work with. So, um, all right. Next up is uh, channel reviews. So channel reviews is from TubeBuddy. This is really a way for you to figure out what is going on with your channel and where you've seen success and where there's some room for improvement. So an incredible tool. Uh, channel reviews. Um, put the word review in the chat. So copy and paste, copy and paste, put it in as many times you can. And Rachel K. Albers is going to pick our winner. Rachel K. Albers. I'm too insecure for a channel review. I got to work up to, I got to go to therapy first. Okay. Uh, I'm thing fragile. About the, great thing about the channel review is you don't have to share it with anyone else. It's just okay. going to help you get better. I'll just, I'll just cry in the bath while I read my review. That's fine. That's how we're going to do it. You know what? I like Renzi style. Renzi style. Put some cool emojis in there. I just went ahead and picked. I just went away. I went away with it. Yep. Renzi that's style. Wonderful. It's your that's day. Wonderful. All right. So make sure that you are claiming your prize by filling out the form in the pinned uh, comments. And then we can get that channel review. Uh, information over to you. Next up is a TubeBuddy Legends level license. So this is our top tier license here at TubeBuddy. Um, it's going to help you with uh, bulk edits, A-B testing, lots of optimization, all sorts of great stuff. So um, for this one, uh, put the word legend in the chat. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Put it in there as many leg times as you can. Leg end. That's what it is. It's a leg end. We were preparing for the show. They just <laughs> had the word leg in there. And I was like, I can't believe you're giving away legs. This we're is giving real... away arms. We're giving away legs. We're doing it all, aren't we? Okay. Hold on. Rachel K. Albers is coming in hot. Marcus Grant, it's your day. Marcus Grant, you never knew the day where you were going to become a legend. There we Today go. You woke, up, you, you woke up and you became a legend. And that's what's happening. Marcus Grant. Awesome. Awesome. Make sure you fill out the information in that pinned comment, fill that form, and uh, we can get the Legends level license over to you so you can take advantage of that. Um, awesome. Well, we're going to move on to our next segment. Um, Rachel would, Rachel K. Albers would love for you to stick around. Don't go anywhere. Oh, you're going to be my co host for this one. All right. You, yeah, you're, you're in for a treat with this one. So, um, this next segment, I am just going to go out on a limb and say it's near, near and dear to both of our hearts. Mm -hmm. It really is about building a business around your content. So not just being a content creator, but really using your content to market and sell your own products or other people's products, but really making it into a viable business. Um, yes, this is where the magic, this is where the money happens. People are so focused on just getting YouTube subscribers and thinking they're going to monetize that way. And it is a great one great angle to go for, but you need a huge volume of viewers to do that. There's so many ways to, to create and infuse it into your business and make money. And as I said before, I've only got like a little over a thousand subscribers, but my videos have made me a lot of money because I'm using them throughout my business strategy. So I'm, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, this is this is a wonderful one. There's there's nothing wrong with having uh, using your content as like a side hustle or a hobby, but oftentimes people do want to make it into their full time career and kind of struggle with figuring out how they actually make money off of it. I think some of you know where uh, content creators fall short, especially on YouTube, is they feel like they're they can just rely on AdSense and being monetized through YouTube. That's not the only way to make money with your content. Um, matter of fact, it's not even necessarily the best way to make money off of your content, depending on what your strategy is. So, so I think this is actually going to be a really, uh, it's, it's going to be a really great session for everyone. I got my notebook. Um, all right. And so I'm uh, very excited to announce our group here. Um, first up, we've got uh, Daryl Eves. So Daryl Eves is jack of all trades. Uh, he's a YouTube educator, a creator, a TV producer, 
um, founder of Vid Summit. I feel like your bio is super long. You've done so many wonderful, yeah. amazing things. Just gonna do this. Hey, I like that. You can, you got this. <laughs> you got this. And he's like the king of paradise here. Look at this backdrop. Oh. It's not my backdrop. I'm actually doing a consult right now. So I told some YouTuber just to be patient and uh, we'll, we'll take care of him later. So I just went outside. Nice. Well, I appreciate you making the time. Um, we're going to bring in our next guest, uh, Jim Lauterbach. Um, Jim also has been in the industry just for you know an amazing amount of time. I met Jim many, many years ago. Um, oh, it looks like uh, Jim is actually having uh, some trouble getting in. Okay, so um, technical difficulties here. So we're going to move on um, to the next guest. So next guest we have is Roberto Blake. Um, Roberto is a YouTube strategist. He's an entrepreneur, has built a business around his content. Um, and uh, I think originally started off in kind of the graphic design space. Uh, and then has turned into kind of a YouTube creator, but it's just done so many wonderful things. Uh, keynote speaker, speaks at a lot of different conferences. So let's bring in Roberto Blake. Hello, Roberto. Here with the sound effects, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Roberto, I don't have a coffee mug for you, but I did wear your shirt in the original promo video for Creator Day. So I am a no, big that's fan cool. of that's your That's great. Mind. I need to uh, get a new one designed with Spreadshop anyway. So we're all good. All right. Well, you let me know when you've got some new designs. Big fan. I got of one for him here. Creating. This, this, I think this matches his clout. We got the boss in the house. We got boss, <laughs> boss eye, boss plural. <laughs> yep. Many literal bosses here. Um, all right. Next guest up is Jeremy Vest. Um, Jeremy has been also in the industry for so many years. He's, um, worked at lots of different companies, helping them with their business strategy. Uh, he was previously the CMO at Braille skateboarding, one of the top, uh, skateboarding channels, but also just one of the top channels on YouTube. Um, now is a CMO for a financial company has his own content. So he's done many, many things in the industry. Let's bring on, uh, Jeremy Vest. Hey, Hello, everyone. Jeremy. How's it going? Uh, much better now that you're here. So very excited for this for this group. Um, I don't know if this group has met uh, Rachel K. Albers, but Rachel K. Albers also has a business uh, and is a is a um, is on YouTube uh, and really um, creates funny videos and educational <laughs> videos. Kind of brings the humor. So um, felt like She's she was on a good YouTube. Person. That is true. That is accurate, Renee and Jeremy. I gotta tell you, do you do people call you the vest of the vest a lot? Is that a dad joke that you get? In you know what, I only tell myself that, but hopefully the rest <laughs> of the world will say that now. <laughs> That's the thing. We're making memes here, didn't you see? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I never even thought about that actually, but that's a good one. Um, You're the best around. <laughs> no one's ever gonna take you down. <laughs> you go all um, day. Yeah, we're kicking this off in a good way. We've got songs, we've got jokes. Um, all right, so I want to dive in and talk a little bit about just building a business around content and using um, using content as part of a business. Uh, lots of different ways to make money. So merch, affiliate deals, you can uh, do sponsorships, but also market and sell your own products. Uh, obviously, a couple of you here have already done um, conferences. That's another way to make money from your content. So would love to dive into um, what is a mindset that creators should have if they really want to be serious about building a business from their YouTube content? What are your tips for that? I want to start with Daryl for this one. Oh, uh, you're muted. There we go. Okay. So, um, no, like when, when I do and work with new creators that are coming on, I really want to, uh, to know how they're going to make this a business. And I know that they want to create and they love creation and that's why they're going to be doing YouTube, but we need to look at the other elements that you need to do to provide for yourself. Um, as ad revenue comes in and there's other opportunities from there. So we always like create a plan of where they'd like to be by the end of the year or the end of two years, three years, and try to create very actionable steps for them to be uh, full-time on YouTube. 
uh, cause that's usually the goal. And then the second thing would be is making this more of a business where you're bringing the resources and allocating, uh, resources to really make this grow faster. So let me give you a couple, uh, very specific examples. Uh, every year, uh, our company, we start two new YouTube channels. Our main goal that we have with that, uh, starting the new YouTube channels, how can we make money as fast as we possibly can without rad, ad revenue? And then our second goal is, can we get where ad revenue is only like 15, uh, maybe 18% of all revenue for that business? And if I can do that, it's definitely um, more sustainable than just the ups and downs of trends that actually happen on YouTube. And it's uh, 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 real, realistically more predictive of making it really solid. And for those uh, individuals out there that think that you can't do anything, uh, you know, it's all about the views. I actually, we started a channel um, for a client and they had zero followers, zero uh, views. They just had a really, really good idea. And they had a seven figure brand deal that paid for the whole year. And so like you can, all you got to do is align with someone's mission and really have ideas to really elevate uh, your content. You might have to do uh, kind of a teaser reel for some of these uh, brand deal opportunities. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like really thinking above and beyond ad revenue and, and don't think small, think big, think how can you actually elevate your content in a way that can engage these sponsors? If you want sponsors, if not, if it's like becoming your own brand deal, okay, do that too. Uh, but there's several ways to do that. And we do it right at the very beginning. Uh, and in fact, um, this is where I'm at today. Uh, we're working with a, a pretty big creator and we're really just strategizing on how they can actually make it more of a business and not just a YouTube channel where they're just cranking out content. Yeah, that's great. I love I that it's like, I, I love that the, the big creator, it's obviously under wraps. Maybe we have some NDAs. I think people in the chat should just like predict who they think it is and maybe one day we'll figure it out in the future. It's like, <laughs> it could be anyone. It could Her be Johnny day. Depp. Right? There you go. It's not Tony Depp. I can guarantee you. That's not happening. He's the theme of the day. He's the word of the day here. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, so many great things that you just said, Daryl. Um, one key thing I think is really kind of thinking through where you want to go up front. And I think that is something that a lot of creators kind of miss. It's a lot easier to figure out how to get somewhere if you know where you're actually going. So if you know that destination, you can have a map to help you get there. And sometimes where you want to go changes. Like you're not stuck to that necessarily, but if you have an idea of where you want to go, you're just going to get there so much quicker. So I think yeah, it's and, really- and I think Renee, the thing for me is a lot of people just upload content and say, oh, you know, all the money's going to come to me because I just uploaded a video. And I'm like, no, let's just actually put a plan together. And things can change, but that's where you got to analyze and adjust and really work on- making a visit business every day. And so I'm, I'm a big believer that all the, all the content that I've done, it's like, how do you make money outside of this? Because honestly, if you're really wanting to see the truth, I've been on YouTube since 2005, I've seen creators come get a ton of money and then they just are irrelevant and they start losing a lot of money and they come visit me again and say, Hey, I was making a ton of money. And now we've got to figure out how to make a business because we are doing this roller coaster ride and we haven't really stabilized anything. Yeah, it's important to be able to to adjust. And, you know, the, the platforms have obviously changed a lot since 2005. They continue to change every year. But audiences change also. And so you really have to keep up with with all of those different things. Um, ride the wave. Ride the I wave. Have a question, Renee, I have a question because Daryl threw out the, the seven figure phrase that we hear so often around you, especially kind of those scammers that are saying they're teaching YouTube when in reality, they're just like, you know, shoving a bunch of people into their funnel. So I'm really curious when you are building a business uh, on YouTube and using your content, how do you do that in a way without coming off as salesy, without coming off as sleazy, without looking like a snake oil salesman? Maybe Roberto can speak to this. Yeah, yeah, I think Roberto can. But before you before you do, I'll, I'll kind of uh, approach it. Like there needs to be a value proposition. And the way that you get brands to pay money with that value proposition is when it, it's in line with their value proposition. And that's, that's the whole thing is if you know where someone's going and what that brand uh, cares about, and you could be a champion for that brand in a unique third-party way that's not the brand itself, that's very valuable. And a lot of brands are getting super smart. 
um, you know, the owner of TubeBuddy, uh, Brand Entertainment Network, they, they do this all the time. And brands are getting a lot more smart every year because they can see how effective this can be coming from a third party. Now, the, the difference is, is the vision behind it um, and really um, adding um, more than just one layer to the plan. And that's what that's what I usually come in and, and, and do is like have a multi-layer plan for this creator that can connect with a, a brand per se. And it's just really synergistic with the brand. And what happens with the brand uh, naturally is they're going to promote their creator with people that if they have the same uh, target avatar, they're able to blow up. And and that's what I what I love. And so uh, with every example, of course, there's there's success and there's failure. Uh, but what you got to do is take that step forward of really wanting to make this a business and then really looking at how can I bring as much value as I possibly can. Uh, for that viewer. And then two, if you're wanting to bring in brand deals and you want to do the big, bigger brand deals, it's like, how can I actually integrate what they want with what I'm doing without compromising myself and doing it in a way that is authentic. And that's what all brands want. And that's where you're, the big bunny will actually uh, lie. And I, I, I'm telling you, um, it, it will come from the concept because I've said it in so many uh, pitch meetings and it's always about the idea and the idea that resonates with brands is usually where they'll spend the money. Mm, concepts that people want to rush right into creation and they don't want to do the strategy. And I love what you talked about with layering a layered approach. It's not just going to be a one hit wonder. You do one thing for the rest of your life forever. And I, but I'm curious, okay, the salesy thing, the sleazy thing, how do you do this without looking like a scammer? Roberto, I know you, it's really, you've got it's have actually, thoughts on this. I mean, it's easier than you think you it's easier than you think. For one thing, you just don't care. And, and, I, and I say that, think about it like this. YouTubers in general, the perception of most U of YouTubers and creators is not very good. It's not very favorable by traditional people. Uh, most people don't respect content creators, period. Most people, if you talk to them in the early days of YouTube and you explain to people how YouTube monetization works in the early days of the YouTube Partner Program, they would have said that's a scam and that no company would ever offer free hosting. Most people who um, you know feel this way, they usually have no actual legitimate basis and they're usually talking out of um, just general negativity in general. And that's not to be dismissive of the fact that there aren't actual scams out there, but it's actually really easy to not be scammed. Um, don't buy anything. And by that, I mean, don't buy anything from like not an established corporation or brand. In terms of not being salesy, audiences are not um, stupid. You build respect and trust with your audience by actually treating them like intelligent people. And if you're transparent with your audience, you're authentic with your audience, you're consistent in what you're doing, then you're going to be fine. Because here's the thing, the good news for anybody is that nobody has to actually buy anything. And you don't have to push things or be aggressive in your tactics with your audience or create all this FOMO. But the reality is, Nobody has to buy anything against their will. And I don't think, I think that as much as there are bad actors and bad people out there, the majority of YouTube content creators are perfectly good, perfectly reasonable, perfectly fine people who are creating value for the audiences. And that's why they have audiences in the first place. And those audiences aren't stupid. So I think if people actually just had a little bit more respect for creators and the fact that um, people are not just blindly throwing money at people for no good reason and that everyone has a responsibility individual responsibility matters is like everyone's responsible for what they buy what they consume who they support and again as long as people are being thoughtful as long as people are being reasonable as long as there's some form of transparency and goodwill and people have treated their audiences right i don't really i don't really believe that the problem with scammers and stake oil salesmen is as big of a problem as it's purported to be what I think is that you do have in any situation a few bad apples. And I do think that you have a responsibility of people to be very educated about what they're doing, who they're buying, who they're supporting, and so forth. And I think that it's actually very easy at the end of the day to just ask yourself, do I really believe that I'm buying from someone who's previously created value from me, like, sorry, created value for me and has done right by me? and um, has treated me and the rest of the audience with respect. That's a really easy way to vet, is just asking yourself that same question. And if you've gotten value up front for free, then it's not very hard to decide to make 
a informed decision about investing. If you haven't gotten value from somebody, then why invest? Why buy? So no one's forcing anyone to buy. I think it's more of like people need to apply a lot more like common sense to a lot of things. And I also think that the real issue is that people don't understand the creator economy and they don't understand the simple fact that nobody has to buy a t-shirt, a hoodie. Nobody really has to do any of that. No one has to buy a book or an ebook. Nobody has to buy a course or a digital product or a poster or a ticket to an event. And so if you're going to buy something, you should understand what you're buying, why you're buying it, and you should you know, go into that with open eyes. And I don't think it's really that difficult. And I think that if you just like look to people who have been consistent, transparent, maybe people who don't have scandals, I find it very difficult that if you say, gee, I just won't buy from people who have scandals, um, that it's going to be pretty easy to not be scammed. The other thing is, again, you can't really worry about what other people think. The most wholesome content creators I've ever known, I mean, you have people that will find any reason to um, try to criticize Mr. Beast. And like that is literally the most wholesome person probably in the whole ecosystem at this point. So if Mr. Beast is going to have critics, you're going to have critics and you just kind of have to get over it. You know what I loved about what you said, and I really appreciate hearing this, is the respect for your audience. <laughs> And, and, and it kind of goes both ways. There's a self-respect and being like, I know that I'm doing, I, I'm showing up, I'm providing value and kind of shaking off the haters if there are any haters. Right. But then also yep. treating, yeah, go ahead. No, I agree with you. I was just, no, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. And treating your audience with respect, treating your audience, like knowing that your audience is intelligent, speaking to that. I think that is so important. Let me um, let me give an example of this because I, I just want to blow people's minds in the possibilities. So I actually have a student uh, that started YouTube seven years ago, or I'm sorry, seven months ago. And um, wh where do you think they're at in their journey for seven years? And so when you really look at the journey, it's like, oh, I'm creating videos and creating ideas. Well, he went day one and he says, I'm literally going to learn every system that you teach. He read my book and so on and so forth. And he came into my mentoring program. But what happened was, is he actually had content that was valuable. And what's interesting is he found uh, an idea where he found a, 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 an airplane that he could restore and he could get the, the, basically the airplane for free. And what, what I want everyone to look at is, yeah, that's great content. And he made a ton of money uh, that was actually going to come through ads because th that, those videos started to take off and actually went up a lot higher. Uh, but if, if you really understand the power of YouTube and the power of community, like what Roberto was talking about, uh, being authentic and being true, it's sharing your vision with something. And that creator shared the vision, his GoFundMe for the airplane. Hey, look at this. is $208,000 wow, that he got money crazy. to help restore the airplane. And it, it's a community effort, you know, and he, yeah, he's leading the charge and he's restoring it, but there's so many different ways. And so, I want you to think differently as a creator. I want you to think, hey, how can I actually involve the community so that, yeah, I'm the head of the community. I'm, I'm sharing all the stuff that's going on and you're sharing your vision and they want to get behind it. But look, listen, seven months and he's not doing this in ad revenue, but he did it in a GoFundMe. But his ad revenue is really, really good right now because he's getting millions and millions of views per video. That's where it comes in to really understanding what you need to do as a creator is you need to tackle it head on, becoming the best you possibly can at creating value, creating a sense of community, having an authentic voice like what Roberto was saying, but also get something that they can get behind, like a GoFundMe. That's easy. A Patreon. That's great. A T-shirt, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I'm super bullish at this. And, you know, maybe at the, a little bit later, we can talk about my passion project that, you know, we really crushed it by creating a community that really cares. And so uh, just at the end of this all, guys, please, 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 please think how you can bring value to the community. And then more importantly, share your vision with the community to take it up even bigger so they can get behind your passion with monetary ways. You know, whether it's a t-shirt, whether it's a course, whether, you know, it's a, a GoFundMe page or a Patreon, they're wanting to get behind this. And it's a lot bigger if you actually in include everyone. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that 100%. You know, we make um, 
all kinds of conglomerates, companies, and celebrities into uh, billionaires at, without ever having an interaction with them and without, in many cases, so much as a thank you. So if you harness a community that literally puts their same dollars behind one of their own, well, why not? And why not celebrate that? I know it's become popular to you know play the, oh, I don't care about money card, but money is um, a form of, it's a tool but it's also a form of conveying value and respect and saying, here's who we've chosen. It's truthfully spending money with somebody is the ultimate democracy in terms of showing like this is where we want to put power behind and who we want to represent us. And when you make somebody uh, very successful by supporting their endeavors, their vision, as Daryl said, uh, their products and their services, when you make when you as a community make somebody a best selling author, when you as a community get behind somebody's music and you put them on the billboard charts and everything like that. That is, you know, one of the best forms of representation that there is. And the thing is, I feel that we have a choice with supporting creators to decide that we're going to do that and we're not going to have the gatekeepers of the past. It's not going to be the editorial boards that decide who gets to be a bestseller and who gets published. We are going to decide that as a community. We're not going to let, you know, just uh, the Grammys and the Academies have their way and say who gets to be put on that stage. We're going to do that, whether it's uh, BTS or whether it's... Um, you know, uh, recently you had, I mean, this is like out of nowhere. You have a lot of these content creators uh, from TikTok, like Olivia Rodrigo. I don't think most people had any idea who Olivia Rodrigo was just five years ago. And she's receiving MTV Music Awards from, um, you know, icon Jennifer Lopez and then receiving a Grammy and so on and so forth. And that was done by regular people deciding who they want to put on. And when you support creators, you have that representation of you get to decide who's put on and who gets to be the rock star and who gets to be on that global stage because you did that. You helped them get there. They don't get there without your support. And so that's what I think most creators need to embrace the idea that there's an audience that wants to support you. There's an audience that wants to see you be successful. Don't be afraid to ask for the support, just like Daryl was saying. Don't be afraid to share the vision and say, hey, this is my goal. I can't do it without you. And I'm asking for the support. So I, I may be a little biased being the SVP of content and community at TubeBuddy, but I, I really believe that community is everything. Like with community, you're not only able to monetize your content in one way. If you start doing other things, your community is going to follow you. One of the reasons why Mr. Beast has been so successful with his um, you know endeavors outside of just content, Mr. Beast Burger and Feastables and all of the other things, because it's community. He's really kind of built up that reputation uh, for himself. And so I think it's, who is this Mr. Person. Beast you're talking about, Renee? Come on. <laughs> Just some little hey, I never thought I would see the day that a creator of YouTube is on the, the cover of Rolling Stones. I mean, isn't that just dope? That's that just was cool. amazing. Hey, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just, you must be, you must be a proud papa. That's your prize pupil right there. <laughs> hey, no, he's, he's smart. I, I can't take any credit for, for Jimmy. He's the smartest guy when it comes to, to YouTube at all. I mean, yeah, at everything. So. Speaking of smart guys, uh, Jeremy, would love to hear from you in terms of, do you have any tips around how to create your own product or service? So I know a lot of creators are looking for merch deals and sponsorships, but what about creating something of your own to be able to sell through through your content? Kind of like what, what Braille has done and some other businesses that you've worked with. Yeah, like you see behind me here, we uh, got about 50,000 skateboards in Walmart uh, recently for them. And yeah, I mean, I think just like the intelligent people uh, here have said, build your community first, ask what they want, and then and only then would you actually want to make a product that is different or better or created specifically for your community. We found that most people are not even close to a skate shop. So a lot of people did not have the ability to go buy a skateboard um, within 100 miles of their house. So we worked with Walmart to you know, make sure that we were serving our bigger community. About 80% of people do not have access to skateboard. So that's one example. Obviously, when you're creating courses and you're creating anything, just don't suck, right? Like make sure you actually care about other people and it's not all about money. And if you're a sincere, awesome creator and you actually care about your communities, then you're going to win long-term uh, if you take care of everyone. 
Yeah, we really have a theme here because Daryl was talking about value and Roberta was talking about respect and Jeremy is talking about just caring for your audience. And when you put all of these together, I mean, that is, you know, the, the money will flow from that when you're showing up with sincerity, like you just said, Jeremy. Yeah, awesome. Nick Nimmin in the chat had a really um, easy take on it. It's easy, don't be sleazy, and you don't have to worry about it. And I agree with that. I mean, for the most part, you don't have to worry about it. But again, you'll always have criticism. Every YouTube content creator knows that you get a thumbs down like within five seconds of uploading your video. So it's like, like again, I, I just want to remind people that, look, you can do, and I think this is a rule for success too. Sometimes you can do everything right. It doesn't mean everything will be all right per se. But- in the short term, in the long run, yes, but you have to be practical. And that's why I think that it's important to also um, have the appropriate boundaries in your business of separating a couple of things. You have to have some proper emotional boundaries, but you also have to have some boundaries when it comes to your time. And you have to start decoupling time from money, which is super important. I mean, if we want to get like away from high concept and get to boots on the ground and everything like that, one of the things I try to really focus on with creators is – uh, increasing and diversifying their revenue streams and decoupling themselves from AdSense. AdSense for me is about nine to twelve percent of my overall revenue. Um, you know, I'm a I'm I'm doing fairly well as a content creator. I'm doing um, uh, for the last I think almost six years now. I've been doing about six figures as a content creator. Something I never thought I'd achieve in my whole life. Something that if you had told me ten years ago would be where I am today. I would have said it's like, yeah, and like, I suppose you have a bridge to sell me in Brooklyn, right? Uh, So uh, it's something that seems so far out of reach and seems so impractical until you realize something. When you work a nine to five job, you're in many ways, probably for that employer, you might be using a skill set that they might be monetizing your skill set five, six, seven different ways. And that's assuming they're letting you do one job for one paycheck instead of three to five jobs for one paycheck. And then when you realize um, if you ever have the good fortune to go solo on your own, you realize that you might be able to monetize a single skill four to six different ways. And you might realize that you have more than one monetizable skill. Now, you can only sometimes make one thing a priority at a time, and I highly recommend not spreading yourself thin and doing everything all at once. But you start to realize as you shore up these things that, wait a minute, I found that it's not as hard to make $1,000 by creating value directly for people as it is to rack up that amount of money by clocking hours, that the ability to do the work itself and deliver the results itself didn't take as nearly as many hours and somebody else is willing to value that outcome at $1,000 or this or that. And they realize, well, I can do that a couple of times. And all of a sudden you realize that in order to make the same money you were working 160 hours a month for, you might be able to achieve that same outcome in a week at a fraction of the time and without somebody looking over your shoulder. And it's this huge revelation And then you realize, well, I can do more than one thing now that I have all this time and I can monetize more than one thing. And then all of a sudden, you start making up that income from that job. You start finding other ways to do it. And you start realizing that, wait a minute, I might be able to take this skill and I might be able to turn this skill into content. I might be able to turn this skill into a product. I might be able to turn this skill into something um, where my experience says, well, maybe – Uh, Just even spending time with me is something people will pay for. And then all of a sudden you might have a membership. You might have donations with super chats. You might have all these different things going on. And all of a sudden you realize that it's like, okay, I have six ways to make money and they all pay better than my old paycheck. And I enjoy it a lot more. And that's, you know, or at least that's what my experience has been. Yeah, I have, isn't that I have, the secret? Isn't that the secret to being like to to upping your revenue is what you just said, Roberto, diversifying the ways that you're bringing it in, not putting all of your eggs into one basket and taking one skill and monetizing it in various ways. Is that? I feel like I read that in a book somewhere. <laughs> uh, the book I haven't written yet, but the <laughs> um, but the funny thing about it is your content and your skills can be monetized more than once. Every creator that puts out a piece of content, you can earn ad revenue from that content. So that's one monetization stream. If you do a brand deal, you might get ad revenue and the brand deal money up front on that. 
you can still work out an affiliate deal with that same company and same brand. So then you're at, you're at three. And then depending on what that content is, that content might have been such a gateway to where people have this relationship with you to where they become a paying channel member or sign up for your Patreon or so on and so forth. There's no reason you can't pitch that at the end of a video or that can't be a link in the description. So then you have all of that you know, going for you. And the thing is, as you build that audience and you learn from them, that video, there might be a comment in that video where somebody asks for something that easily could be a great idea for merchandise or a product. I mean, there, that's this is okay. how we do it. Yes. So, so I have a quick question around scaling a business and being able to do more. So Roberta, you just went through like so many different ways that creators can make money. Um, I think one of the challenges that individual creators struggle with when they're trying to scale a business is um, delegating and letting other people come in and do some of the work for them. Um, what is your advice for someone who's going from an individual creator to really wanting to scale into a business and potentially hiring other people to help them do even more? Don't um, be a moron like me and do everything solo for five years. That's my <laughs> advice. I'm going to hand this one off to Daryl because, I mean, I'm the idiot. I mean, I have a small team now, but I'm the idiot who did everything by myself for five years. And it's amazing that I didn't manage to burn out. So, Daryl, take it away. Yeah. Um, so this is a question that I get asked a lot. And, you know, what's the first employee? And uh, basically the answer that I give them, it, it's very simple, is to uh, take a notebook and during the week, everything that you do from the beginning that you wake up to the end that you go to sleep, you write down every task that you do. You know, if you use the bathroom, write it down, put the time code. And you basically break down everything that you do during that given day. And then you take it through the whole week. It's what I call work week analytics. And then at the end of that week, I want you to take two highlighters, two different color uh, of highlighters. And uh, basically just really go over everything that you didn't like doing just with one highlighting uh, color. And then the second color, everything that wasted your time do that as well. And that's the job responsibility for your first uh, employee. Uh, basically is what we call a PA, someone that can come in and, and start really going together. Now, that being said, that's going to free up more time for you to do things that you love and also things that didn't waste your time. And if you do that, I, I like to do that at least quarterly, if not every other month. Uh, but that helps me have a lot of clarity uh, of what I'm going to get done and what I find most valuable. When I get excited, you know, of waking up in the in the uh, in the morning to just get to work, uh, it's because I love it. Uh, I love what I do. Now, uh, that being said, uh, there is one thing that I always like to do, look at. If you're not a really good editor, I would hire an editor. Uh, if you're not a very good graphic designer, I would outsource thumbnails, but be very specific of what you need to to, to do, because uh, there are some skill sets that you need to develop your own. Uh, you know, ability, you know, there's a lot of courses out there for free on YouTube of how to do Photoshop or any, any other program to become better. But sometimes it's just easier just to find someone that really gets the style of what needs to be happening on YouTube. Uh, and you can kind of direct them of how that should be. Uh, you just need to be a master at that as well between that and the edit. Uh, but outside of that, those are generally the first things that I look at first, the PA, uh, cause PA can free up your time that you can make things a little bit better. Uh, and then eventually move that over to adding to your team to scale it with getting an editor and also uh, someone to help you with thumbnails. And I think that's kind of your your logistical things because your PA can uh, manage your emails. They can manage your brand deals and so on and so forth. And so uh, scaling it uh, is something that I think everyone needs to do right out of the gate. Uh, and I, I, I do believe it. I own seven companies and there's no way I can do it by myself. Uh, I can give vision, I can give direction, but I need someone to do the things that I, I'm not very good at. There's better people that actually understand more about that responsibility than I do. And I want them doing those things. And so that's kind of the big thing for me is really, really, really refine my time and doing what I'm the best at. Now, I'm going to do a word of warning uh, for every creator here. If you take the ideation creation out of your content and hand it over to someone else, it's not a good thing. It's not. You have to be uh, invested in your content. You have to be able to say, no, this is, you can get someone to give you ideas, but you need to be excited about that ideas. Cause if it's somebody else's idea, then it's really a disconnect. 
um, you know, from you as a creator. Uh, so I've, I've seen a lot of creators just plateau or start to lose momentum because someone else is doing it and they're stopping creating. And that's what people can just notice the difference between that. Now you can uh, be like Mr. Beast and build a team around that. But at the end of the day, I'm here to tell you, he's so involved in his content mm -hmm. creation. You know, he'll turn down a thousand different ideas before he finds that right idea, but it's just knowing what, what he wants to create. And I, I would encourage you all uh, to start small um, and you don't have to do full time. I, 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 with all my students that I mentor, I'm like, literally just get that PA, you know, they can still be going to school. It's, it's all okay. But what you need to do is allocate more time for you to do what you're really, really passionate about. And if it's just taking a break so that you can be more creative, that's what you need to do. Yeah. So that is brilliant. Brilliant. Because I, I work in marketing and I can't tell you the amount of people that come to me and they want to delegate the ideation. They want to be like, I want somebody to come in and pull a rabbit out of a hat, pull ideas out of a hat. So I'm so glad that Workday Analytics, Daryl, you know what the, the next million dollar, billion dollar idea is if I can learn how to delegate taking pee breaks, because I sit there and I do the little dance <laughs> where I'm like, okay, what am I doing here? Get up and go to the bathroom for the love of Jeebus. You know what I'm saying? They'll probably have some device that's hooked to your neural link so that you can relieve <laughs> yourselves in your haptic suit, something like that. So you'll be okay. Elon Musk, he's on it. He's, on, he's yeah. all, all over I, this. I, I know we're getting <laughs> low on time, uh, Renee. I do want to just share my passion project, if it's okay, just really quick, because do. Um, you can start with zero. Uh, you literally can start with zero. And uh, four and a half years ago, uh, I uh, found this content creator that I thought, hey, he's doing some really, really big things. He had an idea for a TV show. And uh, we had zero money in the bank, zero social following. And we had a great idea. And the goal was, could we create a community around uh, this content creator and the idea, the vision of what we wanted to do. Basically, we wanted to do a multi-season series, TV series about Jesus and like the people that he called. And, and we literally uh, created videos and a pitch, and we did something super disruptive, which is instead of doing a, a, a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter, uh, we got approval with the Securities Exchange Commission to take public money, and we actually brought on partners. And we were able to break the all-time crowdfunding record in film and television. And uh, in fact, tomorrow I'm flying to Dallas and we're starting season three, production of season three of that idea that we had four and a half years ago. And not only was it the biggest crowdfunding, but it's a huge movement right now. Uh, we were like the fourth most downloaded app in Brazil uh, just the last couple of weeks. And we're just really blowing up. We have over 400 million uh, views of the series itself, which is huge. I mean, when you break that down by the hours and stuff like that, it's just massive. It, it, it will contend with some of the biggest um, uh, 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 TV shows that are on Netflix and Amazon, and it's just really taking the world by storm. The thing that I want you to let you know is how did it all start? Well, it started with an amazing content creator. You guys are amazing, uh, but I can tell you it was doing a roadmap and planning it out. We, what we do is locked our, ourselves in an Airbnb for three days. And we really just mapped out who are we, what aren't we, what do we want to do? Our vision, our mission, our purpose, what the type of content we're going to create, where the value is going to be. And more importantly, the monetization to take it where we need to go and what that actually looked like. And if you were to say, Hey, this is where Daryl you'll be at, um, at the end of that four and a half years, I, I would say you're ridiculous because it's far further than what we planned. But what's crazy is we just did a, a theatrical release in December and we had the number one box office in the whole United States on a project that we actually developed the community for. And so all in all, just dream big, but more importantly, take those dreams, write it down and create a plan and have goals because that's what will take you to the next level. And that's what I teach all my students when I mentor them. We start with that first because I'm a true believer is what you believe and you create a plan around you can achieve. I really do believe that. Um, and if you really want to make this happen, you got to put in the time, energy and effort um, uh, to really create content that has value, but also making it a business. Uh, because if you don't make it a business, it's going to be hard to create that value. Yeah. Well, first off, congratulations. Like, I think what you are doing right now is just amazing. And it's just been such a successful endeavor. And, you know, really incorporating the community as, as, as part of that. Like, I've seen a lot of the community talking about it. And, and it's one way to get some additional buzz for it as well. So working with the community as part of that. So 
just amazing what you've been able to do. I'd love to connect with you at a separate time just to do like a kind of behind the scenes or case study on this because I think there's so many learning lessons uh, that other creators can take from this. Um, but just, you know, such a fantastic, fantastic endeavor there. Um, well, well, I got to tell you, though, one of the one of the um, <laughs> Ricky Ray Butler, who who is the CEO of uh, Brandon Entertainment Network, which is, um, you know, two buddies owner, uh, was is one of the first original investors of the show. Uh, he's actually my partner on the project, too. He just doesn't talk a lot about it. But it's really also um, is surrounding yourself by people that get it and are willing to, to make it happen. There's some synergy there for sure. Yeah, it's key to being able to connect yourself with the right people, not just to learn from them, but just to really support some of the initiatives that you're doing, and just like with community. So, and I think uh, you've done this really well. Mr. Beast obviously has done this really well, but like just surround yourself with really incredibly smart people who know more than you about certain, in certain areas. Like you should never be the smartest person in the room about all things. Maybe about some of the things, but not all of the things. And if you are, you're doing it wrong. You need to surround yourself with other people that have a lot of that experience and can help you out too. So, um, yeah, just just fantastic. We're gonna um, we're gonna wrap up this session here so that we can do some giveaways. But thank you all so much for participating, uh, Roberto and Jeremy. I know that we're gonna see you a little bit later for a spicy challenge. Um, and Daryl, really appreciate you taking the time to, to join Ooh, from spicy. you know doing, doing a consulting engagement there. So so thank yeah, you guys again. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. Thanks. Um, and uh, Rachel K. Albers, stick around for just a moment. We're gonna do some giveaways. Yes. Um, all right. I'm here so for what, it. What do we have next on the list here? Oh, it's right. a leg. It's the legend license, <laughs> right? Our the one leg, year leg licenses. and license legend. I'm just making. I'm doing a callback, Renee. That's Talk right. About, you know what the best thing to do in humor is just have one joke and never stop telling it. You just bring it back over and over again. So to win this. The one year two buddy legend license, you got to put the word let. Oh, they know. They're ahead of the game. The word legend in the chat. Chat it out. Chat it up. Chat it in. Chat it on. Copy paste. Copy paste. Put copy it in paste. as many times as you can. Legend. I'm not seeing enough legends in here. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, legend. Got a lot of yeah. wow. That's good. But let's get some legends. Copy paste. Copy paste. Okay. You know what? I see Christine. Christine Von Pander, you had me with the Von. It makes her sound fancy, you know? So the Von, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Christine. I'm sorry, but there's a Von there that I just couldn't look away from. Christine, All right, well, it's your day. Christine, make sure that you access that pinned comment. Fill out that form so that we can get you the two buddy legend level license. Let's move on to our next giveaway. Channel reviews. This is another two buddy product. Uh, channel reviews is going to help you essentially get unstuck with your content. So basically helping you figure out what you're doing right and then some room for improvement so that you can grow even faster and do even more. Um, for this one, you're going to put in the word review. So copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, review. And then Rachel, when you see uh, a legend or a review uh, method you. that you like, you pick one. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Um, I think it's forever. Is it Sade or Sade? Forever. Wondering how to say that. But forever, your channel review is coming to you. Forever. All right, forever. Forever, S-A-D-E. Let's go. Make sure that you check out that pinned comment, fill out that form, and we'll get your channel reviews over to you. Uh, all right, Ecamm for live streaming. So for folks who are already live streaming or you want to get into live streaming, uh, Ecamm is a solution that can help you out. Love so it. put in the word Ecamm into live chat, copy, paste, copy, paste. Ecamm, this is a tool that I use and I, and I love. I love that I'm able to like make my screen really pretty and add in different graphics. It's the easiest tool to do that in my opinion. So... Let me see. Come on, people. Let's ecam it up into the chat. Yeah. Domena, the director. It's the director part that really got me. So Domena, the director. It's you, baby. It's always been you. It's always <laughs> been you. Just didn't know it till now. All right. Make sure you're <laughs> filling out that form through the pin comment. 
and we'll get you your eCam license. Mm. All right. So I think that wraps up our giveaways for this section. If you didn't win, don't worry. We're going to have plenty more opportunities throughout the entire live stream. You have to be here to win. So if you go away, if you need a break, make sure that you come back so you want those chances to win. Um, and then next up, let's see here. Um, we are going to be talking about some short form video. So this is a pretty hot topic. So um, I know that, uh, you know, TikTok is hot thing right now. We've got YouTube shorts. We've got now short form video on many different platforms. So trying to figure out ways that you can be effective with your short form video, regardless of the platform that you're trying to actually promote on. We will be talking about what works well for TikTok versus YouTube shorts um, and some of those mm. kind of general things throughout. So um, the let's see here, we've got Rachel and I have been talking quite a bit. So we're actually going to hand over uh, the controls over to Megan, Sav uh, Megan Savitt, who is, uh, works here at, um, the two buddy Ben team. Um, mm -hmm. and she is the VP of influencer relations. So I'm going to go ahead and bring her on and then she's going to introduce, uh, the session for today. Hi, Megan. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being here and for giving me a little bit of a break. Um, I will be back later on uh, to, to help host a couple of the, the games and some sessions earlier on, but I'm going to hand things over to you and, and let you take it away. Amazing. Thank you. Well, I'm really excited to introduce this next panel. Um, as Renee sort of said before, we're going to be focusing on short-term video. We're going to be highlighting three of my favorite creators, um, and it's going to be Javi Luna, Griffin Arnland, and Kristen Ware. So we are going to bring them on now. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? Great. I'm doing you? great. How are you? Good. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for taking the time. This is going to be fun. We're going to basically have a little bit of a round table. We're going to talk a bit about short form video. It's going to be really great. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> so first and foremost, why don't all of you give a little introduction on yourselves. Talk a little bit about your online presence, the type of content that you make, and what it means to be a creator to you. Uh, Kristen, why don't we start with you? Okay, well, hi, I'm Kristen Ware. I've been doing TikTok for about three years now, going on four. Um, I mainly do, I recreate acting scenes from a lot of movies, but lately I've been venturing out and doing different departments of content, such as like lifestyle, fashion, hair, makeup. So those are, but acting is mainly my pursuit on TikTok. And being a creator to me just means allowing yourself to communicate and relate to other people out there. You know, you get to make content that other people can, make content that other people can relate to and also allowing your imagination to be out there and show other people, you know, what you think about what, the way you look at life and your perspective. So, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Javi, what about you? What, tell us about your creator journey and a bit about you. Well, um, thank you for that. Um, I started doing social media like around like three years ago. I'm, I'm an actor. Um, so, you know, one of the main reasons why I started doing it is because, you know, when you're an actor, you can sometimes you have projects and sometimes you don't. So social media for me, it's a great way to stay connected to my supporters. Um, and and yeah, it's really fun. I do a lot of comedy videos and videos with my friends uh, and just like fun stuff and things that I do every day, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, you have such a wide variety of content on your channel. Yeah. I the other day, I you know, you, you've done everything from like couples partnered dancing to really huge collaborations to comedy sketches to behind the scenes on the different projects that you're working on. So, yeah, you've really run the gambit. It's really cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Griffin, what about you? Let's hear from you. 
Well, hello guys. Um, I'm Griffin Arnland and I've been in the social media space for about seven to eight years now, which is a little crazy to think about. Um, I've created, first started with making like beauty, fashion and lifestyle content. And then over the years, I started when I was 16 and I'm 24 now. So I've had to kind of find a way to like make it still up my alley of interest. So um, as of lately, I've been kind of geared more towards like true crime content and things that um, I feel can really make a difference with people and with my audience. I do have a rather large audience that have accumulated over the years. And for me, like being a creator, I want to be able to use my platform to make a difference, whether or not it's in these true crime cases or like mental health awareness, anything like that. That's so cool. You hit on something really neat too, which is that you started making sort of more beauty fashion content, but you've sort mm -hmm. of pivoted and now you post all types of content. That's yeah. so interesting. And I think short form really breeds that. So this question is sort of for, for all of you as well as all of you are here because one, you have aggregated a following on, on every platform, but specifically you guys have really hacked TikTok. So what makes short form video your go-to format? Why do you all like it so much? What about it, um, it makes it just your everyday use case? Javi, what do you think? So for me, it's, uh, it's actually kind of funny how I found, you know, the short form content side of social media. I, um, I just moved to, Los Angeles and I saw like some guys making videos on a tribe but in the street, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, what what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we're making look like this um, you know, videos for like this new platform called TikTok. And I was like, okay. So one of them helped me downloading TikTok and I posted a super embarrassing video. It was a challenge that I was like kind of like kissing myself or uh, it's super cringe. And but I went to sleep with like zero views. And I woke up and the video was at like 12 million views or something like that. And I had, yeah, and I had um, like over 60,000 followers overnight. So in that moment, I knew I found something that was very special. Uh, so I started like creating videos every single day. And, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Do y'all remember when it was called Musically? Yes. Wow. I was just about to say that's when I started doing it is when it was Musical.ly. I yeah. wasn't doing it on Musical.ly. Like I wasn't posting or anything, but I was like a heavy watcher on Musical.ly. A user of it? <laughs> Scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> that was the word for it, right? You were a muser, you were a viner, but that's the mm -hmm. thing is now it's become the norm, which is so cool. And so it's just, you know, a blanket term as a creator. Um, but you know, Kristen, what about you? I mean, I'm guessing there's definitely a lot of overlap in terms of why for all of you short form is a go-to, but Kristen, why do you like it so much? I like it because, you know, it when with short form, it's quick. It's not long. It's not too much time consuming. Well, creating it is, but you know, you get to watch it and scroll on to watch something else or someone else. So I like it because it's, it's, a easier way for people to get a quick laugh or get quick information you know everyone makes different type of content some people make content for to informative content for you to learn and about stuff and then you have creators who make content for humor and, and create content to entertain and which is where i am so i like it because you know a lot of people get to like i said get a quick laugh get quick information and and move on with their day Yep. I love that. It's very digestible. It's little nuggets of fun, which are, are great. Yeah. And Griffin, you are a little bit unique in the sense that, you know, as you pointed out, you started when you were 16. You mm -hmm. have, you are an OG, as they say. <laughs> um, and you started on YouTube. And so yeah. what made you make the transition? You still obviously post on YouTube, but what made you do the transition to focus more on short form? Um, so yeah, I guess with YouTube, um, in particular, like I was mentioning the, the true crime content that I make, it takes three to five weeks to make one video, like one YouTube video about that. Um, so that honestly takes a lot of time. And sometimes I don't have the time to be like 
I have other stuff going on in my life where I don't have five weeks to sit down and make one video. And so when I have the opportunity to be able to sit down, whether it takes me five minutes or it takes me an hour and create a video that is so digestible, I think that's awesome. Like I would love to be able to create more content and like put as much content as I can out there, but sometimes it's hard when it does take that five weeks to be able to make it. Yep. And that's an excellent segue into something I kind of want to highlight, which is what does the production process look like? I think that a lot of people think, I, I know that obviously short form is probably a bit easier to produce than long form, but I think that a lot of people have this conception that all you do is just take out your phone and look at the camera and say a few things and then you post it. But I think that it's actually far more in depth than that. In fact, I know it is. What does your production process look like? Kristen, what about you? Well, <laughs> it's because it's short form, you have to really make sure you shrink it down to a certain time length. You know, first when TikTok first started out, the longest that your video could be was a minute, 15 seconds or a minute. Now they've moved it to three, now they've moved it to 10, but you have to take footage that might be an hour long and shrink it down to 60 seconds to three minutes. And with me making, recreating movie scenes, there's different characters that I have to, that I'm playing. So that takes every bit, a one minute video for me takes an hour long to create just because sometimes I may get the line wrong and I have to go back and redo that line or I can watch or do the whole scene and then go back and watch it, realize I messed up, have to go back and redo it again. So it's a lot that plays into making a video, especially that could be one minute long to three minutes long. And it, it, the production is wild. There's clothes everywhere. There's there's furniture everywhere. Sometimes there's the camera, the ring light and tripod is just all over the place. So the set is bizarre, but I, in the end, it's all worth it to see how it all comes together and to see the feedback from my, my audience. It's worth every minute. I, I love that. No, and, and I'm glad that you shared because, again, I think there is so much to it. And people don't understand that sometimes, in, you know, two minutes, there's actually hours of, of production time behind that. Yeah. Griffin, what about you? Does, does your process look similar? Does it differ? <clears throat> I mean, um, I was about to say props to you, Kristen, first and foremost, because I can only imagine having to change characters and have that whole setup going. So props to you. Thank you. Um, for I think it varies. Sometimes I'll sit down and I'll be like, okay, here's like a fun filter, so random. Like it's kind of more of like a draft post, like just something to get out there because I haven't really had time to sit down and make the content that I want to make. And then other times I'll sit there for like an hour and I'll have like my camera running and it's probably similar to Kristen where I'll go back after and I'll be editing and like try to get like the clip is like a five second clip, but I need it to be three seconds to be able to fit in the short form content. So it's a lot of editing and a lot of going back and forth throughout the process to make sure that you can get it into the time frame that you want it to be in. Yeah, no, that makes sense. They do give you those, those time yeah. stipulations, make it a little bit difficult. And Javi, you do a lot of behind the scenes content. Does that cut down production time at all? Or is it just as in depth as any other kind of format? Well, um, the reason why I do behind the scenes is because I like to get a lot of content. You know, I like to get as much as I can. Um, so whenever I'm filming with friends, I just go like, oh, maybe people would want to see like what's going on behind the camera. Um, but yeah for me it varies like a lot a lot lot there are some videos that take me days to film them but there are some other ones that i'm literally just at a restaurant with my friends and i take the phone and i see a trend and we just do it um so yeah i think that's that's the beauty of the short form content you know that is very spontaneous um and also you never know like what, what works you know sometimes you know, sometimes you spend a lot of time in, in a video and, you know, for some reason, like, it, it, it is not as popular as, you know, something that you're just holding your phone with your friends, you know? Um, so, yeah. No, that it, makes total sense. Right? That makes total yeah. sense. Okay, yeah. question for you guys. 
what are trends that we're seeing right now that we really like? There are so many on TikTok. I feel I discover a new one every day. I laugh, I cry. There are many. What are what are a few that you have all seen, either from a format perspective or you know from a meme perspective? Whatever perspective you like, what are what's, let's say two to three trends that you are all seeing that you're really into right now, Griffin? What about you? Um, the first thing that came to my mind was there was a recent trend on TikTok that I just thought was like the healthiest trend around, and it was um, I forget what the audio was. But it was basically you started with this filter on and it was like a makeup filter and then like you transition into you with no makeup no filter nothing and it's all about like like people were going crazy viral just for showing themselves and i loved that because i felt like normally it's like the other way around you see someone you know and they're like they just woke up and then they go into like this crazy transition of like they have like this awesome makeup going on which is so cool to see and i love seeing people's like artistic expression but that was the first time that I've seen a trend where it's kind of the opposite and like really celebrating someone's like true beauty. So that one was one recently that I really loved. Um, I love that and one too. Also just like not necessarily a trend, but original audios on TikTok do really well. Um, I've found that like people, like people love hearing the same audios that are always there. But then when there's something that kind of stands out from that, I feel like people really like that. So not necessarily a trend, but just like, I guess a tidbit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Kristen, what about you? I really like, lately, a lot of people have been doing get ready with me's. And for some reason, I am so fascinated with watching someone put an outfit together or watching someone do makeup and put it all together with a fit and everything. And then I also like the low exposure vlogs where people will vlog yep. their day and they'll lower their exposure to like where it's like dark and it's such like a vibe. And I really, really like that. And this, I don't know if it's still a trend, but it was like everyone was making this certain salad where it was like it didn't have lettuce. It was more so like green peppers, onions, um, and they had like this this avocado oil or olive oil. And they were like, it was a salad though. And it looks so good. I even tried it myself and I really liked it. So those three are like some of my faves right now. And so the recipe turned out how you thought it was. Cause I tried to do the salmon challenge, which I thought no one could mess up. I messed it up. So here Me we are. Too? I did the feta <laughs> pasta it. challenge, 10 out of 10. Really? Ah. There you oh, go. Yeah. There you go. So we've established that we all like cooking trends. Javi, what about you? What are your, some of your favorite trends? <laughs> Definitely not the cooking ones. I burn everything. <laughs> Same. Um, <laughs> but um, I usually I like the ones that have a lot of friends because um, I'm I always like being with my friends or what with the squad. Um, there's one lately that you just have to say the country with different flags. I don't know if you guys seen it. Um, and it's really cool because it's also like you also learn a lot, you know, about like the different flags and stuff. And then. I really liked all the trends that, um, you know, I really like Euphoria. So there was like a moment, like a month that every single trend was Euphoria. And I love that. There's even people that they were creating like a whole like um, introduction of a character for like three minutes, like really well done. So I really like those ones. Admittedly, yeah. I posted some Euphoria-esque comments. Yeah, I did. I, I'm ashamed. <laughs> But here we, again, here we are. <laughs> no, this is so awesome. Um, we're we're going to, in a minute, transition into a fun little mini game. But before we do that, I, you know, what I want to do is pretend that you're talking to yourself when you first started or to other aspiring creators. What are some things you knew, you wish you knew when you first started that you know now because hindsight's twenty twenty. So let's be the big sister, big brother to everybody out there and share share the wealth of knowledge. Javi, what about you? Cold sweats. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was thinking, I mean, I, I, I don't want to get like, uh, you know, very serious about it, but I, I would say, I would definitely say, um, you know, slow down. Like, uh, you know, it's okay to take a break sometimes 
and there's going to be ups and downs and that doesn't mean that you're changing or that people are not accepting you you know that means that that's just the way it goes you know and yeah to just your value is the same no matter what yeah i think staying true to yourself is really important absolutely yeah kristen what about you i would say that your mental health is very very important I feel like when I first started out, I was so focused on trying to get out as much content as possible and not realizing that I needed time to rest. Same thing with Javi said. And did I say that right? Did I say his name right? Uh, 50%. <laughs> oh, sorry. You, get, you can say Javi or Javi. I'm usually Javi, but you can say, they say Javi, JV. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to branch off of what you said as far as like, needing to take a day and rest and stuff. And I feel like a lot of us, we get so wrapped up into making sure we have content on a daily basis and consistently that we don't take time away to rest and make sure that we're okay. And starting out, I didn't do that. So I would tell myself as I was starting to, you know, it's okay to take a day to rest and be lazy. It's fine. It's fine. So, Yeah, you got to take care of yourself. I think that that is, is a huge component there. Griffin, I see you nodding. What about you? Um, I'm like, if anyone here knows, it's probably Megan, that mental health is like a huge thing for me. And I want to piggyback off of what both of you guys were saying, because um, for me, like I took a t almost a two year break off of social media because I was not in a place mentally to be able to focus on it. I had to focus on myself and that was like, you know, what I had to do. And um, it was really hard for me to like be able to get back into social media. But I think what I realized getting back into it was had I taken care of my mental health the entire time, I wouldn't have necessarily had to take that two year break. I would have been able to like, you know, still do what I'm enjoying and like still be a part of the process of everything. Um, but I had to take two years off to be able to get myself in a, a mental space to where I could do it. So I don't know, I just, I think being aware of like where you're at mentally and knowing when it's time to take a break and being okay with that, like not being too hard on yourself. Um, because I know all of us are probably sometimes a little difficult on ourselves when we're like, oh, we have this content due or we wanna get this up in time or whatever the case may be. But yeah, mental health is by far the most important aspect of it all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like the biggest overall theme is be kind to yourself. And yeah, very true. true. I love it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, I'm going to ping the lovely and talented Renee and Rachel to rejoin us because we're going to play a fun little mini game, which uh, is called Guess the Creator. So, yes, let's bring them <laughs> Hello. Up. Oh. So, Hi. Play. Before we dive into the game, I just want to say what a wonderful interview. Um, I learned a lot about, you know, short form video, but also I think it's really important to talk about creator burnout and, you know, being kind to yourself. I, I think we do have a lot of hustle culture that sort of happens and it maybe happens even more in certain industries. The creator industry definitely is one of them. So I think it's an important topic and really appreciate you guys all kind of, you know, sharing your take on that too. So. All right, well, let's amp up the fun. We're going to play a game called Guess the Creator. Um, theme for this is TikTok creators. Um, okay. So keep that in mind as we go through this. So everyone that you're going to see here, they're all big TikTok creators. Um, so we're not trying to trick you too much. Um, so the way that... <laughs> trick talk. Trick talk, baby. <laughs> trick talk. Making up some new stuff here. Love it. <laughs> So um, let me let me just check out the rules here. Um, all right. So how it's going to work is that you guys are all on the same team. So we're not pinning you against each other. Uh, you guys are all on the same team trying to figure out who the creator is that's on screen. So you're going to see a couple of facts uh, and you're going to see a pixelated image and you're trying to guess who is the creator. Go ahead and just shout out your answer. We're just going to have fun with this. So it's not super competitive. Shout out your answers. Um, and then I'd love to encourage the audience to uh, also guess who they think it is. Um, so let's uh, let's dive into that first 
into that first one. So Rachel, I think you're up for this one. Okay. I'm so glad I'm not playing because like I'm an, I'm an old lady now. I don't know anybody on TikTok. I mean, now I know you, I followed you all. So you're going to keep me young. Thank you. All right. <laughs> who is this famous creator? My dad has 10 million followers on TikTok. That makes me insecure. I'm glad my dad doesn't have 10 million followers on TikTok. Oh my God. I began dancing at age three. I have a secret TikTok account. Is that like a fic talk? You know, when they say Finsta, is it a fic talk if you have a secret TikTok account? I think you're on the Yeah. Is there a cool word for that? I don't I, think so. I don't think okay, so. You God. just made All one. Right. Yeah. Whew. Don't worry. Yeah. You're not being tested on that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dog named Rebel. I have a dog named Rebel. So 10 million. Daddy's got 10 million. Dancing from three. A fic talk. And a dog named Rebel. Who could it be? I'm going to go for Charlie D'Amelio. I don't know about the dog, but I'm feeling that her dad probably definitely has 10 million on TikTok. Yeah, he would, wouldn't he? Yeah. He would. Yeah. Are you in agreement or any other yeah. guesses? I align. The dancing at age three is giving me Charlie D'Amelio. Mm -hmm. And the secret TikTok account. The TikTok, but yes. You can't say that too fast because then you'll I'll get I'll get booted from this live stream if I <laughs> screw up saying fic talk. Stop it. Stop saying it. All right, who is it? Who's the famous creator? Let's go. Is it Charlie? Oh let's go. <laughs> Boom. We're starting off that. wrong. Good, good job, guys. Okay, um, what this this is another one. Very pixelated. I am adopted. I am a US Navy vet. That's a real transition from the Navy to TikTok. I mean, that's a, that's a, job, a career trajectory I haven't heard of. My cousin is a famous creator. I mean, you really got to be into TikTok if you know who people's cousins are. I mean, this is a whole family tree. And I released my debut single in April 2021. Okay. This is a, so it's worth the anniversary. This is, a, this is a, <laughs> come on, guys. You know, you guys know this one. I have Abby, a okay. I had a okay. crush on her. Bella Porch, just because of the single. Hey, yeah, she, I remember she dropped yeah. something in April last year. Yeah. She dropped something. The ball, <laughs> she a single, who knows? <laughs> okay, who is it? Let's see. Is it Bella Porch? Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Bella P. I had no idea about... Javi, you knew the whole time. I knew the Javi, whole time. It's Javi, I, Javi, you're I had supposed to be contributing. Come on. <laughs> Oh, this one. No, I have no idea about this. Okay, one. so this guy started acting at age 10, is a Doogie Hauser. That's my guess. I was born and raised in California. Okay, who wasn't? Um, I have my own clothing line and I'm allergic to peanut butter. Oh, I don't know why that makes me sad. I love peanut butter. <laughs> who could have? You so guys got it? I have no idea. I think it's Brent Rivera. Oh, Rivera. That must be right. Oh, is it right? Does Rivera. Griffin have it? Who is it? Show us. Oh, y'all are so three good. for three. <laughs> you yeah. guys are good at this. <laughs> I'm impressed. Look at that hair. Look at the height on that. Okay, this person had hosts a podcast with their mom. It's moms. It's dads. Oh. It's a whole. It's a family situation. Born in Louisiana, they can juggle. And they began dancing at age six. Charlie had three years on this person. Addison Ray. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Addison Ray. All right. Let's they see all see in agreement. Was it, uh, there you go. Ray Ray. We got that Ray in common. <laughs> I I'm love that say a... that's my cousin. That's my cousin. <laughs> I love that there's a few of them that say they began dancing at a certain age. Because I feel like if I were up here at some point, it would say, Learned how to dance at age 41. Yeah. <laughs> the dancing okay. to TikTok pipeline. It's hot. <laughs> it is hot. Yep. All right. Moving right along. Ooh. Got engaged in October 2020. Pi I am a Pisces, I think. Or a Reese's Pieces. Either way, uh, it's delicious. Three siblings. I have three siblings. And I was laid off during COVID. Ouch. Laid off and turned to the TikTok. My guess for this is just so wrong. 
My what guess is, is White Claw Gabe, but I don't think it's White Claw Gabe. I have no idea. White Claw. <laughs> you had me at White Claw, Griffin. Yes, I will take a White Claw. Can you fa White FedEx that over, Renee? Let's do it. Overnight. <laughs> I'll have it tomorrow. I'll toast to you, Griffin. <laughs> okay. Any other guesses? I don't know if people are in the chat guessing, too. Oh, somebody's guessing. They're guessing Kabi Lame in the chat. Oh. That seems to be a pretty pretty common guess in the chat. I think they might be onto something. Terrible. We're phoning a friend here. I think that's before your time. I feel like everybody who's here right now, they had no phone a friend. Did you ever watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I'm not that much of an old lady. Okay. All right. Is it Kabi Lame? Let's see. Is that who it is? Oh. oh! Wow. The chat got us. Good for y'all. Look at those chatters. I like it. Okay, one more. Or I don't know if it's one more. We'll see. I started posting at videos at age 13. Okay, we're going up in age here. I have one tattoo, just a single lonely tattoo. I have six Instagram accounts. Okay, who's got time for that? Uh, <laughs> actually, so do I, but you'll never know. I want, I got a lot of Finstas. Okay. I wanted to be a forensic, a forensic anthropologist. I'm going to have to Google that. Hmm. Who could it be? Oh, no, that, that looks like Lauren to me, but I have, I don't know. Yeah, that I, does me look too, like Lauren. Sure. It looks like Lauren or like Daisy. Mm. I'm, I'm looking right. at the, the blonde. I love how y'all are in a first name basis. Do you hang out? Does, there's like a TikTok like secret warehouse somewhere where y'all are like. <laughs> the content creator houses, man. They go crazy. This would yeah. be, I want to see this reality show. I'm here for it. <laughs> Let's I see if Daryl will come back and fund it. Let's go. Because she did post, she started posting very young. Mm -hmm. mm. Now the six Instagram accounts, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She has pet Instagram accounts. Yeah. Mm. Finstas, all the things. Six Instas, one tat. But the comments are guessing someone else. Ruby Nakara is a, is a guess. I don't even know. If, I don't know, Ruby. I don't, I don't, I don't know who that is either. I think it's Ruby. lots of Ruby fan. We got a whole Ruby standum in the in the comments. For real, it seems like it's all right. Lauren or Ruby? I want Lauren or Ruby. Who could it be? Ruby, I guess. Show us the answer. <laughs> Lauren, oh, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I got to go find those Instagrams now. <laughs> Do we have one more? Uh, okay. Oh, I was homeschooled. I appeared. <laughs> dead silence i appeared on the ellen show okay i have two sons and i am a trained pianist oh okay we stumped him renee we got him yeah you guys finally, got harder and harder finally, you guys have been too good at this <laughs> wait so is he on TikTok the two or? sons the sons that's what's getting me because i don't know <laughs> i want to huh. say i forgot his name i don't know but the chat in every single time has been guessing mr beast and zach king come on guys <laughs> oh maybe zach king actually someone said the chat Daniel isn't the chat is interesting we can't phone a friend now. We already used that lifeline. <laughs> can... Who is the the magician TikToker? I can't give you any more hints. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna like all right. Show us the answer. Zach King. Oh. Zach King. Does he is the magician okay. TikToker. Yes, he is yes. the magician. <laughs> <laughs> he magically took the answer out of your brain he did oh, no <laughs> that's how good He's he is too good <laughs> i think javi got it last minute though like right before the reveal yeah i was definitely not you looking guys at what, what five out of six four out of five five out of seven who knows okay. i'm not a mathematician okay <laughs> awesome well thank you guys for playing this was amazing great session um we're gonna be doing some giveaways so we're gonna say goodbye to all of our wonderful amazing guests here uh rachel stick around um so we can do some giveaways but uh thank you to everyone else
Thank you for Thank having you us. Thank you for Thank having you so me. Much. Bye, guys. Bye. Those youngins. Keeping right. me young, keeping me short form. Okay, short let's form. give let's give another let's give away another leg, Renee. Let's, That's a callback. That's it. a callback. Have you ever heard of a callback? You heard of one now. Uh, I, we're doing another what? It's a one year two buddy legend license. Let's do it. Yep, two let's buddy legend. Level. Legendary. Put legend in the chat. Leg end in the chat. Legend in the chat. Okay, somebody's gonna copy donate. Copy gonna donate. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's go. I want to see it coming, coming, coming hot. Let's see it. Let's go. Let's legend. Let's go. You know what? Lord's Brewing Company heard me say earlier that I like a bearded man, and they put a lot of bearded men emojis in there. So I appreciate your attention to detail. Lord's Brewing, brew yourself up a win. You just did it. So learning lesson here is it pays. To suck up to Rachel K. Alvarez. <laughs> it win. actually really does. <laughs> to win big. <laughs> I do, you know what? Just pay attention to me, okay? Isn't that why we're all creators? We just, <laughs> we want to be seen, Renee. We want to be known. That's right. Well, you are known. You are known. <laughs> and, and for the winner, uh, make sure that you are checking out that pinned comment. Fill out that form. Very important. Fill out that form so that we can get you your two buddy legend level license. All right. Let's move on to the next giveaway. We got a channel review, a tube buddy channel review, channelreviews.com. Uh, so you're gonna want to put review in the chat. And remember, you don't have to show it to anybody. You can cry about your review in the bathtub, as I will be doing. All right. You don't nobody needs to know. I'm kidding. The channel review right. is gonna make you so you don't have to cry in the bathtub about your about your channel. You can rejoice in where do you rejoice? Where does one rejoice, Renee? Uh, an open field in a, yes, in a, in a field can, of yes. flowers. You can just of gold. run through okay, the review. Of flowers. <laughs> review, review, review. We got a Rachel in there. We, I saw a Rachel. Um, and was it followed had, by a Kay Albers? Well, no, it wasn't. I was, yeah, I'm posting <laughs> myself. She has a, her name. I, I, it, it went too fast, but her name starts with A and then it was Rachel. R-A-C-H-A-E-L. That is our winner. There you see, I do play favorites. Yeah. People who have picking up on a thing here. All right. So for the winner, make sure that you're checking out that pinned comment, fill out that form, and we're going to get you information for your channel review. And despite what Rachel K. Albers is saying, you may not actually cry from your channel review. It oh, really no. is going to help you figure out how to grow and to do better and awesome, amazing things. So definitely check that out. I'm just right. fragile. Okay. And now the internet knows it. They already did. We got one more thing we're giving away, right? The social blue book. Yes. Look how blue it is. And it's a book. No, it's not. Um, it is. But it, what it is, it's an amazing resource so that you can understand your market, understand your market value when you start to work with brands. Isn't that what all the kids, it used to be, what are you, you know, what are you wearing? Like, what's your logo that you're wearing? Now it's who's your sponsor. So this is, that's like the, that's the wave of the future. So and sometimes work with the same things. Sometimes if you're, if you're sponsored by someone. Oh, you're right. You might be wearing. You might be wearing that. Some of their gear. Oh, yeah. How about that apple? So put blue book, blue book, blue book in the chat. Somebody put Bluetooth. Sorry. No, it's not you. <laughs> blue book. Let's remember the brand here. Okay. I'm looking. My scrap menagerie, menagerie. I like the word menage. There's a lot of places that could go. My scrap menagerie. It's a wonderful word. I'm a theater kid. The glass menagerie. Let's go for it. You are the winner. Awesome. Well, congratulations to you. Again, make sure that you're checking out that pinned comment. Fill out that form and we'll get you your prize over to you. Mm. All right. And it looks away. like that I is like it power. for our giveaways at the moment. Um, Rachel, Thank you so much for sticking around and helping with giveaways and all of this fun stuff. Uh, you and I are going to uh, take a little break and then I'm going to hand things over to um, Alec, who is our VP of influencer integrations Ooh. over at branded entertainment network, just known as Ben now. Um, so let's go ahead and bring Alec on. Yo, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Oh, nice. I, I even Look at that beard. beard for this. You brought I straightened me a bearded man. Before. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a beard until earlier. 
yeah, and then true. heard. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was actually going to shave the beard today. I'm like, no, nope, I've got to keep it for the segment. So the only well reason Well done. Why. Well played. Try All right. Try. Perfect. Okay, Alec, you take it away. Uh, we'll see oh. you later. Awesome. Happy Crater Day. Happy to have everyone here. Uh, so stoked to introduce our next guest. So Steph and I, we go way back. Um, love Steph. Actually, a dear friend of mine as well. We've been working together in various different projects. Um, Steph is the Director of Business Development over at Boom TV. Um, but also manages talent and a talent you may have heard of before, Dr. Disrespect, and a few others as well, too. So stoked to have Stev come join us and talking about building communities and what that means. So Stev, let's bring you onto the stream. Let's let's start. Let's make this thing happen. Good morning. Hey, hey. how you doing? Did you see Love. what I'm rapping right now? I, I was going to say, right when I saw it, I was like, oh, dang, I don't even have a boom hat on. I love that. <laughs> to be honest with you, I actually wear it uh, almost most days because I have a really big head. And it's the only hat that actually fits my head. So... I represent Boom, uh, you know, three to four it. times a week for you. So I love it. I got a bigger head. That that hat doesn't fit mine. So <laughs> okay, well, it's good to know. Well, let's jump into the good stuff. So, Steph, we're going to talk a little bit about community today. And I know a lot of the people watching today are looking to build their community and getting into, you know, how do I become a creator and build a community? And what this looks like, and you know, I've been giving that word community a lot of thought. And like, what does it mean to have a community? Because this feels like a buzzword sometimes for a lot of people. And so, I want to kick over to you. Like, how do you define what a community is? Um, as a creator. Yeah, yeah. As a creator, and then you know, there's a few ways you can look at it, but I think really what a what a community is, is it's it's almost like your social connection to your network or your audience or your fans. And I think even more specifically, it's it's really like a group of people that share similar values and, and interests and passions to what you do. Um, and I, I think, you know, that's that's really how I think about it and, and what I think a community means. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And I love thinking about like the social community, like this digital community. And, like, you know, thinking back, you know, when we were kids, like it was just our community was the kids on the street. You know, we walk outside, we have similar interests. We're going to go play, you know, baseball together, basketball. And like that was our group of people. And what's amazing now with working with content creators and just this form of the Internet is the fact that like you can have people across the world and you have similar interests in a certain creator or a certain type of content. And so you come together and you have that community. And so yeah. um, one of the biggest ones I'm thinking about is esports. The esports community is now massive, so big. And I know Boom TV has a large role when it comes to building this esports community. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about like what Boom does and how Boom builds this community around esports and what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. So Boom's essentially, for those that aren't familiar, it's uh, Boom.TV is we're really a, a gaming and esports platform. And we create, we try to create. Uh, as best as we can, communities for influencers, for brands and partners that we work with and for game developers. Um, so the, the way we do that is we try to create real opportun- opportunities or genuine opportunities for uh, you know the different communities that are out there, whether it's game communities such as like the Valorant community or the Warzone community. And the way we do it is we, we create programs or events. Um, and I think... Uh, a challenge uh, for a lot of, you know, newer or, or people that are trying to get into building a community or becoming a creator is it's it's hard. It's it's not easy. You know, it's difficult. And so what we try to do at Boom is we try to create opportunities that essentially give others uh, a platform. And what we'll do is we'll bring in some of the biggest influencers and in, in streaming for events or tournaments, and we'll host like open events or qualifiers that allow anyone to come participate and then hopefully earn their shot at playing against some of these other big creators. Um, and, you know, it's it's not easy, it's it's difficult, but that that's really like how we're trying to help others build communities and platforms for themselves by creating opportunities for qualifying into events with bigger creators and hopefully making a name for themselves and uh, attaching some cash prize pool to it as well. So Yeah, it's dope. You know, looking back on the events you've done, do you have a favorite one that like comes to mind that's like, oh, I love this one. That one was like, you walk away like that was epic. That was it. Do you, do you have a specific event that comes to mind for that? Uh, there, I, we've done so many. Um, I, and we've done events that are range from like a $25,000 prize pool up to, I don't know, a few hundred thousand dollars. So I think all of them are special in their own way. Um, they're all unique, but there's been – what. When I think of over the last few years, some of the events we've done, I, I think like, again, it comes back to how are we actually creating real value for individuals? And there was a uh, couple, maybe two, two years ago ish, uh, an event that some guys that were relatively like unknown, you know, I mean, 
not very many people watching them, not a, not a big audience, uh, qualified into a couple of our events, ended up winning a few events, then played in a bigger one of our events that was like a $50,000 prize pool and ended up winning that event and getting signed to uh, an actual yeah. esports organization. They got signed to Team Liquid. And I think when I when we think about you know helping people out and helping them build a platform for themselves, I, I think back to like examples like that. And there's been plenty of those, but that one always comes top of mind because uh, it's yeah. like, I'm able to look back and we're able to look back as a team and just like, wow, we actually helped get people signed to an organization and now they're off, you know, full-time streaming and competing. So it's been rad. Love it, dude. I love the stories where like you guys have the opportunity to like foster that growth and like foster the creator to, you know, participate in one of the events and then go on to make it bigger and continue to, to live out their dreams. And that's yeah. awesome. So stoked hey, how, you guys know. And- how's my lighting, by the way? Oh, scooch over a little bit. Can you scoot over just a little <laughs> yeah, bit? Like yeah, this? there you go. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's so bad. I have like, uh, every time I go on camera, I'm like, gosh, my, this light is terrible. I need to move this setup around. Dude, no stress. You're good. You always look beautiful to me, so don't worry about it. Knock Come it on, off. chat. We're working on this, all right? Um, you know, community is also sometimes a bit of a buzzword. You know, some people use it interchangeably yeah. for other things and... Um, I want to make sure like we have a good definition like we talked about where people are coming together, they have a similar passion, they have a similar understanding, they come together, they can talk about things on Discord or on Slack or on Telegram, they come together and or sometimes in the chat. Um, and you know, one of the biggest communities I think about, and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the Champions Club, I love that community. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you think that community is so strong in what it is today? I, I think that you look back to all of the, the foundation and, and the passion that we can draw from Dr. Disrespect himself. Uh, he, he's inspired so many and he's, he's, he's so real and authentic to his brand and to who he is. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing is like all of us as fans and as a part of his community just are so inspired by what he's built because he truly is on a whole other level. Like no one, no one is doing it the way he's doing it himself. Uh, I think it's it's genuinely just so strong because we're all so inspired by what he's been able to create, and we share a lot of similar interests and and you know perspectives and values that he does. So um, that that's really what I think it comes down to. Yeah, no, I agree with you one hundred percent. And looking at that community, like they love who he is and like that persona as well too. And I love when we see him at random random games. Uh, you know that paparazzi shot, and there's Doc sitting in the background <laughs> with his whole gear on. And uh, actually, a side question for that. Is it ever just like uncomfortable for him walking through this, like other people that don't know who he is that are not part of the champions club? Like, do they ever just ask questions like, who the heck is this guy walking around with headphones on and glasses? Or like, what does that, what does it typically look like when he goes into those situations? Uh, I, I, I think, uh, you know, he's a, a unit. He's, he's six foot eight. So I think when you see him out, I think that you instantly, if, if you're not familiar with who he is, you're instantly thinking, who is this guy? You know, because he's a, he's a figure. He's big. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the times people probably recognize him. But if not, like he's certainly catching your eye because he's, he's huge. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, yeah. it's surreal. You know, it's it's crazy to see him out and. I love it. I mean, you have that yeah. brand as well, too. That very noticeable brand when people see that, which is dope. And so, um, you know, going back to community and talking about the Champions Club and talking about how we build these communities together, you know, looking at new creators who are just getting into the space, you know, they've uploaded a few YouTube videos, they're starting to find their voice and they're starting to build this up. What's an advice you'd give for them to help them build that community um, yeah. so that, you know, they can find success with that? I think the biggest thing is just being authentic. I think uh, it's so important to create content and build a community around like what you're actually passionate about, what you truly love. I think if you were to go create golf content, but you don't love golfing, it's just going to down the road. It's going to be such a challenge to continue like innovating and creating creative content. And so I think it's the, the big thing is like when you're starting or, or even if you're you know already somewhat down the road, it's just continuing to stay authentic to like who you are as a person and building around like what you love and what your passions are and, and, trying to differentiate yourself and be unique because there's so many people that are trying to produce content, put content out there. I mean, across all of these different platforms. And so it's, it's really about like, how can you, how can you draw inspiration from others that you might follow or others that you might be a part of their community? How can you look at what they're producing and doing and say, all right, I want to put my own creative spin on it now, or, you know, put my own flavor on it. Um, and I think that that's really it is like, you know, 
following what you're passionate about and producing something and, and growing a community that really like believes in similar things that you do and values that you do and interests. Yeah, I love that. You know, we're uh, we're going to talk about this later on today. And you might see this. So we did a did an interview with Devin Supertramp and talked about a similar thing as well too when it comes to passion. And one of the things we talked about is you know when he switched up his content, he noticed that it didn't do as well. Um, you know, one of the things looking at his community, like they were there for the, the highly produced content and they enjoyed that. But one of the things thinking about like Dr. Disrespect and the community that he's built is it's less about like the type of content, but him as a person. So whether it's Doc out there playing golf or Doc out there at a basketball game or Doc, um, you know, playing Apex or playing Battlefield or Fortnite or whatever it may be, like they're less concerned about what he's doing, but more of him as a person, um, which I think is really, really cool. And that's a unique about, you know, Doc as a creator himself. Um, working through that. Um, you know, when you look at yourself as well, too, working through Boom TV and helping other creators, you know, find this passion, what's kind of like that formula for helping people, like, you know, figure out what that passion is and how they should create that content? You gotta, you just have to sit back and you have to, it's, you might not know the answer right away. It might take some time. It might be a matter of, you know, kind of dipping your toe in the water across a few different things, uh, you know, and, and, Sometimes it's like a matter of testing the waters, getting some content out there, and then kind of feeling out, like, is this work for me? Do I like this style? Should I take it in another direction? You know, am I am I enjoying the content am I, I'm producing? Do I feel like I'm forcing it? Do I feel like I'm, I'm stressing over it? I think it, it really is a matter of like, you should, I, I don't want to sound like a, a broken record, but it just, it's, you just seem like you need to love it and enjoy the content you're producing and truly like, get um you know motivation and inspiration out of it yourself so uh it's just it comes down to that in my opinion yeah just going out there and trying it trying different things and looking at it and you yeah. know i had this thought this morning where i was thinking about like you know the age of the artist is one thing that our ceo ricky ray talks a lot about and i was thinking about the age of the artist like why that matters like looking at creators themselves and the fact that creators these days are empowered to do phenomenal things you know thinking about the internet today and thinking about the things they do they have the tools you know, to create amazing content. They have the knowledge, you have other people doing it. Um, and that's just that desire, that passion, which is really cool. And so looking at creators like Doc and other creators that we've worked with in the past, you know, like they have the power to do awesome things because they care about it and they're empowered to do really, really cool things to make that art. Um, you know, looking at this industry and especially looking at esports, what do you think the future of it looks like from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's only going to continue to evolve and, and get bigger and bigger and uh, grow further and now with like, you know, the the evolution of Web3 and uh, so many new things coming into the, the space, it's it's going to be really interesting. I, I think, um, you know, there's a ton of great game developers out there. There's a ton of great esports leagues. There's a ton of great communities out there. And I, I think it's only going to continue to get bigger and bigger. I mean, you literally now that the younger generation is talking about, um, you know, I, I, I'm a part of that generation, but they're all like I. I hear more and more people talking about video games and gaming and esports than I do talking about sports. Like growing up, I we we all played video games, but we never it was never like we're we were aspiring to be like competitive gamers. And now I just I hear it more and more like people are talking about like that's their goal or that's what I want to do, whether it's content creator, or YouTuber, or um, you know a professional athlete or professional or professional gamer um and less about being like a professional athlete which i think is interesting so i think that's just uh you know a foreshadow of what the future of it looks like yeah i mean it's just people are going to continue to be passionate about and want to do it um you know as you're talking about that i was thinking about you know the fact that there's like esports leagues and schools uh and i love that i love that there are esports leagues and schools because thinking about like you know, finding your community, you know, for myself, I may not be an athlete who can run the football across the field and I may not be that person, but Hey, I really have this passion for battlefield or I have this passion for Fortnite or whatever it may be, or, um, you know, and coming together with other similar people at school and finding that community, I feel like it's awesome. And it just really gives people an opportunity to have a voice in that, that, um, throughout it. What are your thoughts on that? As far as like esports leagues and schools and, um, you know, younger, younger generations getting into that. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think that, you know, schools and uh, uh, universities and programs are being created by uh, these systems. I think it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves in the future because one of the one of the young guys I work with, his name's Arkham. He plays for 100 Thieves, and I when I first met him, he was only 14, and 
at the, you know, he, he's 18 now. So four years ago, and that was near the start of uh, Fortnite. And I think that it was, it was crazy to see how good he was at Fortnite. He made it to the world cup. Um, he qualified in for both solos and duos and he, you know, he placed top 10 in, in both and, uh, or, or maybe I think he, it was only solos, but my point is, is that he, he doesn't need to, and he didn't need to necessarily go to play college sports or play in his high school because you can compete, you know, from the comfort of your own bedroom and play at the highest level. So in that aspect, like, you know, when you look at sports and you look at the traditional model, of like you go from high school to college to then you can potentially become a professional. You don't necessarily have to do that in gaming. You can kind of jump from a young age to just being one of the best players in the world so i've always thought like it'll be interesting to see what the future of that looks like uh, and, and how that shapes out just because the mere fact that again like you could be 14 years old you could be 13 and and be one of the best at, at a game and so who's to say that you need to necessarily go compete in high school or college when you can already compete at the highest level i think it's i think it's awesome from the perspective of the opportunities they're creating though like to be able to go to school and earn a scholarship and you know get that education i think that's still awesome but i just think from a like a competitive perspective uh it'll be interesting to see where where it leads to or yeah. if like some sort of formal structure gets put into place you know like would they could they ever could a system ever come in and and force uh professional gamer to um have to go to college before they could sign to an organization like phase or hunter thieves or will it always be no you can just jump into a east an esports organization when you're 15 if you're good enough like who knows yeah. i i don't know but it'll be crazy to see so yeah i love it i love the fact that like it's less about who you know or like what you've been doing but just like normal people can do it you know, I'm yeah. really, really good at Fortnite. I can go there and I can start to competing, you know, at a local level and then start to grow. Um, and I love one of our comments we have here in the chat from Hushy down here is if they say that I think it's worth mentioning. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of effort and a skill to get there. And that's really true. Um, you know, looking at esports and looking at, you know, how to build that community and get really good at a game. Like it's not just going to happen overnight. We're doing 360 no scopes and they get signed by phase the next day. Like it takes a long time to build that up and be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, so Steph, thank you for saying that. Yeah. And it also, it might come down when you're at a young age too, it might come down to like, what is your, your home life? Like, what is your family situation? Do you have, cause I've seen both sides. I've seen parents that are very supportive, but I've also seen parents that are like, you're spending too much time on the game. You need to focus a little bit more on school or you need to get out and play, you know, you need to practice whatever sport you're playing in school. And so I think that that'll impact it too. Like, what is it, what does the individual's home life look like? And do they have a family or or parents or a parent that is supportive of them kind of grinding that because to that comment you you might spend five six seven even more hours a night just grinding to be the best at your craft and still might have to continue doing that you know for for ever to stay at uh the the highest level of play and um if you're a young kid if, if you're only 15 16 and you're, you're still living at home with your parents um who's to say that like you know, that that might not have an impact on it. It could be, you know, it could be both positive or negative, but uh, it's it's challenging. Nonetheless, it's challenging. So I my hat goes off to all the the young guys that are grinding and like playing at the highest level. I have nothing but respect for all these guys because some of them are insane. I can't even I used to consider myself pretty good at most games, most of the FPS games. But now I just I see the young town. It's, it's honestly inspiring. I'm like, wow, these guys are insane so yeah and demoralizing for myself personally just whenever we get on apex and we get slaughtered every single time <laughs> like that i can't i can't yeah. handle what i drive so yeah just have some sweats out there oh uh, dude it is and it's but it's cool like i said going back to like building that community and thinking about giving people a voice giving people a sense of belonging is yeah. one of the things that i really love about esports and just about gaming and just about creating content in general is like i have a place that i belong i am part of the champions club or i'm part of those other community and it gives people that identity as well too and i love it whenever i'm walking around the mall or whatever and i see someone wearing like a dr disrespect sweatshirt you know i want to give you a call every time like look this person champions club over here um you know and it's cool that like they found those friends they found that environment where they can be part of and i love it i love it because it gives people that voice and that that sense of home and that sense of belonging um, and so I love that. And so Libra Dragon, yeah. you hit that right on the point as well too. Like you have that system to support you um, where you where you go as well too. So thanks for the chat on that one as well. Of course, yeah, it's it's amazing to 
to be able to be a part of communities, you know, and, and have uh, just shared interests with with individuals that, you know, they're whether they're a fan of an influencer or content creator, whether they're a fan of a different game. Um, some of some of my best friends or some of the, the people that I'm closest to are the ones that I spend, you know, nights gaming with. Right. And so uh, I think being a part of a community is is super impactful to your life as well, like having the connection with individuals and being able to open up and talk about shared interests. Uh, it, it's just healthy. It's good for you. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. That's dope. I, I, you know, for the for the business people on the chat as well too, who are listening in, like, uh, you know, Steph, you and I have talked a, a lot about this. You know, playing Apex together, it's like gaming is kind of the new golf these days, especially for a lot of people. Um, you know, like we'll have a full day of work. You and I working on campaigns or getting a new Instagram video live or Twitch stream or YouTube stream going live, and then at the, at the end of the day, it's like, hey, you want to jump on Apex and just go play together? Yeah. And I love that because like it builds that real relationship. Although you're out in California, I'm out here in Utah. Like we have the opportunity to still be friends and have that like that connection after work. Um, and so it's dope that gaming's brought those communities together. So yeah, yeah, it's it's such a great platform like to be able to connect with people and build relationships. I built some of my best relationships have built, been built over, you know, the last few years of just, and I know I kind of just said this, but just from gaming, literally just hopping on and, and you really get to know people and, um, and build great relationships just through gaming, whether it's whatever, Fortnite, Warzone, Valorant, you name it, like whatever the game may be. Um, it's just, it's an awesome platform to, to build long lasting relationships. So love it, dude. Well, Steph, thanks for coming to join us. Thanks for your perspective. Appreciate, yes, you know, dropping some, some knowledge in us when it comes to building this communities, having that passion, working well together. And, uh, you're a good dude. Thanks for coming to join us today. We appreciate it. Hey, I really appreciate you having me and I'm, I'm excited to tune in the rest of the day. And, uh, I apologize about my lighting. I got to come on. I, I'm chat. not, I'm not up, a special chat. content creator myself. So uh, I apologize about the lighting. I knew it was going to be an issue. I was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to get crap from my lighting. But uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And, and thanks for having me, Alec. I appreciate it. Keep it up, man. You guys are killing it. Always, man. Steph, appreciate it. We'll chat later, dude. Take yes, it sir. easy. Well, let's do this thing. Renee and Rachel, you come and join us. Let's let's talk about some good stuff. Hey, it's all good stuff. It's great stuff. Yeah, I'm especially when so you're much. talking about community. So honestly, I think mm. it's such a good topic. And today is all about celebrating community. Um, you know, something that's very important to to TubeBuddy and 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 to Ben having that community. But it's also important to me personally. Like I feel like I found my tribe in in creators and kind of video marketers. And uh, it's just so wonderful, kind of you know, knowing some people who are in the same space. I know that people who are outside of the space get tired of hearing me talk about video and YouTube and creating content. So it's great to have people where you can, uh, that are actually excited to talk about those things. So community yeah. is very important. So I get, I get sentimental about it a little bit, to be honest with you, because I think about like my little kids when they go to school one day and like, like it was hard growing up sometimes when you don't have friends mm -hmm. or you don't have, you know, someone to talk to in school and knowing that you know, my kids, you know, whatever their social situation may look like at school can, you know, find a community online, whether that's in Fortnite or Minecraft or whatever that is. And it's awesome knowing that, like, that support system there is for good. Uh, but also want to plug it, can they be negative as well, too? And so making sure we're building positive communities and supporting each other and loving each other. And no, don't just be the troll behind the keyboard, but mm -hmm. really be a human being. Those are people out there. And so uh, thanks for having us, letting us talk about that. I appreciate it. Yeah, great topic. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and let you go, give you a break. Uh, and you're going to be back later. I'll see later. your beard later, okay? Bye. I might shave it in between segments. Oh, no. A yeah, whole new person when he comes back. It's okay. We're here for all of the sides of you. Yes. You know what, speaking right. of that and the community, I, what I was watching is there was, there was one person in the chat who was, like, sending a bunch of mean comments. And there were people that were champions. They're like, if you don't have anything nice, anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I was like, look at this two buddy community coming in, supporting each other. I was very heartened to see that. Our community is the best, honestly. Like I, um, not to get too sentimental here, but you know, in the process of putting together. Uh, this live celebration, obviously we reached out to lots of creators. We got lots of different creators involved in this. Everyone was super excited to join and to celebrate the community. And, you know, when I was reaching out to people, I had people who, and we had a team of people reaching out, but for my personal experience, when I reached out, um, people said yes instantly. 
what do you want me to do? Throw me in wherever you want me, whatever the schedule is, whatever you need. And that was just so heartwarming. Like I appreciate our community every day, but this week appreciate them even more. So thank you to everyone who's joining the live stream, whether you're a guest on the channel or just in the live chat, you mean everything to us. So thank you so much. Hey, I'm um, having so much fun with these chatters, the chatties, the chatalinos, the chatalinos. That's what I'm going to call them. Sounds new fun. Word. And speak, <laughs> let's have some more fun. We're going to game it up, aren't we? Speaking of gaming. Let's do it. And we are going to play uh, with the live chat. So we're going to play with the live audience here. Yes. We're going to do some YouTube trivia. Um, so oh my gosh. let me, there's new rules to each of these games. So let me see what the rules are for this one. All right, so here's how it's gonna work. Um, we're gonna ask a question that has a specific number, date, or fact. Um, and if you think you know the answer, throw it in the chat and then we're randomly gonna select a winner with the right answer to receive a Creator Day shirt. And again, I know you can't see my shirt, I am wearing one, but it looks a little something like that. Um, that's Fancy. the logo there. So really cool uh, design for Creator Day. And it just kind of shows off that you were part of something very, very special this year. So let's jump in. Do you want to, do you want to? Oh, I'll take it from here, Renee. I like these questions. I like because I don't have to actually answer them. On what holiday was the YouTube.com domain purchased? Was it New Year's Day? Was it a New Year's baby? Little YouTube baby? Was it Valentine's Day? You know, falling in love with creation. Was it the 4th of July? Wave that flag for YouTube. Or was it Christmas Day? The gift, YouTube, the gift that keeps on giving. I don't know, actually. <laughs> Wait a minute. So we're supposed to choose the correct answer, but I don't know the correct answer. So are we going <laughs> to... We will see the correct answer. So put your answers in chat. And then uh, our producer behind the scenes is going to reveal the answer. And then we'll pick the answer here. You know, to be okay. honest, I don't know the answer to this either. Uh, we got a lot. We got a lot of B. A lot of people are in love with creation. Okay, yes. A lot of people are saying B, but we got some. You know what? People are throwing it in for all of them. So we'll just have to reveal the answer, and then we'll I'll scroll back and find randomly choose a winner. I would have guessed B also, but again, I don't know the answer. So let's see it. Let's reveal let's what go. the actual yeah. answer is. Look at that. Wee! Okay, I'm gonna scroll through. I'm gonna find this winner in here. Soul Bird's Nest. Soul Bird's Nest. I'm just I letting the spirit love guide all the handles. Today. Yeah, it's such a great name. I like it. <laughs> all right, make all sure right. that you for the last winner. Make sure that you uh, go to that linked, um, the pinned comment. Go to that form. Fill out your information um, so that you can get your Creator Day uh, T-shirt. Want to make sure that we get that T-shirt. Okay. Right, I'll do the next one while you pick up whatever it is that you just dropped. So I'll just <laughs> okay. Oh, you're taking the fun away from me. All right. What year was YouTube purchased by Google? A, 2004. B, 2006. C, 2008. And D, 2010. So put in your answers. You can you can put your answer in multiple times. So copy and paste, copy and paste. If you think you know that right answer. And then Rachel Ray, Rachel. Oh, I called you Rachel. Oh, Ray. Rachel, Rachel K. Albert. Yes, Rachel K. Albers. <laughs> I'm gonna choose that winner. You play royalties. <laughs> I'm going down memory lane here. 2006 is when I graduated college. Put that one in your RKA fun fact. That's not fun at all. Nobody cares. Okay, who? What could it be? I, I would guess maybe. I guess i'm gonna go with b i'm gonna go with b personally that's my guess Got i know the people. answer so i'm not gonna guess uh, all right so we'll, we'll wait we'll wait until the answer is revealed all right do we have enough entries already should we reveal this answer entries we got some entries which one is it all right let's reveal the answer <gasps> i feel so good about myself oh my gosh yes i'm a winner but but somebody else well, is going to but I'm going to go scroll through. Exciting Electronics. Exciting Electronics guessed it. And they had an exclamation point. And I appreciated that about them. Because I'm a human exclamation point. So we like the enthusiasm. Like sees like here. Awesome. We'll make sure you find that pinned comment and fill out that form. And we'll get you a Creator Day t-shirt. This is making All me right. depressed about my bank account. How much was YouTube purchased for? A, 1.95 million, B, 1.15 billion, C, 1.65 billion, or D, 
1.95 billion. That's so many billions. So this is a good a time for money. me to plug the fact that I do have billions. I have 2.1 billion GIF views. If you search for RKA in GIFs, like when you're looking for GIFs, like Giphy, wherever, you will find thousands of me. Okay. So that's my, I am a billionaire, Renee. So, you know what? First off, there's only one of you. And secondly, I am not surprised at all that you are all over Giphy. Like that just seems. That I, just I seems live in Giphy me. I live in Giphy me. So, okay. I wonder what it is. I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to guess C. That just feels right to my heart. 1.65 I know this one billion. Feels, I won't guess. All right. Uh, let's, yeah. uh, let's, let's reveal see. that answer. Let's see. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, you're on it. I'm on it. Okay, I'm gonna scroll through. Let's find it. Let's find it. Ooh, Libra Dragon. Libra Dragon. It's your day. You're a Libra. You're a dragon. You're all of the things. And now you're a winner. And now you're a winner with a Creator Day shirt. Make sure you go to that pinned comment, fill out that form, and we'll send you some fun swag. All right, swagging it up. Swag right. ragged ding dong. Okay. I'll read this one. Well, where are the main uh, YouTube headquarters located? A, San Diego, which is where I'm based. Uh, B, San Bruno. C, San Francisco. D, San Jose. Here's a dad joke for you. We don't talk about Bruno. Okay, Renee? That's an Encanto reference. I do have a four-year-old. <laughs> We don't talk about Bruno. No, I, so, the chat I have knows. no it's idea what you're referencing right now. It's a, it's I'm like either too old or too young. I don't know. <laughs> it, you know what? It's honestly, uh, it is truly a film that can be enjoyed by many ages. I highly recommend Disney's Encanto. My kid loves it. So we're not going to talk about Bruno anymore. Um, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. Uh, I'm going to guess San Francisco. It's a tech, the tech haven, right? I don't know. I'm not cool. I know this one. I've actually been to the office, so I can't get I can't guess this one. Either. Oh, dropping that flex yeah. there. I've been <laughs> to the office. What did you do there? Anything anything naughty? Uh no, I actually I did teach teach some uh workshops about how to create a YouTube ad. So I've worked with their oh. team a couple of couple of different ways. But all right, let's uh let's reveal the answer and okay. then reveal some winners. <laughs> We do talk about Bruno San Bruno. Right. What is, how about that? I knew it in my heart. I knew it in my heart. So let me scroll down. Let me find a B. Trick Maniac. Trick Maniac had B B B B B. So we're giving it to the trickster over here. Trick Talk. Remember that? That's another callback to our earlier interview. Yes. Yeah, so uh, for the last winner, make sure that uh, that you find that pinned comment and fill out that form. So you can out. get your creator day swag. Make it happen. All right. Let's go to the next next one. Ooh, How long is the longest YouTube video ever published? 596 hours. That can, I mean, okay, 27 hours. Who has the bandwidth for any of this? C, 111 hours. And D, 12 hours. So A is 596. B is 27. C is 111. D is 12. And I'm going to go with C here just because I like angel numbers. I like those like repeating numbers. They always have a magical meaning. So I'm going to say 111 hours. Speaking of repeating. Of How many days is that? No, there's no way. Speaking of repeating, copy and paste your answer. Copy and paste. Copy, copy and paste. It and We're paste just going to randomly pick one of you. Do it. <clears throat> yeah, I do like the, I wonder what 111 means today. I'll have to look it up all the time i'm always like this is a magical year by the way renee it's the two, 2022 so like i took the day off on two 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 just to like let magic happen to me and i recorded Ooh. my first podcast episode that day I started a new show so how about that it was a, it was a magical thing i don't know if that's magic happening versus you making magic happen well you made well, it happen together they got, I yeah. think that's the thing of manifesting is like where you put your attention grows. So when you focus on something, then you, it uh, allows you to like find the opportunities to make it happen. I don't know. I'm just, so when you make it happen, it happens. That's the moral of that lesson. When you make, you it, make happen, it happen, it happens. happens. <laughs> that is the moral actually. Okay. So what is it? Come on, give it to us. Give it to us straight. Oh, what? 
that blows my mind. How much hosting space do you need? How many computers do you need to make that happen? All but, right, I'm going to go through here. Who said A? Now, oh, wait, no. Ah, hushy, 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 hushy. It's you. You said A, and now you got a t shirt for it. Hey. How about that? All right, Hushy, uh, congratulations to you. Make sure you find that pinned comment. Enter the information into the form and we will get you a Creator Day shirt. Mm. All right, what's what's up next? Oh, it was the first video to reach a billion views. Probably something really depressing. Uh, a, Despacito. B, Gangnam Style. I don't, I'm don't. i just laughing thinking about it. C, Baby. See, I don't even know. Is that Justin Bieber? Is that what that is? Uh, I actually don't Biebs. know. And D, Hello. Is that Adele? I'm just guessing out here. So is it Despacito, Gangnam Style, Baby, or Hello? I think it's Gangnam Style. Because I know that was like back in the day when you talk about the first video to reach a billion views. Gangnam Style is way back. So I think it was that. And I got to do the dance. Is this the dance? Am I doing it? I You're doing I, it better than I would. I am definitely I not trying to do that dance. I think I would pick C. Um, if Even though you if don't know what it Justin is? <laughs> if it's Justin Bieber. Um, because I know there are definitely yeah. some music videos that are pretty popular on YouTube, but but I don't know. This this is a wild card. Well, Gangnam Style is a music video. It's I'm true. Gonna sing it. It, it's well, it's kind of a mock music video. It's a little little different. Uh, all right, give it give us the answer. Let's know it. Oh, I'm killing it. Well done. I'm gonna okay. send you a Creator Day shirt as well. You won that one, so let's send you Goodness. one, and we're also gonna send one to someone in the audience. And I'm choosing the goodness fund because I hope that that is something goodness related, like something, it sounds like something maybe for the world, making it better, the community, the goodness fund. Maybe I'm wrong. All right. Goodness fund. You are our winner. Um, make sure that you find that pinned comment, fill out that form and we'll send you some creator day swag. Are these adult sizes, these t-shirts? Uh, well, for each of the t-shirts within the form, you pick your own size. So okay. we're, but we're the not size picking size for you. We want to we want to make sure that we're sending stuff that actually. That was a question people. in the comments, so I'm just trying to you know throw it back. So I think they are adult size. I, the, I think actually, so. if you want them to be kid size, they can be kid size as well. So oh, well, yeah, that? lots of we are working with uh, Spreadshop, who is our um, our merch partner. They've done some amazing things with us throughout this uh, for Creator Day and throughout this partnership. Um, and so they have all ranges of sizes. Um, so whatever your size is, you'll be able to pick it. If it's, if you want something, um, you know, for, for your kids, feel free to, to get something for them. And if you want something adult size, you can get adult size as well. So a lot of variety. Remember when we were young or I don't even know, but like when it was cool to wear a kid's shirt that like came up, you know, you could barely fit it on. That was like the cool thing to wear like a kid's XS, like a kid's extra small, and those low hanging jeans. I'm so glad that those are out. Are they back? I don't they're, know. They're not out, actually. They're back in. Oh, the half no. shirts are back oh, in. Gosh. I just feel like my stomach would be cold. It's just, <laughs> I'm not built for that. My stomach <laughs> would be much, cold. Too much air down there. <laughs> I get it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The most disliked video on YouTube Baby's oh, Back, by the way. Lots yeah, of we're going negative here. A Baby Shark. I mean, listen, I got it. I have a, I, I, it's burned into my brain. So that makes sense to me. B, YouTube Rewind 2018. Is there something I missed there with that? I don't know. Is that like a thing that happened? I got to look it up. C, baby, again. Uh-oh. And then D, wheels on the bus. There's no way that's it. It's not polarizing enough. Gosh, I'm going to go with, I have a thing. I think it's baby shark, personally. I'm a mom and it haunts my dreams. So... <laughs> Yeah, this this is this is tough to be there. I I kind of want to say the YouTube rewind. What happened with that? What is that? Can you fill me in? Yeah, I I you know I don't know the whole fiasco. There was some some controversy about that. You know what? I'm gonna change my answer though. I'm gonna go with C baby because I did guess it as one of the most popular videos. So I'm gonna guess it here as one of the most disliked. Yeah, it's a context clue right there. Let's see what is it. Should have gone with your gut, Renee. Should have right. gone with your gut. 
Yeah. I'm All right. Back here. Who's, I'm, our, who's our winner this time around? Okay. I'm looking. Birdies blooms with a Z. I like the Z. I like ending words with Z. Birdies blooms with a Z. It's your lucky day, Birdie. Tweet, tweet. You just want a t shirt. I thought you were going to make a rhyme in there somewhere. <laughs> you know what? You never know what's around every corner with me, Renee. That's You should know that by now. Yep. Full of surprises. But I, I learned earlier today that is one of the keys to humor. Truth and surprises. Oh, my gosh. I just right a callback. I did make you funnier. It happened. Well, I don't know that you made me funnier. I just remembered some of the facts. You know, if you See, remember now, fact, now you want to you want to run against the rules of comedy because the rules of comedy are yes and you can't say no, Rachel. You're wrong. You have to say yes, yes and, and whatever else you were going to say. So yeah, I, and the I, other I, thing I, I was going to say is to our last winner: make sure you find that pinned comment, put in your uh, all the information into that form so that we can get you your Creator Day merch. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Awesome. All right. So I do want to mention that we have um, a special deal actually for Creator Day. Um, and for anyone who goes over to the uh, Creator Day website, so you can go to tubebuddy.com slash creator day or internationalcreatorday.com. Um, we have a deal exclusively for Creator Day for creators. Um, and it is 20% uh, off any license um, from TubeBuddy. So any license that you want, or even if you're upgrading, um, we're also bundling in some uh, you know, great offers from different partners that we've worked with. Uh, so you'll get two months free from Ecamm, uh, Soundstripe, uh, and Social Blue Book. So a really great Creator Day bundled package. So uh, just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that kind of a special thing. You've that been holding out on us, Renee. In honor of Creator Day. That is awesome. You're dry, you're just tucking that in here midway through. I'm excited. You know what? We're giving stuff away all throughout the day. You got to be here to win. But we also want to make sure that we're giving away something, um, you know, some type of gift that people can can sign up for for uh to make their content better so creator the creator day bundle is something that we're offering um it will be available tomorrow as well but today is kind of the day to get started if you haven't on uh creating content so that's gonna kind of get you into a good spot um it's also just gonna help you level up your content so great thing to take advantage of um i am having a hard time seeing the live chat so it would be great for one of the moderators to make sure that you're including the link to the creator day bundle so that people know where to find out and then have access to that package. Get that wingman in here. Wingman Renee. Speaking of wingmanning, somebody in the chat explained to me about their YouTube rewind. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm gonna have to go Google it later. Giveaways, what? Let's uh let's give away some more stuff. Yeah. Let's 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 do this. Let's um do it. All right. So that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I start had to, those jokes. <laughs> I had to do it because I got my Michael Scott mug here. Right? So I had to work one in there and I'm so proud of myself and not and ashamed at the same time. And that's the journey we're on today. I feel so like it's pretty easy to work that one in there. Like you can no, kind of work all it in time. almost like at any, <laughs> any point. I love, honestly, I love that. I, got, I love a good your mom joke. I got, I am like a 12 year old in a, you know, I will not disclose how many years old this body is now, but um, uh, we got a hundred bucks for the spread shop shop, a hundred dollar voucher. Is that what we're giving away right now? That's what we're giving away. So a hundred dollar voucher that you can use on your own spread shop uh, shop. So if you haven't opened a spread shop shop, I highly recommend it. So I actually opened one specifically for creator day. It was a super easy process to, to open one up. Um, and then spread shop is compatible with the merch shelf. Uh, directly within in YouTube. So you can sell your merch uh, directly from your YouTube channel. Um, and they've got some amazing selections of things. This is from Spreadshop. Um, you know, they've got a lot of variety there. They even have stuffed animals, like lots of really cool stuff that's available um, mm. to be branded on the Spreadshop shop. So Ooh. $100 voucher. Uh, right now we're going to have the word of the day for this one is shop. So add the word shop. Oh, shop. People, people already know what to do. I know. I they got it. Before I even mentioned They're ahead it. Ahead of their time. Copy, paste, copy, paste. And mm -hmm. Rachel K. Albers, you get to pick the winner. It's Nikki Connected for me. 
She's got a cute, I love the profile pic. There's a blue background. See, that's the thing. That's like, that's one of my hacks. You can even see it when you go to the creator day, like landing page, my headshot with my bright yellow background, it just bams you off the screen. I was like, I felt, I felt a little bit bad. I was like, wow, this is distracting. But I love that it, as a hack for your user image, whether you're on YouTube or another social platform, take a boring headshot of yourself and just cut yourself out. You can do it in Canva and, and put like a brightly colored, one of the colors in your brand color palette, put it in the background. It makes you more memorable. I, am, I remember people, I'm always going to remember that blue little profile pic. You know, um, when I, I was helping to arrange the headshots on the Creator Day landing page, I, w I was very intentional where I put all of the bright headshots. So yours is yellow. We've got a couple other people that added yellow. And then the I other main color was purple. So there was some like big purple colors there too. Mine is gray. I need to rethink mine. You do. Um, so some, something that stands out. I Get usually actually use my, my t-shirts to stand out, but uh, yeah, I need to, I need a pop. I can see color. Nikki Connected's whole outfit is like vibing for me. There's a blaze, there's like a blue blazer. I am going to have to go check Nikki Connected out after to see what's going on behind the channel. I love it. Speaking of behind the channel, we got something else to give away, right? We got another channel review, right? That was the most amazing transition. I'm going to call I, that I, out. I was proud of myself <laughs> well as I came out. <laughs> I'm going to have to hang that one on the refrigerator. So another channel review from channelreviews.com. And this is going to give you the insights that you need to improve your channel. You don't have to cry about it like I do in the bath. You can rejoice about it in an open field. That's exactly what's going to happen after you get your channel review. I can be a smoke. I, could, I should be on like Wheel of Fortune or something with this. Like, let's go. Price is right. I want to do this. for the <laughs> You're watching my career pivot as we speak, people. It's live. It's happening here. You saw it here first. We're making so it happen. So put the word review. Put the word review in the chat. People know they're doing it. They top are paste, doing top it. Paste. Oh my goodness gracious! I'm looking for something that speaks to my soul. There are so many good ones. Up, oh, I got it. It's Tamara K. It's Tamara K. I'm being a favor, a favoritism among people who have similar names to me. So Tamara K, you got it. Now we know the secret to winning. Congratulations to you. Make sure you find that pinned comment, fill out that form, uh, and then we'll make sure that we get you the information for channel reviews. Hmm. All, right. All right. This is my favorite. I love to give away legs. We're giving it away another TubeBuddy Legend license. Don't let my joke fool you. So to enter, you got to put the word leg end, otherwise known as legends, into the chat. Giving away legs, not arms though. No arms this year, maybe next year. Put it in your notes, Renee. Put legend in the chat. I'm, I'm trying to come up with some bad jokes here. I'm I know. Gonna, I'm this is going to give your channel some legs. This oh, gonna, there you go. Like, yeah. You, you um, can do it. Put your leg into it. That's really bad. <laughs> No, you gotta I, try. You gotta play with it. Worse than mine. <laughs> you gotta play. You know what? I saw air for you. Air for you. Is that like there for you? Oh wait, I get it. Oh my god, air for you. There for you. So air, air for you as in oxygen and breathing. Well, I don't know. We're having giving you life. Out. Ever go? Everybody go chill. A little bit air for you. That's our winner. Air All right. for air you. for you. That is our winner. I love anything with like a four. I, I like. I'm, I'm a dork, I like dorky humor. And you've learned that today. Air for you. Go for you. I did not learn that today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, she look at her go. Like, I taught her how to be funny and now I regret it. I can't believe it. Yep. Now it's backfiring. Uh, so air for you. Congratulations to you. Make sure you find that pinned comment, fill out that form. And we're going to send you information for your TubeBuddy legend level license that, that is going to help give your channel legs to grow and run and to do even more. You're a copywriter now. Put that in your resume. <laughs> I like it. And I feel like my work here is done kind of. I've, I've made you funnier. I've done a ton of callbacks. I gave away free stuff. I told the internet that I like bearded men. I mean, there was something for everyone today and I might. I might just have to leave on a high note, I think. 
are are you are you tired of seeing my face is that is that is that really what's happening here <laughs> you know what i'll never talk remember we're best friends so i'll see That's you right. in a couple hours when we have a pizza party we're having a slumber party tonight <laughs> Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's, you know, just so amazing to have you here. And it just, it's been nice just to see all of the rainbowness that is you. Everything is so on brand with you. I love it. <laughs> That's what I do. A little plug for what I do. You see my logo in the background, check her out. But seriously, it's been a blast. I've had so much fun today. I just dropped my AirPod. And that's my cue. So uh, I'll see you on the internet. And okay. you're out. That's your mic drop. Thanks again. All right. Thank you everyone for playing. Um, next up, we have uh, Megan who's coming back. Um, who is, let me uh, let me just make sure she's here. There we go. Yeah. Welcome back, Megan. Yes, thank you so much. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and excuse myself and, and let you take it away for this next exciting interview that we've got going. Amazing, thank you so much. Well, I'm excited to be back on. And uh, for this next sort of spotlight, if you will, we're going to talk about breaking into a saturated category. Um, and specifically, we're going to be tackling, you know, the beauty, fashion and lifestyle category. Um, I'm going to be talking with one of my favorite creators. She is truly talented, truly one of a kind, um, Rachel Levin, whose moniker is also known as RCL Beauty 101. Um, and she'll be joining me in a second, hopefully, so we can chat. Oh, I'm in. Hello. Hi. Oh, it's so good to see your face. Welcome. And thank you for being here. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Amazing. Well, I know that, you know, you're somebody who definitely doesn't really need an introduction, but I would love for you to, you know, tell everyone a bit about yourself. You have had such an incredible creator journey. You started making content in 2010 when you were just a young teenager um, and obviously have grown into such a powerhouse. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and, and how you got started? Yeah, I feel like I have like the standard YouTubers journey when they like what got them into doing YouTube. But for me, I was 15 and I was in high school and I had no friends. So basically, I guess I would watch a lot of YouTube videos instead of hanging out with people after school or doing any sports or anything like that. So I would go home from school, watch makeup tutorials, and then eventually it got to the point where like, Whenever I was doing my makeup in the mirror for school, I'd be like, okay, now we're going to apply this concealer to your under eye and this eyeshadow to your outer V. And basically it was just like doing a makeup tutorial in the mirror. And I was like, okay, so like maybe I have an issue. So then I decided just to like make a video because I always had pretty dark, dark circles. So I was like, I'm going to do a video on how to conceal under eye dark circles. And the first video was so awkward. Like it wasn't even like... Hey guys, like now I'm like, hey guys, it's Rachel. Back then I was like, hey guys, it's Rachel, and I'm gonna show you guys how to conceal under eye dark circles. <laughs> so I feel like at first it was really awkward, anyways. So you don't have to be charismatic when you start. You could be very awkward when you start. But um, yeah, and eventually I guess it just. I mean, it didn't really take off for about three, four years or so. I think, I think it took a while. But then, for me, the big thing that happened was. I mean, obviously I was making videos that I was passionate about. Then I got really into like trying to learn the algorithm and like try to figure out the patterns and which causes a video to do well. And once I got obsessed with that, plus just making good content, I feel like that's when things started picking up for me. But yeah, no, I definitely started out YouTube because of a lack of friends. And like being bullied in high school, I was like, yeah, no, high school is not a not good. I'm going to go ahead and escape online. And that's how I got started. But I also feel like that's how every YouTuber got started. We're like, no, we didn't have friends. We were being bullied in high school. We were the outcasts. And now we're making YouTube videos. Because I feel like it's not like a natural thing. At least back in the day, it wasn't like a natural thing to want to be a YouTuber. It was like considered weird. And now it's considered cool. And I love that. That's dope. But that's how I got started. Yep. And no, that makes a lot of sense. I 
I mean, you've touched on so many things that I want to expand upon. I think, you know, the first is the algorithm. That's something that, you know, it's a little bit of a loaded term. I think it connotates a lot of things. But, you know, you, you, you said that, you know, it took a few years. It was definitely something that you had to build. But you did gain, if I'm not mistaken, 6 million followers in a year. You had sort of a, yes. an uptick all of a sudden. What do you contribute to that? Obviously, that fell in line with you and your love for the algorithm and that exploration. But, you know, what was that like? And, and, and how, how do you, what do you contribute to that success? Um, well, I feel like for me, the big thing was I was always making videos that I was proud of, like, and I know that's very cliche, but I was always making like, like working my tushy off on videos, like spending like days editing it. So I feel like by the time my videos started getting discovered, I remember when I was talking to somebody at YouTube about it, cause they were trying to figure out how is she doing so well? And they're like, well, what we found when we were looking into your analytics was that when someone watches one of your videos, they watch three videos. So usually it takes like three videos for someone to subscribe, I would say. Like it's the same with commercials. Like, you know, when you're watching a commercial and you see a product, like you have to see it three times or a song. When you first hear it, you have to hear it three times. And then it's right. like, you know, so I feel like people were watching like three videos. So I feel like the fact that I was like making videos that were like high quality for a while, had a, I had a lot of things for people to find. But then also yep. a big thing really was like, like, looking into what caused a video to do well like I think a while back obviously it's different it's it's much more saturated right now in terms of like how easy it is to figure out but like I figured out what I would do is I would like make my thumbnails the thumbnails were the big one here's how I would describe it to my friends when I would like try to explain to them how to do well on YouTube is like okay so the title that's good for like getting your video pushed to people like the keywords that are in the title and stuff like that. Um, the thumbnail is what grabs people's attention. The title is what makes them click on the video. The video itself, um, like the concept of the video is what gets someone to watch it, like how good the video is and your personality is what gets them to subscribe. So um, I would say that it's a, it's really just looking into what you think does well. Like something that did well for me back in the day was like, I would know that if a thumbnail had a rainbow in it, nobody was doing that right back in the day. I was like, okay, no one's putting rainbows in their thumbnails. So I would make my thumbnail, make it really small, Photoshop it into the YouTube homepage and put it in a random spot and then close my eyes and then open them and then see if my thumbnail is the first one that my eyes go to. And then I would just do that over and over again until my thumbnail was the first one that eyes go to. And I don't know, just playing around with like what, what I was really excited when they started adding click through rates as an option in the algorithm, in the analytics, cause that wasn't there for a while. But yeah, just like playing around with like what I can see causes videos to do well. Yep. That, that was me. Yep. I, 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 I love this and you know, it, it's, it's coming at it from a very entrepreneurial mindset because it really is your business. And, you know, I know that this started as a hobby, but it's really become not only, I think, probably like your baby in terms of passion, but it's also your career. Uh, you know, I, I agree with the thumbnails and, you know, some of your best performing videos are are the videos where you, you do sort of sketches or or spoofs on Disney princesses or mm -hmm. superheroes, expectations versus reality. In a lot of ways, I feel that you pioneered the lifestyle genre. You know, it was a lot of sort of how to's and getting ready with me's. And then you started doing sketches. What are some of your favorite formats and favorite videos that you've posted throughout the years? Um my favorite videos that I post, I mean, I obviously love the Disney Princess series. I always have people asking, like, when are you going to bring the Disney Princess series back? I'm like, girl, I put the Disney Princesses in every possible scenario they could be in. That series is done. Like, they already went to school, had party. Like, there's nothing left. But um, I really did like the Disney Princess videos. The Disney Princess pool party was my very first, like, high budget video. And for me, high budget back in the day, I think I spent, like, $7,000 on that video. And I was like freaking out i was like this is this video is gonna be so good blah blah blah. like i rented uh uh like a someone's house pool 
I, they made me pay for the whole house, but I only use the pool. Um, but I really like the, I really like sketches. I really like acting and writing scripts and stuff like that and directing people. So those videos were fun. More recently, those videos are not the types of videos that were being pushed. So I kind of adjusted to doing like style swaps, like outfit swaps and like random, like, you know, makeup videos, things that are like more simple. Um, but I would say my most fun experiences when they, when, when there was scripted content. Um, I also like doing PSAs. So I did like um, a confidence PSA and I did like an anti-suicide PSA, just like things that are like deeper messages that I could be like really cinematic and like deep with. Those ones were fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's never, there's no videos that I'm like, oh no, I, I don't like doing these. Like I'm only doing videos that I do genuinely enjoy. Um, but yeah, I like the sketches the most. They just don't like really get pushed right now on YouTube. Right. Well, and it seems like it's a bit of an ebb and flow. You got to make sure that you're being true to yourself and posting content that you feel passionate about. But, you know, for what you mentioned earlier, you got to be aware of that algorithm and the trends that that are going. So, you know, with that being said, you have a really substantial presence on several platforms. Obviously, YouTube is you know, where you started, where you, you gained notoriety, but you also now have a really big presence on Instagram, as you know, we talked about a little bit. I know you have a big presence on Twitter and on TikTok as well. How, how have you worked with, you know, promoting across platform and, and how does your content differ from platform to platform? So I feel like the biggest thing that was the hardest thing for me to learn, and I, I accepted it at this point, is that um, each platform has a different format that does well. So it's like on TikTok, I can't post a super, super high quality video because that's more of like a casual platform where people are casually posting. So that platform, I still, the the thing that's linking all the platforms is me. So it's like me and my personality. So I don't need to like have a consistent style of like content for each platform. I can kind of push it for each individual platform so like Instagram I would say is more like put together like that's like the I don't want to say fake version of my life but that's like just the the highlight reel of my life and then like TikTok is like if I ever have a thought like I'll, I'll say the thought and then it'll do well like if TikTok I feel like is the one where it's just like not the least effort but like the the most raw and then for me, Snapchat is like my vlogging thing because I I don't really like doing vlogs on YouTube. So it's really just based on each platform. I'm like, what what is the style of content that that's on each platform? But yeah. yeah, no, that makes total sense. I mean, you're pumping out so much all the time. I, I I'm literally in awe of you. And you've you know you've created a product line. You're obviously doing music. And on the side, you're a true multi hyphenate. How do you stay motivated and creative and how do you continue to pump such genuine creativity into your work um you know even when it might seem difficult or when you you know feel a little stuck um i would say i make sure if there's like a platform that i feel burned out from that i do take a break you just have to be careful with how long a break is because each platform has it like TikTok. i would say if I take a break for like three days, it'll take a week for my views to go back to normal. Snapchat, I could take a break for however long I want, I feel like, and then just come back. Um, although I do feel like people depend on me on Snapchat as opposed to my day-to-day -day life. Um, YouTube, I think it's not necessarily about breaks. It's just about making sure that you have a video idea that is exciting because it's not... It's, I mean, it is having an expectation from your followers of posting on a certain day, but it's also like, will it go into the algorithm and get pushed to your subscribers? Because it's not necessarily the subscription box that's getting you views on YouTube. So um, I would say I make sure to take breaks on the platforms that I feel like I need it. Um, staying motivated. Um, I just have really bad ADD. So I get really passionate about different parts of my career very often. So it's like, I'll have one month where I'm like super passionate about my makeup brand. I'm like, I need to, I need to do this makeup brand and then I'll get like the most sales that I've gotten. And then I am less passionate about the makeup brand. Then I'm like, Oh, TikTok is where my passions are at. And then I'm like, right now I'm in like a music kick where I've like now doing like 12 songs in the past, like three weeks where I'm like, yeah, I have to get these songs done. So for me, um, I would say it's difficult to 
stay motivated on each thing at one time but I'll still like go through the motions of it. But I, I am curious as to if my followers can see which platforms or which things I'm like the most passionate about at that time. But yeah, I, again, taking breaks and then just following my passions and not forcing one that I'm not in the mood to do. Um, because again, it's not like when I'm not passionate about TikTok, like again, they don't really do as well. So I have to just make sure not to force it, if that makes yep. sense. Yeah. It absolutely does. And something that I was talking about in an earlier panel that I was a part of was, you know, how instrumental mental health is um, in terms of just having success in this realm, because your whole life is public. And so really taking care of yourself is so important. I couldn't help but notice, yes, the behind the scenes music content out of the studio on your Instagram story this week. Tell us a little bit about that. What's going on with you musically? um it took a second to find so i was i've been making music for the past like five years but i haven't been releasing it all because i've been trying to find like my style of music and i feel like now I, I know my style of music but it also took a while to find like the right team when it comes to music so i joined a few different teams and then some of them didn't work some of them did work and now i have like a team that i'm like okay i feel confident going forward with with music with that but yeah i feel like I, I don't know. I, now my music is kind of just like, I find a random like play on words and then just run with it. Like one of the songs that I'm doing right now is like, um, so I saw a, a TikTok that was like, somebody made a TikTok saying something like, oh, blah, 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 like happy even after. And I was like, wow, happy even after. That would be a really good song idea. And then I read it again and I was like, oh, that says happy ever after. I misread that TikTok. Then I was like, but happy even after would be really cool. So I wrote like a, like a, not a love song, but like a breakup song. It's like, like I wanted happy ever after, but I'm happy even after you type of thing. So um. I feel like I come up with song ideas the same way I would come up with YouTube videos. So I feel like it's not that different. It's like just finding just like something funny to make yeah. it not funny and serious. Well, you're deriving inspiration from things that are coming up in real life, which is so neat. So musically, who do you derive inspiration from? Who, who, who do you find aspirational? I mean, I find all the musicians that have like, made it aspirational i don't necessarily take inspiration from their music itself but i would say like every single time i see a video of someone at a concert i'm like oh, i want to do that that sounds fun so it's like really anybody that's doing anything i'm like that looks awesome that's dope i love that they're doing that um so it's not like a specific person but like literally every single musician ever that I see doing anything I'm like that's awesome I love that they're doing that um so it's not a specific you're person a of others, which I love you always have been um and you're you're not only uh you know a, a cheerleader for yourself but everyone else which I think is really neat and what makes you so special so kudos to you, you. let's talk to trends on trends on the internet trends, trends. Tea. Got it. Oh, I love friends. Um, I let's let's highlight three trends that you've loved. Let's say over since quarantine, and three trends you wish didn't happen. When you say trends, are you speaking like algorithmically trends on like keywords that do well on YouTube, or like TikTok trends in terms of like a sound that if you do something with? Are you talking like algorithm trends or like life trend, like beauty trends? Excellent or? question. Excellent question. Right. Let, I'm different. talking more thematic trends, not algorithm trends. More like, thematic right, like, trends. like, 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 um, you know, sounds on TikTok or types of format. Okay. Um, so, for example, one trend that I have seen going crazy right now is the monotone where it's like, watches euphoria once. And now, oh. so that's a trend that I've seen right okay. now, which my jury's still out if I like it, to be frank. <laughs> I feel like there's like a new trend every single day, though. So it's hard to see which ones are like good or which ones are bad. Um, totally. I would and say. Very... No, what were you saying? Oh, it's very subjective. It's just it's it's different to everybody. Hmm, trends. Um, there. I mean, I feel like there's a trend there's like 
like good and bad, but I feel like there's a trend of like on TikTok specifically where people will like overshare or trauma dump on random videos. Like I love that there's a space for people to like normalize certain things that they experienced, but I do also feel like I don't like the trauma dumping on like a random video that has nothing to do with it. Um, yeah, that that's. I feel like is that is that a trend or are we talking like specifically like a a sound that's a trend no that's a trend that's a trend I don't like it but I do like it but I don't like it I think there's a line and I think a lot of the time was on the internet people will like go very over the line yep I feel that and what's one that you really do like what I really do like I like the singing trends that are like trying to do different things that are musically like the trends where you like sing a song with one breath or like random things like that. Those are fun. I like the, uh, there's, there's so many. Tra- oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. Because you asked it, I suddenly forget every single trend that has ever existed. That happens to me too. And I did put you on the spot and I know yeah. by the way that you've created many a trend. Um, so, you know, I, I think that you're in a little bit of a unique position well, let's pivot a little bit. And, you know, for, for some of the aspiring creators out there or creators that are up and coming, you know, what are some some tips that you can provide? What are some things that you wish you knew when you were getting started? Hmm. Okay. Things I wish I knew when I was getting started. I would say, for one, do not care if people find your platform. They're going to find it and it's gonna be fine. Like for me, everyone made fun of me for making videos and now they're not making fun of me anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, The other thing is for one, if you have a concept that you wanna try, just try it. Like don't be scared to try it because I remember, cause people are gonna, people are gonna judge whatever you're doing. It's the internet, so it doesn't matter either way. Um, But you have to make sure you're still doing the things that you want to do like when I was the Disney princess video like when I did the first Disney princess pool party the first like day all the comments were like what is this why are you doing this WTF like what even is this video what does this even mean and now it has like 400 million views or something like that so it's like you know don't don't pay attention to what other people think um do research on thumbnails go do research on keywords, go to a bunch of different YouTube channels, find their outlier videos, the ones that did well, like go do research. It's fun. It's not, it's not boring. It's fun if you're like going to it from a creative perspective, but yeah, do idea, do any idea that you have and then just do a little more keyboard research to figure out keyword research to figure out like what to do with it. Yep. No, that makes a lot of sense. Go at it from the research side. I mean, and so last question, and we're going to take some questions from the chat, which is going to be fun, fun, fun. Um, But, uh, you know, what's your favorite part about being a quote unquote creator, but really getting the opportunity, you know, to make content, to do music, to create a product line? What's your favorite part of all of this? Um, I would say I definitely am happy about being able to for one, be the only person that's like, be the only determining factor as to if something's happening. I found with doing other things besides the content creation, I am not patient enough. Like I'm developing a few products right now and I'm like waiting for them. And it's, I'm like waiting like a month to like get for them to get back to me. So I feel like I definitely like being the determining factor of if it's being done. And I also like, um, obviously interacting with like the people that watch me and I also like that if I'm doing something kind or if I'm doing anything in general it's inspiring other people to kind of do that as well so I can really use my platform to like like the other week I my I have an avocado tree and like it just has far too many avocados I couldn't eat all the avocados I've given it to neighbors I've given it to friends I have far too many avocados so what <laughs> I did was I was like you know someone suggested like you should donate it to a homeless shelter and I was like that sounds like a good idea so I picked like 150 avocados and then I took it to the homeless shelter and I posted it on my story and then that day like a hundred people were like I'm donating stuff to my homeless shelter today I donated this to my homeless shelter I'm like oh my gosh like that's crazy that me doing something so not for one, like not that impressive is like now helping 
other people do it or like when I did when I fostered a dog and then a bunch of other people were fostering dogs too and like adopting dogs I was like that's crazy that I did something that in my head is like just so minuscule but now it's not minuscule anymore because a lot of people are now doing it if that makes sense absolutely you're creating social good and you know influencing the community I think that that's so awesome and um you know it, it's a great way to use the platform that's really neat I love that. And I also love dogs and avocados. So I'm aligned with everything that you're saying. All with that, things. all the things. So chat, which I see popping off here the whole time, you are all awesome. Let's answer a couple of questions from you. What questions do you have for Rachel? I'll, I'll, I'll sort of go through and answer as it comes up. Who doesn't yeah, love dogs? Do it. Snow I dogs vlogs. That is great. Some people. I have a friend that's scared of my dog and he's like this big. <laughs> Rachel, what is your favorite video? Um, I have this one video called I am what I think it's called like I am ugly or something like that. It's not at all like that. It's not actually about being ugly, but it's like it's like it's good. I, if I if you're gonna watch one video for me, I think that I am ugly video is a good one. How did you get over bullying? Um, for one, I left high school and those don't exist after high school. Um, but additionally, on top of that, you have to remember when someone's bullying you, like it has nothing to do with you. They're using you as a mirror to reflect themselves. So like when I was, I wanted to be an actress in like ninth grade or 10th grade, I wanted to be an actress. And then I wanted to be an actress on Disney Channel. And I looked at everybody's nose on Disney Channel. And they had these like teeny little slopey noses. And I do not have a teeny little slopey nose. I broke my nose nine times. Like that was just not the case so i for like two weeks became like really insecure about my nose and whenever i saw somebody in my head i would insult their nose or like insult something on their face because they had a prettier nose than me or like if somebody you know just like i would intentionally not out loud just in my head and then after two weeks i realized i was doing this so i switched it to complimenting people's noses instead but like really what i'm saying is like no one's going to insult you on something if they're doing better like yep. if they're if they're confident enough they're not going to be focusing on your flaws the reason they're focusing on your flaws is because they're they're trying to get away from their own flaws and it has nothing to do with you somebody said well it's a very famous saying but i heard an influencer say it the other day that comparison is the thief of joy and i think that that's really true i i had never thought about it that way we yeah. have another question here that says how long did it take you to monetize on youtube I think it was like within posting of two videos, they asked me to monetize. They're like, do you want to monetize? Granted, how long did it take for me to make actual money? Probably like four or five years, but I do think it's different nowadays. I think they're, I think they're maybe quicker to monetize nowadays, no? Or is it slower? I just know back then you had to like have a certain amount of something to monetize and like the monetization was so little, it'd be like, like every thousand views you get like two pennies like it wasn't anything um i think after like a year i got like twenty dollars i think now it's a little bit different yep all right we have a few more coming in here how do you manage to keep up with all your content platform creation across platforms from fitness freak with a ph i like that it is difficult um what i had to do is like make a an alarm on my phone that reminds me like at seven at like 6 p.m it's like post a tiktok and i'm like oh right yes i need to figure out a tiktok and post a tiktok snapchat i just post um instagram stresses me out so i mostly just post on instagram stories although instagram reels i can just take my snapchat my tiktoks and post them on instagram reels but i mean i think it's just getting into a habit of it and if you're trying to learn to post on all the platforms i would say spend one week just posting on one platform then the following week, add an additional platform and just be consistent. And then like over the course of like six weeks, you can add all the platforms you want to be consistent on, but it's really just like forcing it to be a habit. Um, yep. Staying up with it. All right. Last question, just because I thought this one was funny uh, from the from L.A. Math Tutor. Did you ever like math in school? Hello. I'm good. I love that. <laughs> So did you ever like math in school from LA Math Tutor? No. <laughs> I, mean, actually, I enjoyed algebra. Algebra was really fun. Um, 
like once they added the letters, loved that, loved figuring out X and Y, loved the Pythagorean theme, great, great times. Like when you understand math, it is fun. But I think I had like one bad math teacher and then was a little bit behind after that because like they just didn't explain anything. Um, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Math was difficult like for me math, too. You get it. If like math is fun if you understand it. Yep. Yep. I totally get that. What was your favorite school subject out of curiosity? Um, I did not like any school subjects. I was not, <laughs> I'm not going to say I was bad at school. Like I was good at school. Um, I got straight A's, but like, I did not enjoy the process of it because I just wanted to do what sounded exciting to me. And yep. a lot of the things, I mean, I guess I knew my passion was YouTube and most things that they were teaching me in school was not helpful for YouTube. So it was really just like learning how to memorize things for tests. But I feel like that was helpful with like acting and like script writing and script memorizing and stuff. Um, but yeah, I did not, I did not like any subjects in school. I think I just had mean teachers. I think I was bullied more by the teachers than I was by the students though. Oh goodness. Well, I'm glad that you found it, such an awesome solace in content, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that, that was sort of what you leaned into. Well, Rachel, I mean, we, we are so grateful that you were able to come and hang out with us today and participate in International Creator Day. You are certainly the epitome of a creator. Um, and, and we just adore your content. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, I'm going to welcome the lovely and talented, uh, Renee back to the screen and, uh, th that's it for me too. So thank you. Thanks, Megan. Bye. All right. So we're going to do more giveaways because I love giveaways and I love giving stuff to the creator community. So let's, uh, let's jump into some giveaways for the audience here. Um, Carlos, can you put on the screen kind of what our what our next giveaway is? All right, giveaway time. What is uh, what's the first one up? All right, two buddy legend level license. Um, make sure that you put legend the word legend in the chat. Just copy and paste legend legend legend, and then I am gonna pick one of uh, one of the live chat users to win a legend le a legend level license. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Alter Monster Gaming. I think um, you you take the prize for that one. That was an amazing message. Lots of emojis, lots of, lots of uh, legends in there. So you're the winner for this one. Congratulations. Um, that one was pretty quick. There was like so many legend level license uh, legends in the, in the live chat there. So make sure that you find the link in the pinned comment, fill out that form, and we will get the information over to you for the legend level license. So make sure you fill out that form. All right, let's go to the next giveaway here. Channel reviews. So channel reviews is really a great tool for um, just figuring out what's going on with your channel, good or bad, all of the things that are happening. And really the great um, thing about that is you can figure out what's working so you can do more of it and what isn't working so that you can do less of that and figure out what actually needs to change. And this is not just for people who are getting started on YouTube. Um, there's always room for improvement. It doesn't matter how big your channel is. So you really want to make sure that you're looking for ways to get better with every single video and being able to analyze your channel on a regular basis is really going to help that. So a lot of value in channel reviews. So enter the word review in the, the live chat, copy and paste, copy and paste, and I'm gonna pick a random winner in just a moment. So keep putting in, keep putting in review, keep putting in review. All right, so Disney quizzes. Disney quizzes, you're our winner for channel reviews. So make sure you find that pinned comment, put in, fill out that form so that we have your information and then we can get the channel reviews um, over to you so that you can feel, figure out what's going on with your content and so that you can grow even faster. So congratulations to you. All right, let's go to the uh, the next giveaway we have here. 
Social Blue Book. So Social Blue Book, a uh, great tool for figuring out how to get brand uh, deals and kind of figuring out what your channel really is worth and how much you can actually um, charge for some of those brand deals. So put the word Blue Book. Clearly, there's some people who've gone through this already, but put that word Blue Book in the chat. Copy, paste, copy, paste, and I am going to pick a winner at random. All right, let me see a few more of those. All right. I'm seeing a lot of the same people. All right, copy, paste, copy, paste. All right, explore with a capital X. You are a winner for Social Blue Book. Make sure you find that pinned comment, fill out that form, and then we can uh, get the Social Blue Book uh, prize over to you. Awesome. So congratulations to you. What else do we have? What else do we have to give away? I want to give away all the things. Awesome. So we just got approval to uh, give away some Creator Day bundles. So Creator Day, the Creator Day bundle is something it's available for purchase right now. It is a discount. We worked with a bunch of partners to get together to create this awesome, amazing Creator Day bundle. And we're going to give one away to a special winner right now. So the Creator Day bundle includes 20% off. Well, in this case, it would be free. But the Creator Day Bundle in general includes 20% off any paid license level for TubeBuddy. And this also applies to upgrades. So if you already have a TubeBuddy license, you want to take advantage of this, upgrade that license, uh, you can do that through the Creator Day Bundle. So 20% off your TubeBuddy license, 60 days free of uh, Social Blue Book. So you get two months free of Social Blue Book and also two months free of Soundstripe. Uh, Soundstripe is a great service for finding audio for your videos. It's a service that I use. I use a couple of different services, um, but I find their tools super easy to use and really great for creators as you're getting started um, and just uh, for experienced creators to have that extra polish to your videos. Um, so for this one, uh, this is a new one. So we didn't have a word yet. We're just gonna put in bundle, just put in bundle over and over, uh, copy and paste, copy and paste, put that word bundle in there. All right, keep it going. I'd love to see a few more. Admin, all right, admin, that was an interesting one. Okay, you didn't you didn't put the word bundle, so I can't give it to you, but uh, let's get let's get some of those words in there. A um, few more, all right. So here's one, VR 180 facts, VR 180 facts. You are a winner for the Creator Day bundle. So congratulations to you. Make sure you find that pinned comment fill out that form, and we're going to get this special package over to you. Again, it includes 20% off any TubeBuddy Legend license. For you, it's free, and that also includes two months free of Social Blue Book and two months free of Soundstripe. So congratulations to you. All right. Okay, and then um, let's give away a few more things. So next up is our session is going to be all around merch, but let's give away some merch before we get into that one. Um, I actually did a little bit of a wardrobe change before uh, joining again. It's a little cold in here, so I uh, I uh, put on a put on a sweatshirt. Not sure if you guys can actually see it here, so I'm actually uh, wearing the Creator Day the Creator Day merch right here. So I want to give away uh, some T-shirts. Um, so let's put in the chat here. Um, let's put in Spreadshop. I think for, yeah, spread shop, just spread shop, spread shop, spread shop, copy, paste, copy, paste. I'll accept, I'll accept shop as well because that was our word before. So shop or spread shop, I'll accept either of them. So copy, paste, copy, paste. All right, we're going to go with Fit Dad Chris. Fit Dad Chris, you're going to win uh, a Creator Day shirt. So make sure you find that pinned comment Fill out that form, very important, so that we can get that um, merch over to you. All right, let's um, let's see. What else do we have to give away? Do we have more stuff? Do we have more stuff on the horizon here? Um, let's give away some mugs too. Can we put can we put that slide back up for a moment? I want to give away some more things. There we go. So we're gonna give away a mug as well. So um, same thing. Just add shop to uh, the live chat. Copy paste. Copy paste. I'm gonna give away a mug. So keep adding. I'd love to see more of the chats coming in here. This Creator Day mug, it's one of my favorites. 
All right, so we're going to give it to Fitness Freak with a PH. Fitness Freak, it is uh, your win in a mug from Creator Day. Congratulations to you. Make sure you find that pinned comment. Add your information to that form so that we can get your Creator Day mug over to you. So congratulations to you. Um, and I think that wraps up our uh, giveaway section here. Our next session is going to be um, all around merch. So we're going to have a few folks joining us talking about merch. We will have someone um, from Spreadshop actually joining us um, named DJ Kaufman. Uh, he's been a great partner to me throughout, uh, you know, throughout Creator Day and figuring out our merch strategy. So it's been really wonderful working with DJ, working with the Spreadshop team. Um, so we're going to have him on. We're going to talk about what it takes to actually create good merch um, and then also have a successful merch launch. Um, so DJ is going to join us. We're also going to have uh, Roberto Blake join us. He was here earlier. Loved him so much. We wanted him to come back. Um, and then also Daniel Patal is going to join us and Jeremy Vest. Jeremy Vest was also here earlier today. So we're welcoming him back and they've all been part of merch um, in some capacity. Let's see, are we ready to, to bring them out? I know DJ is here. DJ, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, how are you? Excellent, I'm so glad to be here with you guys. I feel a little bit like a prima donna because I've been changing into Creator Day merch all day long. So I've been uh, checking out some of the different the different t-shirts, sweatshirts, I've had the mug. So I'm all, all loaded up on merch, which is great. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and big thank you again. Honestly, I think all of the merch has turned out really well. And so super excited that we were able to put this partnership together. And a big thank you to Daniel Patal for actually introducing us. Um, I know that you've worked with uh, Daniel on merch before, as well as um, Roberto uh, on, on merch also. So it's great to see all of you guys here. It's like one big family reunion. It is. It, is. it truly is. <laughs> And then, Jeremy, I don't know if you've actually worked with Spreadshop before, but I know that you've been involved uh, with merch as well. And I do have some merch from uh, Braille, the previous company that you that you worked with. Yeah, I've actually uh, my new brand that I'm launching. I've, I've actually already got uh, Spreadshop integrated into Shopify. Oh, Perfect. Cool. You have all 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 good. Uh, all Spreadshop fans here. OK. So um, let's dive into just merch in general. So I know that there's a lot of creators who are looking to do merch. Some of them uh, are very successful with their merch launches and some of them not so successful. Um, so would love to, you know, get some learning lessons from, from everybody here in terms of, you know, how to, how to do this right and how our audience can, can incorporate merch as part of their content strategy. Maybe let's um, start with uh, Jeremy, since uh, you know uh, he is somebody who's a rare uh, appearance on the TubeBuddy channel. Hey, I think I appreciate that, Roberto. Um, so, I mean, definitely, I would say one of the biggest mistakes I see that most creators make is they just create stuff they want, and if you do that, then obviously, probably not a lot of people are going to purchase it, right? So always get feedback use that community tab make sure that you're getting as much feedback as you can and if you really care about your community if you really are doing this for them and not yourself you're going to make stuff people want to purchase you're going to make stuff that they want not what you want um this shirt i'm wearing right now uh is the simplest shirt we ever made for braille and you know we sold a lot um, of a whole lot of these shirts and we do every day there's like a cool circle on the back um and it is the number one selling shirt for braille skateboarding even though we never thought it would be we thought it would have to be a lot more complicated than that and you know when you don't listen to your customers you're definitely going to fail and i know earlier we were talking roberto and we mentioned that you don't want to spend too much of your thoughts and mentality on trying to get revenue from AdSense. I always have my customers diversify to the point of AdSense is never more than 15% of the entire business strategy. Because if AdSense goes away, 
85% of your revenue is still there and you can still make a living. So diversify as much as you can. You know, if you have 20 different ways to make money and all those things make decent money, then, you know, going out of business is a lot harder if you just diversify and have something for everyone. That's all I got. <laughs> That was good. I mean, I, I, I think there's a lot of key lessons there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Roberto. Yeah, good luck. This is filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> yeah, I, I could probably throw in there. I think that, Jeremy, you nailed it, like, right off the bat. Like, we see I'll, – I'll just talk about two of the big mistakes I see right now with some of these, like, newer creators that have, you know, 7 million followers on TikTok, and they launch their brand – and they put up like one design and it's just like their logo or something that they want for themselves. And they're shocked because like we had a guy that couldn't sell seven shirts and he's got a really engaged audience, but it's just that his design was terrible. And on the flip side, we had another guy that's a, a pretty popular YouTuber with like 2 million subs and he, um, he launched all of his designs at once. So he took like two months, like fine tuning all these awesome designs and he like launched 20 designs all at once so he got he had a really great november and december but then it just tanked so his january and february numbers were just like nilch you know so uh, those are the two big mistakes i see is that they're not really connecting with the fans or they're doing it all at once and they're not thinking about merch drops and some like you know key strategies there so yeah. What you said is so right. I mean, one of my um, students that I directly one-on-one -on -one coached with, we came up with a entire um, schema and a sub brand for uh, merchandise. And we really made it part of his community. He's a YouTube gamer and we focused on the culture of his community in the gaming space. We made something that could be its own sub brand just for them and allow for him for merchandise and product launches and drops to really focus on building community because we also uh, transitioned to naming his community around this sub brand. And so um, he's big in the gaming space, particularly in the Pokemon uh, community. And so we focused in on the fact that Pokemon uh, players, Pokemon fans, people that grew up with it like I did, I grew up with it back in 1996, are collectors by nature. And so we came up with a strategy for doing merch drops that were part of basically the kind of same premise of collect them all or catch them all. If you're a Pokemon fan, catch them all. So we kind of, um, we did a riff off of that in a way and he would drop these collections. And the thing is there were enough like of these pockets and we came up with this idea around um, a business concept called LTV, lifetime value. And ultimately the, the end result of, um, what he ended up doing over the course of a year was about $500,000 in sales across about roughly 2,000 customers with an average customer wanting to invest around $250 across all the items that they could buy because they were collecting, so to speak. And they were collecting and being part of something uh, bigger. And uh, best month was, uh, I believe, like November. It was an over $100,000 uh, month in November. And uh, we're going to be doing a podcast episode about that um, on my podcast channel. But it's a really great case study in the sense of if you know the culture and the community around uh, the content that you've built, the audience that you've built, you understand what they care about, why, and their mentality, and why they buy things. And in the case of this in gaming and Pokemon specifically, that, oh, these are collectors. And that if you make um, even like a subcategory, that's around fire types, that they'll get everything associated with fire types if that's their jam. Or if you get everything associated with um, the starters of the generation that they grew up with in Pokemon, then they'll collect everything for it and that they'll buy um, into this over and over. Because again, they're gonna buy something, you know, understand that your audience, you know, don't be afraid to offer them something. A lot of people are afraid to sell. It's one of their biggest problems. But if you're selling something good and something that acknowledges your community and lets them feel like they're a part of something and something they want to be a part of something that represents them then they don't have a problem because they're going to spend that money somewhere and you just have to put it in a position where they might as well spend it with you because they're going to be happy with what they get for spending it with you that's all it really comes down to it doesn't have to be more complicated than that I want to take a moment to, to pause on that so I think that's actually really important and there are creators that feel 
awkward selling something like they do feel like it's salesy and and, and they don't want to pitch something or sell something in their content i personally have started um buying a lot of creator merch so i love supporting different creators uh, especially if they're designs that i actually like there's a few creators um that i love that i i you know search for their merch and it either doesn't exist or it was a drop that's no longer available and i just can't find it like, I think that a lot of creators, they do have fans that they, they want to buy something from you. So it's not really just about being salesy. It's about listening to your community, giving them what they want and creating something that is appealing to them. So, you know, I think that there are a lot of people who make the mistake of, you know, DJ, you said this earlier, just putting your logo, you know, the two buddy team does that uh, as well. And, it, you know, it's fine to put your, your logo on it, but have something else that kind of resonates with your audience. But very important that it doesn't have to be salesy. You're giving something that you want to the community. Um, I'd love to take a moment just to talk about actual designs. So DJ, you mentioned, you know, it is one of the common mistakes of just putting your channel name or logo or something like that on your merch. Um, if you're not a designer, um, so I'm not talking to you, Roberto, if, you know, clearly you're a designer, but if you're not a designer, um, where are some resources that you can kind of pull from to get cool designs that your community may actually want for, um, for your merch? And I'm just going to put this out there in the open so anyone who has suggestions can jump in for this one. I would say your community, you know, and if, especially if you have over like, you know, five, 10,000 subscribers, you, you could imagine that there's definitely some designers in that group. They also understand you. And, you know, uh, as Brian G. Johnson says, your rituals. So one of the things, if you look behind me here, there's a skateboard that says first try. And it's like a basically someone with a broken leg and arm. Um, in skateboarding, for some reason, way back a long time ago, we would try to like do a trick 500 times in a row. And the 501st, everyone would just scream first try. Like we landed on the first try, even though we didn't. And basically these rituals are more important that we're finding with a lot of my customers um, than even cool designs. So what happens is you have something you keep on saying, or you have a sound, or there's some meme that is reoccurring in a lot of your videos. And then people are your tribe. They become part of that saying, that inside joke. And those are the big winners. Those inside jokes, those rituals, those things like first try. You can't even go to a skate park in America without hearing stuff that Braille said, that Braille made up, like first try or, you know, what have you, or bodied. And it's pretty interesting that a little group of dorks created pop culture. Like they actually created a nomenclature that happens in a skate park. So don't underestimate how and why these merch items happen. You know, a lot of people want to be part of Mr. Beast and he has a, he's got a great design team and he does a great job. But imagine if he had more inside jokes. Imagine if he was able to connect with people on a deeper level. I think he's just hitting the 10% the of what he could do. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can say real quick, um, cartoonist kayfabe is a channel that I watch. I'm a cartoonist at night and uh, they're, they have a spread shop and they're, um, you know, they do the, the incredible Hulk. They work with Marvel and hip hop family tree, those guys. And I buy their merch because it says, you know, make more comics. Uh, and I love this. I use it as a pen holder, you know, um, I got a million coffee mugs, but I just, as a fan of doing that, I buy that with my own money. Cause I'm like, that's going to, that's going to energize me to do what I'm doing. So like, your audience might be different than that, but if you know your niche really well, uh, there's something that you're saying, even if it's like just encouraging words or just making them empowered and feel awesome to wear that brand that day. That's well, Colin, very, super powerful. Yeah. Con and Samir uh, got it right with um, the idea of just hit publish and then that branding out uh, their sub brand of the published press for their newsletter, but also making that uh, the theme of their merchandise, Nelk with their full send brand. Uh, there's so many great case studies in building 
brand and then product around that and community uh, that exists within the YouTube ecosystem, people who've done it successfully. In terms of some advice for people who aren't designers, uh, you know, you can actually find great illustrators and artists and people in Fiverr. Um, you, you know, you have to do a little legwork, you have to do a little hunting, you have to, you know, um, put in some work there to find what you're looking for. And you have to give good guidance and directions. You can't expect them to do all the heavy lifting, but you can find some really great people who might be able to bring an idea out of your head and execute it and make it something really appealing for your audience. And so it's, there's nothing wrong with investing a little bit in creating good much, especially since with uh, Spreadshop, you're not paying any upfront fees. So I've, I find that what works very well for a lot of people is when they really are thoughtful and they put time into thinking out a concept, an idea, and something that their audience is going to love. But then when they also are willing to invest what they've gotten from their community back into the community to be able to produce these results and everything. That's where a lot of growth comes from. That's a big part of the philosophy that Mr. Beast shares with YouTube. Again, no one has to go overboard and invest 90% of, or even 150% of whatever they made back into their projects. You don't have to take it that far, but um, there is something to be said for, hey, you know, pay for quality. And because that's what your audience is expecting to do. They're expecting to pay for quality. So you should also pay for quality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'd like to transition just a little bit and talk about not just the designs of uh, of merch. I mean, I think there's some really great tips there. Um, first off being, uh, you know, if you don't have a great design, do a saying. So do something that kind of resonates with, with your audience. And you don't have to worry that much about the design. And you can kind of add the design element uh, on top of that. But once you have something that you want to launch, what goes into a successful launch? You know, DJ, you mentioned that you know one of the mistakes is that people just kind of release everything right away and then sales drops. Like, what are some tips to a successful merch launch on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I think the the ones that we see that have the most long term success and kind of continue putting investing in their merch designs are the ones that do merch drops maybe once a month and they tease the designs out. They actually ask their community when they're working on like, Hey, what do you think of this? Like, if I put out this, would you buy that? There's, it's an ongoing conversation. So like, um, you know, I'm a big nerd when it comes to marketing stuff and I'm, I'm like, marketing is just conversations, right? So if you're not having that conversation with your community, then, you don't know, you're just guessing, you're just throwing these designs out there and it might not do well. But it's the good thing about print on demand is you could just test something and if it works, take it away. Or some people are afraid to take it down. So we tell people like, make this design limited, like say, hey, this is only available for this week and then we're taking it away and then bring it back. It's just like a Pokemon or something. This is the shiny version of this t-shirt now. You know, like we have, um, a guy named Clueless Bushcraft on TikTok that has been doing something similar like that. He like takes his designs down, puts up sketches, he tests, and it's it makes it fun for him too. It's not just like, a, well, this is just a revenue stream and I didn't sell any merch this month. He just kind of gamifies it a little bit for his audience. So, so yeah, merch drops regularly and trying to have conversations with your audience as much as possible, however you do it. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel, I know that you have multiple versions of your logo. So just to give a sneak peek uh, for later in our challenge. Um, so you do have a logo here and on your spread shop shop, you've got different versions of that logo. So excuse, excuse me, I need a drink. <laughs> They're not a shameless plug by any means. Um, so so in terms of your market. <laughs> Uh, you will be getting some, don't worry. So I was giving a, you know, a little bit of a premature sneak peek at what's coming next. But, <laughs> um, but Daniel, in terms of having different versions of your logo, did you release all the different versions at the same time or did those come over? No, time? no. And, they're, and they were a work in progress. And I'm going to tell you that I'm the, I'm the opposite of everything that's being talked about here um, on, on this panel and, and intentionally so. 
Um, you're going to talk to Jeremy, who's going to talk about working with Braille, who's an established brand, who people are buying the product, and he's putting um, he's putting merch behind a product that people are either aware of or, or they're trying to grow the awareness of. They're people who know Braille. This wasn't ground up necessarily. And that's not an insult, Jer- uh, Jeremy. That's just like we're talking about. They're talking about merch behind things that are somewhat established. Roberto did the same thing working with one of uh, his coaching clients, just trying to work around the Pokemon theme, things that are established. Where I live in the space is that a lot of creators are probably sitting out there going, yeah, that's great, but nobody knows who I am. I've got like a handful of subscribers and I'm trying to figure out how to drop merch. Do I have to make Pokemon shirt? Like what, what, what do I do? My take has always been different. I use merch in an extremely different way. I am a, um, a brand ambassador for Spreadshop. Um, but what um, what I've worked with DJ on, specifically, G- DJ and I work together, we talk all the time, because we like a different angle of not just trying to sell stuff. I'm not just trying to sell you my mug or my logo. What we try to do is use um, merch in a play to achieve a goal. Uh, let me give you a couple examples. Earlier on this year, our friend who was on the stream earlier, Owen uh, Hemsith, Owen Video, um, was diagnosed with stage four inoperable cancer, which put us in a position where we wanted to create a live stream fundraiser to see how much money we could help raise to get him through some of the things he was dealing with. So DJ and I and Nick Nimmin sat down and developed a merch line um, that was this one, Creators Conquering Cancer. Uh, Together we are strong. That was DJ actually actually built that that design. We gave him, Nick and I roughed it out, and DJ put it together. And we didn't charge a thing for those shirts. We didn't charge a penny for those shirts. But what we did was the, we gave them away with every donation um, towards the cause. So we integrated them with a larger fundraising project, and we in, and um, we were able to work in the cost based on um, spread shop stepping up to the plate. There was no profit in that. So we were using merch for a very different thing to incentivize people to donate, to donate towards the cause. Hey, if you donate um, towards the Owen Video fundraiser, then the, you know at the very minimum we were giving away other things, but you'll get a T-shirt, um, and 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 it, it it gave people a reason to want to start getting excited about the live stream that uh, that we were running on a bunch of channels that started on Daryl Eve's channel. Um, a different version of that is, I I spoke at Vid Summit this past year on 2021, and I sat with DJ and I said, listen. You know, this is, I'm like the first guy, first day at Vid Summit, and, and, and this is like, I'm kicking this off. I want to make sure we do something different. So I sat with DJ and I said, how do I do a presentation on a stage that really gets people excited? Because I was doing a, uh, a presentation about teaching creators how to make sure that the channels and the brand that they build is brand friendly so that sponsors might want to work with them down the line and they can generate revenue streams. So DJ and I once again sat down and we developed a merch line and we just gave it away right at the the, the presentation. We did the brand friendly. DJ uh, came up with that for me too and we integrated the DB logo in there. We did that with t-shirts. We have, we had cups that we gave away. We had backpacks. We did it very specifically. There were these over-the-shoulder backpacks that we gave away, these drawstring backpacks that um, we uh, that we knew that if it, we said grab them, you know, grab them, take take whatever you want. And for the rest of the conference, people were walking around with our merch on their back, Spreadshop brand friendly DB merch. And inside of those backpacks, we had sign up sheets where anybody who wanted to um, sign up with Spreadshop, get a Spreadshop account and potentially um, uh, uh, apply to be a Spreadshop ambassador or work with their affiliate program could do so with a card we had in there. So we weren't looking to make a penny on the merch. What we were looking to do was to move the goal forward that we had in mind for that moment. So a lot of times with me, it's not about, I I need you to buy my shirt, or I need you to grab my mug or my backpack or my cup. What it is, it's about trying to make sure that the goals we're trying to achieve on the tail end make sense by using merch to leverage awareness. And I can tell you right now, I get, I got, you know, I get $250 an hour minimum to sit with people for channel consultations. And I had people, um, you know, hitting me up on my website for, to this day, they still do. I saw you at Vid Summit. I loved your presentation. I'd like to sit with you and do a one-on-one channel consultation. It, it sank in. So a lot of these things we invest, sometimes it's not about just making the short-term money on the merch, and it's about getting your brand in their face and trying to move the uh, move forward towards the goal you're trying to achieve, uh, and just move the needle. Try to make sure that your the thing you're trying to accomplish can be um, more effectively done so with merch. The reason I have a cup with my logo on it, 
I do sell these, but every time I live stream, if I'm live streaming and, and Spreadshop happens to be sponsoring that live stream, I've got Spreadshop mugs that during the whole stream, I'll grab my mug and take a sip and you see the Spreadshop logo. If it's something that's my own live stream, I have cups that specifically, because I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed, the logo's on this side. So when I do grab it and I sip, you see my branding logo. So it's not always about trying to get you to buy my merch, it's about me making sure that I am making my brand uh, pervasive in the things that I do. Does that make sense? That absolutely makes sense. And what I love about that is because it, it is actually very similar to a video strategy. So what a lot of people do with their YouTube channel, you're not making money off of that necessarily. You could brand deals, sponsorships, um, you know, ad revenue, things like that. But uh, oftentimes people are trying to make money by um, uh, selling another product or service. So they're not or making service, money yeah. off that individual thing. And so, let me double down on that. Like DJ and I, we're like little kids sometimes. We text back and forth, especially around, and you're going to love this one, Renee, Peter McKinnon. Yeah. Peter McKinnon is the king of the merch drops. Um, this, is a, this is a Peter McKinnon whiskey glass. Renee, how much would you, how much would you pay for that glass? Oh. Anyone, uh, Jeremy? What do you think that's worth? I have no idea. I'm going to say twenty dollars. So I don't know. All right, so Peter bucks. McKinnon glass. All right. I can't see the design. It uh, just, the design, I'm like looking through it. There is a he. he it's it's hand thrown glass. Oh, okay. Stamped with the Pete's Pirate logo right down here in the bottom. Yeah, it's like see yeah, that's got to be between forty and sixty bucks. That's a hundred and thirty dollar glass. And he, I own one, and he sells out every time yeah. he drops. I would them. buy it. Yeah, I every would time, buy it. I because. Would. He does these extremely high quality, limited mm. run things. I've got his coins. I've mm. got his copper pens that are, you know, 80 bucks a pop. I love his, I've got, I've, that's one of his rings right there. I all love I've got his is his backpacks. Uh, all I've got know, is he his gave us all the backpacks. I think we all right have his backpack, the yeah. <laughs> really, really high, high end, not, listen, I need to sell one to everyone. I'm gonna make a very limited batch amount. It's gonna be super high quality. And that's how I'm going to do that very limited run. And D uh, DJ and I talk about this all the time. <laughs> FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, fear yeah. of missing out. If you can make something awesome and say, we're only making this many, and then you cut it short, people go, oh, you know, this is your chance. I, you know, the, you, you're able to push the limit of what you can, what you can charge for things. Um, you can push the quality level higher and you can get people really excited about an event it's not just hey this is here all day please buy it please buy it it's like no listen we put a ton of time and energy into this exactly like i did with my hot sauce which we do have 35 new bottles available by the way but we only put it out in extremely limited batches that we spend a ton of time getting getting the recipe getting the packaging the flavor everything right so that when it does go out it's it's a high quality product and i think that's some things uh, something that people don't always think about they're like just uh, what, what, can i put my you know my name on a shirt and get you to buy it i don't care if you buy my mug you know why i make these mugs so when i'm on a live stream and i'm drinking from it or when you buy my hot sauce and you see the db or if we're doing a promotion at vid summit and the brand friendly has a db logo i'm pushing my brand along the way so that people start recognizing just it's the exact same reason when you drive by a beat down convenience store in podunk whatever town and right at the top their sign says coca-cola who helped pay for the sign but it's a tiny little store why does coca-cola spend the time helping them put signs up when it's just a tiny little drive through spot that may, a lot of people won't see it's about exposure and brand awareness if you get your name out there and use uh, merch and marketing to make sure that your name is pervasive then the return on that investment a lot of times towards the goals you're trying to get can be um really lucrative and beyond just the uh, selling a shirt speaking of exposure i just i, I quickly just want to put this out there because yeah. daniel already knows this Peter McKinnon is my YouTube crush. Oh. I would love to get him on Creator Day next year. So if anyone can help me do that, reach out to me. I would love to have Peter on Creator Peter. Day 2023. We got to call Cody. Happen. We got to call right, Cody leave. Warner. Right, Cody Warner like her. hangs out. Actually, and, yeah, and, I, I almost had Cody on, on this stream. He's got some family stuff to do, so. Yeah, I was going to say I, two I, things, two things yeah. real quick. I remember a text recently with Daniel where I'm like, do I need this ax? From Peter and then he's like, You need an axe. And my wife was like, Do not buy an axe. You do not need an axe. <laughs> this is what's so funny between DJ and I, just because of the interest, because we love marketing and it's cool stuff. A DJ, now I know that you and you may have spent more than I have, but I've probably oh. dropped at least five hundred dollars on Peter McKinnon's Pete's Pirate Life um, uh. merch drops. 
Give me a ballpark without getting in trouble with your wife. How much have you dropped? Would you oh, say? I don't just, know, man. I'm just going to say that I'm in credit card debt. Thank you. <laughs> we, DJ, this is the kind DJ of thing we get excited DJ about. Plead it. The fifth. Yeah, yeah, I'm plead the fifth. Man. <laughs> this is the kind of excitement that you can generate when you yeah. really think about what you're putting yep. out there instead of just slapping your logo on something and going, I hope it sells, and really making an event about it and, and, and building something bigger than just the merch itself is, is a really important way to approach it. Yeah, no, at, Braille, at Braille, this is actually how we did everything we have we did boxes where you get like a skate deck and maybe a polo maybe a beanie some stickers and we everything we would come out with a new series for example we would do it in a box and the box would only have 100 to 200 boxes total and they were you know between 80 and 200 dollars per box now once the box is sold out that box will never be sold again ever and but you can still buy the shirts and the beanies and the skateboards so what do you think happens we uh will you know 200 boxes we might make 20 30 thousand dollars in one in eight hours from the fomo yeah. and promoting it and all these big channels and then the residue uh re re uh, residual so. thank residual. you mm -hmm. um that just that brand uh shirt or skateboard it just has that fire and that spice that keeps it going, keeps it alive, keep it selling for many, many, many months. You know, you can also do um, a digital merch drop. You can do a digital merch drop. If you have uh, digital products, you could do a limited run bundle where you do something unique. You might include a collection of some of your stuff that's always available, but at a massively discounted price, a massively discounted price, and as a bundle, um, a lot of people do this even with fundraisers around charity. You see this with uh, Steam and you see these things with like the Humble Bundle and things like that. You could do a digital product drop as a merch drop and you could do a limited run and maybe it's a limited run of 200. You'll get to find out very quickly who your thousand true fans will spend money with you are. You do it uh, and you do a bundle drop. And even if it was, let's say it was something like um, you do... Uh, 200 of these and let's say that it's a $250 drop and it's usually and it's a bunch of stuff that would normally probably cost $500, $600 uh, to buy outright and there's some stuff that they can't get outside of the drop. Well, at $250 and it's $200 um, of your truest fans that do it, um, then you're, that drop is a $50,000 drop right then and there. And the thing is the value makes sense if what you've done is take things that would be wildly expensive and give people who are ready to buy now an opportunity to get it at a severely discounted price, but also some exclusive benefit as well. So that's the kind of thing that ultimately um, can be massively lucrative. And that's another strategy that you could use if you're someone who's doing digital instead of physical product. And I'll, I'll give you one more quick YouTube case study as far as people who um, did it from the ground up. Jared Poland. When Jared Poland was first getting started, better known as Frono's Photo. Frono's Photo, massive photography YouTube channel has been around in the YouTube community for about, I want to say um, 12, 14 years, something like that now massive creator um going back to i think i want to say jared probably was doing stuff in i want to say 2008 so about 14 years now 14 years massive success on youtube but didn't start out that way what he did with his um you know shirts was at the time as a photographer at the photography community he made these i shoot raw shirts because raw versus jpeg was this big debate in the community so he leaned into the culture and the community with these i shoot raw t-shirts and he uh he did those and he was doing them um where he was buying them you know in bulk printing them shipping them out himself his dad had no idea no clue what was going on but uh you know eventually he was able to make massively more money on that than he was with YouTube and he kept doing different designs of it. And now it's uh, definitely a massive part of his community. I have a couple of them and he does them in these different designs. He's done different drops. He's done uh, coupons and discounts and sales and so on and so forth. And it was a massive success. And then when he moved into digital products with his uh, get out of auto guide for photographers, his uh, flash guide for photographers, he did those. Uh, again, this is before digital was really solid. He did them at where you have the option of digital or a physical DVD with a data disc and a DVD ROM. And it would be uh, basically a $99 uh, uh, training 
teaching you how to properly use your camera. And he did about roughly three or four of these guides. He did one for photographers and then one for uh, filming video. No, sorry, he did two or three for photographers and then one for filming video. And then I believe one for editing video. So he made a really good product ecosystem around that. Then he came out with the Fro Packs, which were these photography um, presets for Lightroom. So you had these um, photo editing presets for Lightroom. And so he built himself a very nice product ecosystem to where you could collect all of these I shoot raw different t-shirts, but also you could go ahead and buy these different guides in your camera journey. But then also, if you um, already know how to do this stuff properly, he already put together these uh, fro pack LUTs and uh, presets for Lightroom so that you could um, edit photos and he taught you how to shoot photos. Now he's gonna give you a tool that lets you do some really great edits. And so he created a very nice product ecosystem where, which, where you could as a customer spend hundreds of dollars in the fro brand and it's great so speaking of merch um we are gonna segue into our game for this uh for this for this uh segment here this is um daniel's uh hot sauce which i said this earlier in the stream but honestly it's i don't like hot sauce i'm just i'm not a hot sauce, fan. Hot sauce. i have a really hard time with spicy uh, with spicy things last year on our spicy challenge, I literally cried and it wasn't, it wasn't a good cry. It was like, <laughs> my face was so still because I was in so much pain that tears just dropped down. Um, so spiciness, is really hard for me, but I love this hot sauce. So I actually think it's really good. It's got great flavor. It is a little spicy, but you control how much spice is there, but it's so good. So I just wanted to put this up here. Um, we will put a link in the uh, the chat. So if you want to buy some hot sauce, I encourage you to go over and buy it. Speaking of limited editions, I think it's a very limited run. Um, Daniel, I don't know how many you've you've created this yeah, time extremely. around. Yeah, extremely. This one's only a, a thirty five bottle run, and then it doesn't come back for quite a while. This particular uh, batch. So if you want it, get it now. I will have a couple that I'll be giving away uh, later in um, at the end of this segment, but encourage you guys to go uh, check that out and get it if you're interested. So next up, we're going to do a little bit of a spicy challenge. I am only going to participate in the very beginning portion of it. What? Because we heard about the last the last time. What? This happened. I'm listen, on hey, listen, I'm getting on a plane at like two in the morning and <laughs> and I'm willing to get in there. And Lord knows if, if you guys get reports on the news that like some guy on a plane spent the entire flight inside of the bathroom, I'm specifically blaming TubeBuddy for this. First up, you like hot sauce. And secondly, <laughs> while you guys are playing the hot sauce challenge, I'm going to be doing tons of giveaways. And if okay. I was participating in the challenge, I don't think I would be able to speak enough to actually give away items. Listen, so. nothing wrong with a good cry. I do have some milk here just in case, um, <laughs> even, even for the beginning sessions here. So all of you should have your spicy items. Um, I will be sending each of you some of Daniel's hot sauce. Um, which Daniel has packaged uh, with great care. I will be sending this out to all of the participants. Um, but first up, we're gonna do some bean boozled. So we've got a couple different flavors of bean boozled here. Um, okay, I do then... not have those. You didn't get the bean boozled? Yeah, I think I got it. the I got the uh, packy. I got the uh, I got those. Oh. Yeah. In terms of uh, in terms of the chips, so um, Katie Kiss, our associate uh, director of community, I told her that I may do one chip. And sorry about the noise, but I want to show you what this looks like. I'll show you what what was sent to me. I said I would do one, and here's what I got. I got many, many, many bags. I don't know how many she thought I was going to eat. But me too. I got the same thing. But Katie's like, hey, listen. <laughs> If you're, you're going to go in the pool, it. we're going in the deep end. <laughs> Let's go big. Um, Roberto, if you don't have the bean boozled, we can move on to the next one. Yeah, I don't have those. I went and I checked uh, my uh, package depot, and uh, I do not have those for some reason. Okay, so the other thing that we have is um, Death Nut. So oh very scary-looking package. Oh, yes. Um, All I have... Chips. What? You know what he did? He saw the he saw the death knot. And he's like, no, I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't no, I'm see serious. That. I, when I checked like my package depot, it's like the only thing I like got was the chips. 
Oh man, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we uh, we tried to to get everything to everyone in time. Uh, we specifically, we're finding things on Amazon that can be sent right away. So, it's not y'all's fault. So if you uh, if you're open to it, you can do more than one chip. But I don't know <laughs> okay. if, that, if that's gonna okay. be if that's gonna be doable. I've been um, this wait a minute, DJ. Years. What did you get? Did you get all? Did you get got, the death? I got nuts? everything. I oh, got God. all. I got it's it's all me and you, brother. We're going down. We're yeah. going down misery lane together, yeah. here, pal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tana, what did you get? What's on what's on your list? What's on my I got all, I got the I got the death nuts, I got the uh the bean boozled, and I got the variety pack of <laughs> a multi pack of of uh of the pocky chips. What'd you get, Jeremy? What do you got over there? I got it all. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, listen. And with the with the chips, I didn't get the variety. I, all I got was well, ghost, I got ghost peppers and that's it. All I got well, was well, the variety pepper. was multiple bags of the exact same chip. <laughs> by uh, variety, I mean yeah, it's no just variety. All the same. <laughs> okay. By variety you variety mean the same. Okay. By the variety you mean the same. Got gotcha. you. All right. So, um I feel like it's a little bit cheating because Roberta you've only got the one chip. Um you know, I, I've actually never had any of these. So, uh, Daniel, you're kind of the spicy, spicy expert. Is there one that you think that we should start with, Roberta? Uh, yeah, with I chips. think I, I think the chi- I've had the chips before. They're they're uh, they're what I would call a medium. They've got some heat. They got some kick. They're not going to rip your face off. But I think that even people who <sighs> Who um who who aren't spicy fans could probably get one down, but they are for a chip. They're they're hot. <laughs> okay, and are they spicier than the Death Nut? Well, the Death Nut. Here's the scary part about the Death Nut. If you look in the back, <laughs> it's not one nut. It's a yeah. tiered level of nuts that go from, you know, maybe not rip your your intestines out, to a triple Carolina Reaper nut. That literally, um, you might should come with sure a waiver. Your, your your health insurance payment is is paid up. <laughs> All right, well let's let's start everyone off at something that is kind of similar to the chip. Okay. So with the death nut, do you think like number three? Would be oh my god, similar? no! I'm thinking like the one or two of the death nut. We can all have a chip together. We all have a chip, right? Everybody right. have a chip? Let's yeah. open up let's a chip. Let's chip. start. Let's start with the chip. This may be my. This may be the only thing I participated. I'm already ahead of y'all. I've been. I've been. I've been having them this morning. I'm, I'm waiting for that point where okay. I go. Hang on, I got a phone call. I gotta go. Right, I. I, uh, I am. Uh, I'm gonna open my milk first here. Wait, I got to show the other side of this. So this is the uh, Packy Haunted Ghost Pepper Chip. They're a fantastic chip, great flavor. Anyone who's familiar with a ghost pepper, at one time it was the hottest pepper in the world, uh, but it was replaced by a few higher ones, Scorpion Peppers, uh, Carolina Reapers, uh, Pepper X. We know they're, they're uh, yeah, look at that chip right there. On the back, if you look at the scale of heat, yeah, it's yeah. way up in there in the red. They can see it's a fairly hot chip. Great. This is going to be friendly competition, but I would love for the folks in the live chat to uh, cast their bets now of who they think is going to win the spicy challenge. Well, what's the actual? What, what, what's the? What? How are we playing the game? Who goes the farthest? Who bails have, out? It's it's basically just like fun competition. There's no real way to connect with like who who is the actual winner. Yeah. But I think the I think the audience can pick the winner. So yeah, we'll they can that. they can base it off of reactions. They can base it off of how far we go. R- Roberto's like enough talk. Let's start eating. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, he's he's already wow. in it. All right, let's start. Let's do it. I, I got my chip. God hates a coward. All right. Yeah. Is that a little heat? Yeah. A little kick at the yeah, end I'm there. I'm loving this already. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Renee's already like I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. Oh God! On. You look like you're in pain already. Yeah, I think I think I'm already good on this. <laughs> what? How many yeah, did you eat the whole chip? Oh, don't do water, Jeremy. Water makes it worse. Oh man. <sighs> Roberto's life. That was nothing. Ooh, I might sad chip. cry for you, Renee. <sighs> yeah, yeah. No, it's um, no, it's a little intense. I'll tell you what. I'll do. I'll do one of the. Being boozled when you guys while you guys do. What? I think that'll be worse. Didn't wait, you, you, have, worse? you have the but you have the death nuts. Oh, but the death nuts you said are are worse than the. Well, chips. that's the worst. That's the worst. There is a one. We start out at a one. All right, I'll I'll oh, do dear it. Dear God. A minute. A minute. A one. Listen, 
So yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, when you pull this package, it's such good packaging, man. Like the nuts literally escalate on a scale. Make sure you pull out the right ones. The color changes. They're they're stacked from top to bottom. So the one I can't even read this because of the lights. The one is considered they're mild. It's mild. Renee, how bad can it be? It says mild right on the packaging. So we're doing one. Right. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to show the package again. You're not. So we don't have any nut allergies what we're here. Working do we? with. Yeah. This is what's happening on the package. <laughs> By the way, this DJ, chip is you're a hottie. Into the death nut. You're already into the death nut, DJ. Yeah, I just yeah. took it. Yeah. Wow. It's a little Jeremy. sweet. That chip's the hottest thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> what? Oh, you're doomed. <laughs> you're doomed. Okay. Make sure we crunch really loud yeah, on the nuts. microphones because people like that at home. I can't that open ASMR. the nut. Maybe it's saving me for myself. Let's see. I All right, I got it. My take on this is the, the one mm -hmm. uh, is similar in heat to the chip. It might uh, last a little yeah. longer on your tongue, but it's not a lot hotter than the chip. It's a little sweet. At it first. Is, it's got a nice sweet top end to it, right? At first. This is doable. Yeah. Well, you know what's okay. funny? You know what's funny about um, the way that um, heat hits different people as it's uh, as it's applied to different foods. I say that about my hot sauce. Like I send my hot sauces out to different people, and some people go, "That's like a, you ate it," and went, "I think that's a medium." I had people who have eaten hot sauces their whole life go, "That's like a seven out of 10. So a lot of times it's just how mm -hmm. the specific pepper that they use hits you on your own tongue can be completely different. Well, the, the chip I definitely had a hard time with. I did not eat the whole thing. I just had a bite of it. That was pretty bad. The nuts, I think the first the first bite was okay, but it like then it hits you. Like right. it's it's, it's uh, it comes out a little bit slower. So yeah, nuts will do that. I'm yeah. already dying, guys. <laughs> I had one what, of the nuts. Did you do the Did you do the nut, the first one? Yeah, I did the one. Oh, how do you feel? I'm dying. Yeah, hot, right? It's, it's sweaty over here. Yeah, I'm avoiding <laughs> drinking yet. I'm treating this like a hot ones challenge. I'm doing my best Sean Evans where I'm like, I'm going to go as long as I can without having to drink any liquid with it. Not that the liquid really helps all that much. Yeah, I think the two together <clears throat> is uh, it's, it's definitely getting to me a little. There's a compounding thing that a lot of people don't talk about. Like the, I, I love watching, and for people out there who watch like the Hot Ones mm -hmm. Sean Evans show where he interviews um, celebrities and, and serves them hot wings along the way, what you don't realize there is absolutely a compounding factor that when you have more things that are hot, you're, 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 it, there's a there's a there's a coalescing factor that the more <laughs> you you eat, the more heat that's sitting in your tongue, and it's not like just eating one. The more you eat, the the more it kicks you in the face. What well, are we going to the number two peanut? Who's ready for it? Well, I can vouch for that since I'm like on ship number eight here, but yeah. All right. Yeah, let's move on. So I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm out because I, I, I'm feeling a little teary over here already. But move on to chip number right. two. I will root for all of you. All right. Does it say number two on it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Is it just, yeah. Number well, two. Oh, number two. Oh, it's upside down. Num all right. So this two. is peanut number two. They call the this a medium. It's the, the, uh, the party is starting apparently right now. This is where we're at. Party is starting with, with uh, nut number two. Ooh. All right, I'm going to try two, but I'm probably going to bow out after that. I'm already crying, literally. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy, I appreciate I appreciate your candor here, and I appreciate you diving in here to number two. Yeah. Look at them. And I look appreciate that things. I'm not the only one that's going to cry here. Yeah. <laughs> these don't even these don't even really look like nuts. So I mean, there's just like coated in stuff. Candy coated. Yeah, candy coated yeah. and peppery goodness. We in? Two? Bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, righteous. DJ, how are you they, doing? Have like, they have like a honey roasted That's pretty spicy. top end to them. All right, Woo! are you guys going for, for nut number three? Jeez, I just barely got num know. nut number two oh, down. Two was hot. I'm like halfway through this bag. I need more water. All right. You need milk. Water's not a good strategy here. Or yogurt? Have bread. you tried whiskey? Whiskey is a good thing, too. Um, I feel like that's a joke. That seems <laughs> like it's like really going to set your mouth on fire. Oh man! Oh man! All right, we on. I'm going for nut. Listen, I'm pulling up. Um, here, here, let me see if I can pull the third one up here. This yeah. is uh, this is number three. Let me see if I get the camera to focus here. So, uh, <laughs> come on now. Okay, right there. Please come on, me. There it is. Nut number three. It's go. called uh, question your commitment. <laughs> so apparently, once yeah. you get to number three, you, you're questioning your commitment to the to the pain threshold. Woo. I'm in. All did right. you eat one, DJ? Did you do it? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Cheers, brother. Yeah. I'll see you on the Jeremy other end. Jeremy literally tapped out. He's tapped leaving out. us. All right. <laughs> He's like, I think my mom just called. I got to get going. 
She said I can't play with you guys anymore. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, this beat. is intense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, three I'm still is uh, feeling the burn right now. Wow, death nut challenge. Yeah, that's that's starting to heat up now. How you doing, DJ? Is this me and you? Mm. Jeremy, oh are gosh. you out? It's really spicy. Oh yeah, I'm out. I bet I my I made my daughter bring me some milk. Right. <laughs> you got something to drink over there, DJ? Yeah, I got some milk in this uh this nice right. water bottle. Let's put a <laughs> let's put a challenge out here. Like uh, let's no. see anyone in the chat. You, you know scream it out there let's see who'll go farther without having a drink next because it's down to me and dj now maybe we can send them out a bottle of hot wow. sauce i'll make sure we hook them up all right we let's can pick someone who, from the who chat is the some... last nut here who do we think's going to go the farthest here without having the next drink uh we've got two more nuts left we've got four and five and they get they get ugly from here up all oh, right no. you ready to go to the next one uh, like no. are, are we tip are we putting money on this is there a deadpool Oh God, hold on. Not, not a Deadpool on this one. This is all in good fun. Yeah, my eyes are watering. Yeah. All right. This number, is the number, number four. four. Oh, hell yes, hot. Boom, fire it up. <laughs> good I like Lord. your uh, so I'm gonna call 911. Renee, Renee messages me and she's like, Yeah, so, you know, what are you doing Saturday? I'm like, God, you didn't expect. Oh. All right. That's hot. Hold on. All right, I'm going to get hotter. Your... Jeremy's yeah. sweating over there. I, my mouth is still on fire. Cheers, brother. <laughs> yeah, that one's that one's yeah, definitely brave. getting hotter. That's brave. Oh lord. No, I'm not wow. supposed to drink. All right. Oh god, I'm watching your face light up. It's what from the heat. I'm not gonna rub my eyes because I'm like, well, yeah. Keep your water. fingers away from your eyes after yeah, yeah. touching the peanuts. Wow, yeah. The They're like, don't rub your eyes. I'm like, yeah, I'll, no. <sighs> All right. I just want to thank Two Buddy for having us all on today. <laughs> God, that looks painful. We aim to please. Oh. Yeah, all right, number five, DJ, you in? Yeah, let's. Just Why do would it. you do this? <laughs> you know, I don't get this opportunity well a lot, so I'm just gonna, you know. That's number five. Is the um the reg what is it? That's what does that say? The, the reg nut? regret of regretfully hot. Oh, no. oh my god. Yeah, it's like it's like oh, packed. No. That's some like, foreshadowing for you right there. <laughs> it's packed full of oh, no. stuff. Yeah, oh, for sure. No, no, no. Oh, oh right. no. Oh. How are you feeling? If you haven't downloaded and uh signed up no. for your two buddy account, the link's in the description bad. below. This is bad. <sighs> this is terrible. Ready? This, and for everybody ready? watching, if you like this type of content, make sure that you like and subscribe this this live stream. <laughs> That's bad. Wow. How it's you feel, like Mary? Very <laughs> quiet. It's not good. <laughs> oh, that is hot, man. Yeah, I gotta take a drink. I think we have a winner then. If you take a drink, I'm gonna do it. That's painfully hot. All right, we've got a winner, Daniel. If <laughs> anyone in the chat pick my oh, name, Renee, pick someone Daniel out of the Battelle. chat, and, and we'll uh, we'll send him a bottle of the Daniel Battelle Summer Simmer Sauce, courtesy of oh, Two Buddy and myself. Wow, that is really hot. This is the challenge. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I think we're still going to have this challenge tomorrow, just to be honest. Yeah, the, yeah, the <laughs> challenge is recovering the other end of it, right? I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so so we have to move on to our ne next segment. But before yeah, we let's move just on, ignore that happened to just move on to the next thing, Renee. Before <laughs> we move on, before we move on, I want to give away a couple bottles of the hot sauce that we didn't feature it here. Um, but everybody on the stream to to reward you for eating a bunch of hot things, we're gonna give you some hot sauce. Um, <laughs> so in the chat, just write the word hot over and over. Write the word hot, and Daniel, I'm gonna let you do the honors. And uh, pick, pick, pick five people. Wow! All right, I'm gonna just try to group, try to remain. That's really kicking in. This is like your real challenge because now you have to, you have wow. to actually yeah, do hot. some work. All right, I'm gonna choose uh, John Pullum, P U L L U M. Is that someone writing this down, or do I have to do that too? No, no, no. Just go ahead and pick them. For everyone who wins, um, there is a, uh, there's a link. There's a pinned comment with a link. Fill out that form, and we will get the hot sauce over to you. So just keep wow. picking them. You got four more left. All right, John Pullum. I'm gonna go with. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to slow the chat down. Um, King Kevin TV. Woo. That's a hot one. Pardon me. 
I think King, King Kevin might have might have won two things already now. So congratulations on your second win of the day. All right, keep it going. Two, uh, three more. My Scrap Menagerie, great name for a channel. Love that. Two more. <sighs> You're dying. I'm, I, I'm, I'm working. Uh, Inspo Games, one word. I N S P O G A M E S. <sighs> Inspo Games. I love gaming. Uh, all right. <sighs> one more. Uh, is that four? I got one more. Let's see. Yeah, yeah one more. Oh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go with Hushy. H U S H E Y. Hushy with hot for the final choice here. Awesome. Congratulations to all of the winners. You are in for a real treat. Make sure that you go to that um, pinned comment, fill in that form, and we'll send you some hot sauce. Thank you to everyone for the merch session, but also playing this crazy hot spicy Ooh. challenge. Um, our uh, next up, we're going to have uh, Alec is going to come, come back on, and he's going to interview typical gamers. So stick around. That's going to be a wonderful session. Um, I'm going to head out, and uh, thank you guys again. Thank you very much, Renee. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to – I'm a little speechless. Renee, are you okay? Just making sure you're okay real fast. Um. I will be okay. Yeah, that was yeah. that was hotter than I anticipated. Actually, I took one bite of the chip. I didn't even eat the whole chip. One bite of the chip, and that was that was pretty intense. I actually was getting a little too cocky with the um, with the spicy nut when I first ate. Oh, I was no. like, yeah, I got this. This isn't bad. And then it took a moment and hit me, and I was like, nope, this is not good. I got to tap <laughs> out. <laughs> Don't worry, I got some good screenshots of your face where you're just really questioning life. So. You'll see that afterwards. So thank you. Thanks. That. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Without further ado, stoked to introduce typical gamer, Andre, a dear creator, a dear friend of mine as well, too. Um, massive creator. I don't know if you've followed Andre's channel, but over 17 million subscribers across his YouTube channels gets millions of views on every single video. 18 plus thousand average concurrent viewers whenever he goes live streaming on YouTube as well, too. I'm um, stoked to have him. So let's bring him on in here. We're going to talk about some good stuff. Andre. What's well, good, Alec? Haven't seen you in a minute. Hope Dude, you, the last uh, time we saw well. each other was, was Disneyland, walking to, walking around together. So. That is true. I feel like the beard's added a few inches to it. Dude, working on it, okay? I just straightened it this morning, put the balm in, ready to go. So <laughs> Okay, fair enough. I haven't shaved since, so this is all I got. <laughs> I just yeah, like no worries. <laughs> Dude, thanks for joining us today. We're stoked to have you and to pick your brain a little bit as, as to like your journey becoming a creator and becoming, you know, the the, the empire that you've built today. So uh thanks for coming to join us today. Appreciate it. For sure. Yeah, anytime. Dude, a quick trivia question, real fast though. Uh yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Did you just hit your one hundred thousandth elimination in Fortnite recently? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did a, a couple a, a little while back there. Um it's kind of crazy to think about like one hundred thousand. Like the next, the next one, big one's going to be like a million. And that's, you know, that's going to take 10 times the time. So probably not going to happen, but a hundred K is like wild. And um, yeah, I, I was glad I was paying attention so I could document it and be yeah. like, this is the a hundred K also would just slip me by. But one day I was just checking my stats. I'm like, Oh man, like 99,000 or something. So let's that's turn crazy. This something. Well, dope. I'm happy to have you here, and I'm happy that you're still alive after that. Too. That's quite the journey itself. Um, also, tell me real fast. I should have looked before. And how many billions of views have you accumulated across your various different YouTube channels? Do you know? Yeah, I think it's about six billion or so. Does that blow your mind to like think about six billion views? Yeah, just just a couple one or one point five more billion, and we got the whole population. So you know, it's uh, <laughs> but, oh, you man. know, of course, people watching it uh, a couple different times, and uh, yeah, it, it's wild to think about. I mean, I would have never, at all, in my wildest dreams, thought of that at the start. So yeah, well, that's great. I mean, that's a really good segue because like that's a big part of what we talk about today. It's like your journey becoming a creator, hitting six billion views, having multiple different channels that are, have so much success on them. Um, you know, we kind of want to take a step back and like look holistically at your journey, like the very beginning. What was that like, you know, when you started first creating YouTube content and putting that out there? Yeah, I mean, I started way back in 2009, I think. So it was pretty, pretty early in the YouTube days, pretty early in the streaming days. And really, I was just trying to have fun with it. I was like 15 or 16 and I got this like capture card off eBay and I'm like, you know, let's just try it out. Me and my brother and. It was a lot of fun. You know, there was only a few people watching, like maybe one or two or three, but 
we were having a blast and it was just fun to share something that uh, I'm so passionate with with other people as well and I think there was like an instant spark and an instant light bulb moment for me because I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like a thread and like a theme that I've seen across most creators today. Actually, every creator I've talked to is just like that passion. You liked it. It was fun. Like, so you just kept on doing it. Uh, I just have a side question, actually, real fast. How did your parents feel or your family feel when you first like, hey, I'm going to become a professional gamer? Uh, what was like their initial reaction out of curiosity? Yeah, so both my parents are immigrants, so... I don't know. I don't know if it's like an immigrant mentality or what, but they they always want their children to do school and, and graduate and do super well in school because they didn't have the opportunity to do it. At least my parents didn't, and especially my dad. He he grew up in a really small farm town and he didn't even like graduate school or anything. So he was like, you know, I'm going to try to create the best life for my kids here in Canada. And um, I want you to graduate school. So I'm telling him, dad, I want to drop out to do this. And um, he, he wasn't, he wasn't too pleased about it, but I, I explained to him, like, you know, if anything goes wrong, I can go back to school in a year, all that. And uh, now he's very, very happy I did it. And um, he's super proud of me. And um, honestly, I, I think he, he he always thinks I'm right now, which is bad. But <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I was just right about that one thing. Like, I could be wrong about other things, but um, no, it's, it's, it's super awesome. And yeah, it, it was a bit of a struggle to start. My dad apologized. He's like, I'm sorry for taking away your games and internet sometimes. I'm like, it's okay. You're doing the best that you could do, right? I mean, kids yeah. play a lot of games. I was playing way too much games as a kid. And um, <laughs> I guess it led to here, but it could have also not, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. And I love that too. Yeah. Just like, just working on that passion, making it happen. Um, and I also see, I see your YouTubes in the background too. Like you have an actual oh, yeah. like action figure of yourself. Like that for me is like, yeah, I made it. Like that's, that's that that's, for me would be it. So yeah, that's just absolutely wild. Well. They they nailed it. I, I love the design and looks like me. So hundred percent, dude. I was tackling that. And Samara has her own as well too. Now, right? Yeah, yeah, she does. Dude, that's it. Like that's the power couple right there. I support that one hundred. Right? <laughs> Each of us has one of our cats too. So if you get both, you get both the cats. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Well, we gotta plug that later. I'm gonna go look that up after this. But um, that's it's dope. sold I mean, out. But it's okay. It's oh, okay. dang it! Come on, you gotta gotta put, you gotta get gotta get us some more. Um, well, it's awesome hearing about your journey. Like I said, finding that that path that you want to go, working through it, even with through like a little bit of family struggle and figuring out like, hey, does this work? Um, and here you are today doing something you're super passionate with over what we said six billion views across your channels, and that's yeah. dope. I'm just stoked for you to hear that as well too. And I just I remember having this moment, you and I, two years ago, walking around Disneyland, like this is it. Like I remember being a kid talking about like, hey, I want to work in video games or be a part of video games, and like you get kind of laughed at when you're back in our age when that happened and looking at like what we're doing now and having this opportunity to promote video games, be a part of video games, play video games professionally. And that's a cool experience to go through. Um, you know, looking at the video game space, so there are so many creators out there. What are ways that you found to differentiate, differentiate yourself amongst those other creators to really stand out um, and continue to cultivate your audience? Yeah. So it's really important in this industry to continue to pivot depending on, you know, certain trends, but also just like content style, right? Um, content that worked 10 years ago doesn't work today. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a constantly involving space and people are continuously pushing boundaries. People have production teams now. Crazy. It's wild, but it, but it doesn't mean that you as like a sole creator by yourself doesn't mean that you can't do something incredible. It just, it, it's a lot of trial and error. It's, um, it's a lot of consistency. It's, it's, continue to be passionate about something you love and then you just always got to seek to improve like your video today great the next video work off that one keep doing that right and if you keep doing that you're going to get to a point where your 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 video that you just finished you're going to be super proud of and you're going to look back at your first video and be like wow what a difference right yeah. and same thing with me I, I look back at some videos like even i started a new channel you know two years ago and i look back at the videos then and i look at them now like I kind of worked through some formulas and got to a point where a lot of the things that I've got to, it's, it's from constant improvement. So. Yeah. That like self introspective moment of like, cool, what can I do better? Oh, Hey, I like this or I didn't like this. And uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you don't edit every video you do now, but how have you gone? Like for myself, creating videos and editing, I just, I can't, I can't stand it. It's the worst part. <laughs> I hate editing. Uh, how have you like gone through like those parts of like being a content creator? Like how do you work through them and continue yeah. to find that motivation? Yeah, so at the beginning, I, d I did everything myself, thumbnail, video editing, and I actually enjoyed it. I feel like 
I was growing up, I was a lot more of a perfectionist than I am now. I feel like I've been actively trying to kind of work that out because it's, it's not helping anyone. It doesn't help anyone watching. It doesn't help me. So just kind of relaxing on that and uh, delegating and trusting other people and that knowing that you may think you do something incredibly well and you might, but if you are not focusing on your strong suit, then you're kind of letting those other parts down. So my strong suit is creating the content and um, entertaining in that sense. So finding a video editor who can kind of capture that vision for me, finding a, a thumbnail editor who can do it even better than me. Like these things are so important so that you can delegate, free up some more of your time so you have more time to create. Yeah. So like find what you're really passionate about, what you enjoy doing, and then kind of scale off and delegate those other tasks. That way they still have to get done. There's always a thumbnail needs to get created. The video always need to, needs to get edited. Um, but finding those people. Um, you know, one of the questions I've always thought about watching your live streams is like, how do you go for nine to 20 plus hours on one live stream? Like, how do you not go like going crazy streaming that long at one time? <laughs> I just love it, man. I mean, some few last I've, I've been playing a lot of Fortnite and I've been playing it since release so over four years now. And they're like, don't you get bored? And I'm just like, I must be a psycho or something because I'm not bored at all. Like I have so much fun. I play off stream like I, really? I'm, I'm constantly like, yeah. And right now I'm in like a big competitive Fortnite phase. So I'm training so hard because there's some kids out here that are absolutely nuts. And, you know, I just, I just hit 30. I just hit 30, Alec. So I'm, I'm trying out here to compete with the best of them. So, yeah, dude. Welcome um, to the 30 club, man. It's a party. So I know, I know it's, uh, I can't believe, I can't believe I'm here. You know, I, I feel like I was just a little kid streaming a little while back, but it's almost been double the time since then. So, yeah, I mean, not to get sentimental or weird here, weird here, but you are one of the founding fathers of like creating this YouTube like gaming vertical and like creating this gaming content. Like one of the original people to do that. So, thank you for putting in the work and the effort to make this space what it is today. And I speak on behalf of all the other gamers as well too. Like that's awesome. So, thank you for having. Yeah, me it's back. it's wild that you say that. <laughs> it's like I all the pieces of the puzzles came together. You know what I mean. Seriously, all the 360 no scopes. Are you still good at them? Like, where do you stand with your 360? Oh no my gosh! Please tell me you went back and saw those. <laughs> Dude, that's that's the OG like 2010, 2011 content right there. So yeah, there was a there was some wild content back then, like 10 second clips that would probably fly better now because of YouTube Shorts, but at the time was not hitting. It was all like commentaries back then, which is interesting because it's like a a dying content vertical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, 100%. Before it used to be you just take out gameplay, you just talk over it, you're good. Now there's like so much more to it. You got yeah, Mr. Well, Beast style videos now, you know? Dude, the bar has been raised and that's a good thing. And I love that as well too. Like looking back, like what content was, you know, when YouTube was first created and just looking back, like what it was versus what it is now. And like you were talking about, like it's a fully produced piece of artwork that's awesome to watch. And like, honestly, I'll watch YouTube and TikTok over Netflix and other things too. And it's like, that's where I find the most fulfillment and the most enjoyment as well too. So um, that's dope. Um, you know, looking at your content, like how do you continue to find that inspiration? Like I said, over creating thousands of videos, it has to get to a point where like, okay, I'm hitting a wall. And like, what do you do for yourself when like to continue to find that inspiration to create videos that, that matter to you and your audience? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times it's just kind of stepping away from your setup and from all that. I go on hikes, I, I go for walks. It's, it's really great to clear your head, especially in such an industry that's super mental based, right? Like it's not, it's not a physical labor job. I'm not here building a house or something. This is all like, you know, it's talking and there's that part of it. But there, there's a lot of the mental aspect and the creativity to it. So giving yourself time to recharge is mega, mega important. I always try to get eight hours of sleep, um, eat properly, exercise, but I haven't been really <laughs> recently. <laughs> that was a tough one. Um, a very one track mind. So like if I do begin exercising, I will exercise every single day until yeah. something breaks the routine and then I just don't <laughs> exercise at all. So I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just keeping yourself energized and, and keeping yourself focused. Having a goal is important too, or just like being content with what you do. Truly. Yeah. I love that. So you finding like a way to keep your, honestly, just keep yourself healthy. Keep your, mm -hmm. keep your mind healthy, keep your body healthy, and just continue to think about that stuff. And I agree. You know, when I'm outside of nature or taking a walk or being outside, like, those are the times when, like, the ideas hit me. Um, for myself, is driving my car, you know, taking a long road oh, yeah. trip and, like, yeah. really thinking about it. Uh, speaking of cars, how's the Lambo doing? Tell us about that it, real fast. It's, it's good. It's been a long winter. It's been a hibernation for her, but uh, 
I think in the next couple of weeks here, I'll be able to to take her out. It'll be fun. Do it. What are you driving during the winter time though? Uh, Tesla Model X, yeah. <laughs> dude. That's yeah, a fun yeah. car too. That's oh, uh, seriously. I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, electric cars aren't great or aren't fun. And then like my dad was like, oh, I always want a gas car. And then he tried out the Tesla and he's like, I want one of these things now. <laughs> like this is crazy, right? Yeah. It's great. It's comfortable. It's fantastic. I'm waiting to see the all-wheel drive 911 to show up in your garage one day. Okay. So that's Sheesh. what I mean the Porsche. So when that happens, right, hit me up. I want to come see it. So All right. I'll have to get a bigger uh, garage for you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, you know, looking through this and looking back to yourself back in 2009, you know, looking at yourself and saying, uh, hey, you're a creator. And if you could speak to yourself now, looking at all the success and the things that you've gone through, what's like that one nugget of advice that you'd give yourself um, over this time? It would be like batched in three. It'd be be consistent, like do what you love and and always seek to improve. I think those yeah. are probably the three most important and kind of ones that I've thought about in the past. I'd also probably just tell myself to chill. Like, like you know, that, that helped to get where I am, but I was very like, I'm still today, like I work all the time, right? And I, I think that's important, but I think also I could have found some more time when I was younger to really work on myself and and kind of have some more time for me so yeah and don't take it but, so seriously you know exactly and I, I just took it very seriously uh but the thing is i loved it i was passionate about it i'm still passionate about it and like i continue with that energy it's just a lot of times you're kind of tunnel visioned right you're stuck in your ways about yeah. and it can be about anything it can be about truly anything life school work whatever and if you just take a moment to step out and really look at what's happening and, and your reality, you can learn a lot about yourself and a lot yeah. about your situation. I think that helps so much more than people think. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to the balancing that you're talking about. And I see that Max Plays actually dropped a really good question here saying, how do you keep your gaming and real life balanced? How do you do that? How do you draw those boundaries there? Oh man, that's tough. I, I honestly, I don't we know. We grabbed some air for this question. So, <laughs> uh, so I, you know what? That might not be the best answer for me. <laughs> Samir might uh, have a couple of words for you. Um, it, it's tough. I mean, because truly, being your own boss, you can work as much or as little as you want. But again, I'm I'm just so passionate about it. And Samara, my, my girlfriend, for those of you guys that don't know, um, she knows how passionate I am. And and from the beginning of a relationship. Like seven years ago, I said, I'm going to be honest with you when I started dating here, I work a lot. So I hope that's not an issue. And she's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and I have to keep reminding sometimes. I'm like, I, I said this, I was clear at the start, you know? <laughs> um, but no, I, I try to make time and um, sometimes I'm not the best at it, best at it but it, it's a constant improvement and it's constantly looking at the situation and trying to do better. Love it. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about, I've seen you and Samara when you guys do your streams together. It's actually one of my favorite things to think about because uh, I do the same thing with my kids. You know, I try to find ways where we have joint hobbies. We can do things together uh, and have that relationship. And so we recently just beat Breath of the Wild together with my daughter, oh, um, playing, it, playing it every night for a few hours, finding different horses, doing all the different side quests. Um, and, you know, how has that helped strengthen your guys' relationship as well to having a shared hobby? Um, has that been important as you guys have worked to grow a channel together and work through stuff? Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. And um, before we met, Samira wasn't at all involved in the space. So getting her involved and knowing that from the moment I met her, she'd be great for it and that she has been great at, at it, it's it's fantastic. And truly, I mean, I, it's probably a similar moment to you and your kids, but playing Fortnite with Samira and like other games, it's just, it's so fun to, for me, I get more almost more joy from watching her have fun and I don't know. Can you relate? Like if your kid's having fun, you're having a 100%, blast, right? hundred percent. There, there's something about like the joy of others. That's really just fantastic. So even like if you have to lean in a bit more to make them enjoy, it's like such an amazing experience and I wouldn't trade for anything. So. Yeah. Oh, 100% watching like those you care about share a similar passion or a similar thing that they love about. Like it makes you happy just watching them do that. And I agree watching totally. her just like sneak up on horses and jump on them and take them and run, ride them around high like high field. Like I've loved that. It's been actually one of the highlights of being a dad. And I'll share, I'll share this picture real fast. My daughter actually drew it a few days ago. Uh, it's me and her sitting on the couch together playing uh, uh -huh. Legend of Zelda together. And when I got this, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right. Something yeah, right awesome. is happening. We're like my six year old daughter, also loves doing this. We're having that shared passion together. And so 
I'm happy to hear that for you guys as well too. Um, gotta, I know we got to keep that photo and uh, and show her when she's older. Oh, one hundred percent. I leave it in my office and I look at it when things get a little, little slow. So it's good. <laughs> it's good to remember love that. It. Um, we're get, coming close on our time. We got one more question, but as a, before I ask you that last question, I'm going to turn over to the chat. If you have any other questions you want to ask as well too. Um, for the last few minutes, we have Andre here with us. Drop him in the chat below. Can't promise we'll get to all of them, but try to get to a few of them. Um, but in the meantime, Andre, I have a last question for you. Looking at the creators in the space, what's the one creator that you really look up to and why? Yeah, I mean, I I think it might be a <laughs> an, an obvious answer here for a lot of people, but Mr. Beast just, he continues to, he pours... I assume most of his money back into the videos, which is insane, right? And it's a different vertical. His is like a real life and kind of a challenge kind of thing. But the fact that he invests so much of what he earns back into his videos to make these insane wild videos, he just continues to push and push and push the bar. It's impressive. It's super impressive. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. It's 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 a hard uh it's hard to keep up in the area, but it's cool to look at like also his story, like He's passionate about that. He loves that. He's talked about that a bunch. And um, I believe he hasn't come on yet, but we also have some um, some conversations with Mr. Beast happening later on today with our with our CEO, Ricky Ray, as well, too. And so um, thank you for that as well. I love that. Uh, we had one other question here. I want to hear from one last person, but um, they're asking what what your favorite part of YouTube is. Kind of a broad question. And uh, yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your thoughts there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my favorite part is just seeing people comment that, the videos made their day or something like that, or, or especially when live streaming, just interacting with people. And it really just goes back to the roots of why I started. It's just so fun. It, it was okay. So, so when we were younger, not to make it too long, but you would play games and there wouldn't be a huge audience. It'd be you and your friends, right? Yep. And, yep. and maybe just one person's playing or you're fighting your friend and other friends are watching, but it's just, it's just a vibe. It's just a fun time. Uh -huh. And essentially for me, live streaming recreates that fun. And it's like everyone's watching and we're all enjoying the game, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's just constantly every day having that enjoyment there. It's just fantastic. And I love it. Yeah. I mean, not to get too nostalgic, but remember like in high school having those like Halo parties and playing Halo together and just like oh, yeah. playing that same map over and over and over again and just having a blast. Like I totally remember that too. And it's, it's cool that like that's taken to a scale of what it is now where what 6 billion people have seen those videos of yours. Uh, you know, instead of just having the three friends in your basement as you guys play yeah. Halo together, it's like it's the whole world that's seen it, you know, across this. And so, yeah, uh, so freaking dope. Um, three other friends might be pushing it. Three friends. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> uh, last question. We'll hit real fast. So how did you build your community? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I feel like at the start, I would like reply to most every comment. I would um, post questions to community and and really kind of try to get everyone involved did giveaways, all that, just, just trying to make it feel like a community, right? Yeah. yeah. Even, even now I'm trying to push that. Like we, we have a discord, we have like a, a fully dedicated community manager for the discord. Like we're trying to make it a safe space for everyone. And we've done a fantastic job. James has done a fantastic job. And, um, that I just want to continue to push that and make sure that, Every aspect of what I do is, is safe for everyone, right? That nobody gets bullied or anything like that. Because that's what, that was my major concern. Almost why I didn't make a Discord is that I don't want anyone to feel, you know, bullied or left out or anything like that. So I, I hired someone specifically for that. It's doing great. Um, so much community involvement there. And now I have an additional person, delegation, to help me get in contact with the community. And now he can bring up some of the best aspects of the community to my attention too, because sometimes I miss things, right? There's yeah. thousands of comments a day and it's tough to see. So having somebody else on board really helps. But no, at the start, it's like, you got to reply to everybody. You got to pose interesting questions, get people involved, like like truly get people involved, not for like a like your own interests, like yeah. for a genuine reason. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's what I did. It's it's kind of just being a human. It's really yeah, what it comes exactly. down to. Exactly. It's just, it's just be you, really. Yeah. Yeah, like don't do it for like, hey, you guys, what do you think about this? Just to ask it to get the engagement of like an honest, genuine question. Yeah, and no, that's weird if you do that. <laughs> yeah, oh, 100%. Well, and I think, you know, work when I first got into the job working with in the influencer creator space, like that was one of the biggest like mind shifts for me is like, you're a normal person. 
Yeah. As we were walking through Disney together and just chit chat and having a good time, we're working other campaigns. Like you're a normal person, just like I am. Sure. Like we have our channels, we have the ability to entertain and do things like that, but you're also a normal human being. And I think the the people behind the keyboard oftentimes forget that. And oh, so yeah. having this community to be a human and to speak with one each other and help each other, like that's a really, really, really big thing. So you nailed it. I, I completely agree. And at the end of the day, just be nice to each other. We're all humans. We're all, we're all going through similar struggles. It's like, yeah, it's tough out here. So be nice and kind to one, one another. I, I always say that on stream. I think it's important. Try not to lose your way and yeah, yeah. be a good person. Honestly, I can't think of a better way to wrap this up. Thank for you. Sure. I appreciate oh. it. You're a great dude. Thanks for coming and joining us today. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. So Andre. Yeah, any, anytime, Alec. Thank you for this. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. See you later, dude. Awesome notes there. And thanks everyone in the chat as well too, joining in there. And I honestly, I just, I love the thought about being a person, being a human, helping each other out, building that community together. I'm stoked for that. So Renee, let's bring you back in here. Let's keep on making the magic happen. I love that there are so many creators that have come on and have mentioned community. Like it's, you know, I think it's such a, such a big thing. And it's great to hear that people are really paying attention to their community. Um, and multiple creators have talked about just be a good person, just treat yeah. people well, like good takeaways. Yeah. Like that's okay. like that. And also just like passion, I think is my third takeaway that I've seen today is just like be a good person working to have that passion, like so, so freaking important. So yes, thank you, Andre yeah. and everyone else who's brought that today. Awesome. Well, um, speaking of being a good person, let's give away a bunch of stuff. Let's do it. All right. So um, first up is uh, Spreadshop. So we're gonna give away um, a few of these actually. So we've got a $100 voucher that you can use for your own spread shop. So if you've got some cool merch, let's see if we can put it there. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. You've, got, you've got your own cool merch and you wanna purchase it from your shop. A uh, $100 voucher is gonna help you do that from spread shop. We're gonna give away five. So five $100 That's vouchers to five different people. Yeah. Um, so Alec, I'm going to let you do the honors and actually pick the winners. So we want um, in the chat, just quickly put in the word shop. So copy and paste, put in the word shop, put it in as many times as you can. And Alec, you're going to pick five people to win the $100 voucher. That's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. Um, okay, let's do this thing. I mean, John Pullum was the first one that I saw. So John, let's make this happen. John, congratulations. Um, make sure that you're going to the linked, the pinned comment, filling out that form, and then we'll get that voucher to you. Yep. Um, and then also I saw Pete to Heat. Let's make that happen as well too. Um, King Kevin TV. I see King Kevin out there just owning the chat today. So um, King Kevin as well too. Let's throw that in there. Um, oh, Max plays, of course. Max had a phenomenal question, and I love that Max was really participant of that. So, Max, let's let's throw him in there as well. All right, um, you got one last one. I got one last one. That was my last question. Um, who is the last person? Ooh, I think. Mm -hmm, let's see what happens. Keep it going. Keep oh, it going. Let's it do. Uh, let's do it. Let's do Explorer. Do we get Explorer? All right. If you got it, then congratulations, Good. Explorer. Um, make sure for all of the winners that Alec just mentioned, make sure that you're going to that uh, pinned comment, fill out the information on the form uh, so that we can get that over to you. We have one additional thing that we're giving away from Spreadshop. Um, so Spreadshop is uh, also giving away a um, merch strategy session with their team awesome team. Um, and, uh, I have to tell you, we, we kind of went through a similar thing internally when we were collaborating on our merch and it was amazing, like such a great team. They really know their stuff. And so this is whoever actually ends up winning this, like you're winning something really phenomenal. So, um, this is, uh, definitely something that is, um, a real treat. So we're going to use the same word, put in the word shop into the live chat as many times as you can. So as many times as you can, you're gonna have more opportunities to get in front of um, Alec here. Alec, pick one lucky winner this time. Ooh, one lucky winner. Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes and give it like two seconds and let's just see whatever pops up the first one I see we're picking. Uh, one, two, let's go with Dizzy D. Dizzy D, all right. So congratulations. You're gonna win a session with Team Awesome. Oh, we've got a... 
We've got another thing from Spreadshop. So I'm just getting, just getting where this just in breaking news. Um, we're also going to give away some mugs. Oh, so, for the, so for the person who won uh, the team, awesome. Make sure that you're going to that um, pinned comment. I'm going to keep saying it because I want the winners to actually be able to redeem their prizes. Go to that pinned comment, fill out that form so that we can get you uh, your team. Awesome strategy session there. We're going to give away five mugs. Um, let me, let me make sure that's the number. Yep. We're giving away five mugs. So we're doing it. Um, so in this one, I'm going to change it up just a little bit. I'm sorry, guys, Please. put in the word mug. So put in the word mug as many times as you can. And then Alec, you're going to pick five winners to win the creator day mug. This is a lot of pressure to do this today. No, it means that you are doing good things for at least five people. You're That's making five cool. people's days here. This is great. Good. Uh, Love of Bora was the first one I saw. Uh, we'll go with that. And then let's go with, ooh, oh my gosh, they're coming in so fast. I can't keep up with all of them. Um, just pick them as you see them. So people are just putting them in quick, copy and paste in. Uh, let's go with Alex McFady. I've never heard of that person before. So throw one over to Alex. That's a great one. Um, let's throw one over to funny guy, YouTube. And what am I at three so far? So two more, yeah, to go. Yeah, two more, two more, uh, two more to go, two more to go. Adams exploits. Let's do Adams as well. All right. And you got one, more. one lucky winner left. One lucky winner left. Let's go with Richie. Right. All right. Great. Congratulations okay. to all the winners. Again, make sure that you are going to that pinned comment, fill out that form. And we will get you all of these amazing things from Spreadshop. So very cool. Uh, next up, ac actually, Alex, um, I think it's uh, it's it's your session. So I will hop off and let you take it away. Dope. Awesome. So we actually had the opportunity earlier this week to interview Devin Supertramp, one of also founding creators when it comes to working on YouTube, creating some of those highly produced videos um, that we've seen. And it just does a phenomenal job. So we're stoked to have Devin. Um, we couldn't make it today. So we wanted to make sure you still got this awesome information. So we met earlier this week, recorded it, and we're going to throw it up here. So without further ado, we're all right, everyone, on. thank you for coming out. Creator Day. April 23rd, we're here to party, make the good stuff happen. We are honored to be blessed and given the time with Devin Supertramp, one of the original creators, bringing us through, through some good stuff. Been on YouTube now for what, 12 years? Was it total? total? Uh, give or take 12 years, 11 years, somewhere in there, but age has no beauty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a wild ride. Um, I didn't expect it to happen this way, um, but it did. And it's been really fun and ups and downs and ups and downs and downs and up. So it's, it's definitely been a wild ride and I've, I've loved being a part of it. Yeah. Well, 1.5 billion views. You can't complain with that. So does that blow your mind to think that 1.5 billion people have seen your con or views that have happened on your content? And that's just on our YouTube channel, because if you add our like Facebook, there's another 3 billion there. And then if you look at other creators, I've created, so I, it's roughly like 7 billion once everything's said and done. So definitely more views as I set out to make movies than I planned, but um, I'm okay with that. Dude, that's insane to think about. And also like thinking about our history. So we've been working together now for what, eight years, nine years since like the beginning of brand sponsorship. Yeah, early the, the OG days back in the day. Um, I think my first one was an Assassin's Creed video we did with you guys for Assassin's Creed uh -huh. 3. Uh -huh. And I really wanted to work with Ubisoft. And I talked to Ricky at Ben and then he somehow made it happen. So it's just been really fun kind of seeing that. But we've definitely done so many really awesome. I mean, honestly, some of my favorite brand deals have been been with you guys, you know, and that's what people don't realize. It's like to survive as a creator, like assets is great. But it's usually not enough to survive, especially when you're doing bigger productions, which we tend to do. So yeah. it's been really awesome to help us do what we love to do, but also work with great brands. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And I think, you know, looking at the content, the brand deals we've done, some of my favorite brand deals are with you. And I say that just because it's kind of the poster child of like what this should look like. Like when I think about a brand deal, all too often creators like, hey, let me do this 30 second like mid roll or this quick like, you know, call to action. And it feels just very like it is an ad. People see that as ad, they look to skip over it. But the content that you've created looking at Assassin's Creed and other ones, like it's a full blown production. This isn't just like a quick 30 second ad read, click the link below, and let's keep on moving. But like, no, you're going to Uzbekistan and you're recording videos and like making crazy stuff come to life. Um, insane to think about. How do you do that? Like, how do you, how are you saying that after doing so many of those, those projects? Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that might be a bad word to, to, to say, but I honestly, I think for me, it's just like I'm doing things I love to do. 
So it's like even the the stuff we've done with you guys, it's been brands that I've genuinely loved. Like last year, you guys said, hey, you have any interest in doing anything with Contra? And I grew up on the video game Contra on the NES. So I was like, yes, sign me up. So because they're things I love um, or they're video games or franchises I love, it makes it like exciting to work with these brands and these characters that I've grown up loving for most of my life. So I think that's how I'm able to do it is I love doing it. Yeah. And I think people see that too. Like people watch the content. They can tell when creators are like invested in this partnership or creators are invested in a piece of content like that shows through. And it's not just like, Hey, I have to do this because my manager's telling me to do so, or I need to get the, need to get the bag. You know, I got to get the money, but I'm passionate about it. And so, absolutely, um, yeah, that's awesome. And I was going to say, it's been what, since 2005, the first YouTube video uploaded on this day, which is insane to think what, 17 years later, here we are where you have a platform, you have a voice, you have a way to monetize something that you love and you're passionate about and build into a career of who you are as a person. Um, What does that mean to you? Do you ever take a step back and think about like, holy crap, like I make videos, people watch them, I get paid for it, like that's my life. What is that like? How do you like conceptualize that in your head? Well, I mean, for me, the big picture was always like, I didn't kind of like randomly fall into it. It was like, I always wanted to make movies. Like that was the goal. And it was always like Hollywood movies. Um, but YouTube was a way to get there drastically faster. My my roommate this is like back in the day, 2010, 2009. He's like, YouTube's going to be the next big thing, Devin. I'm like, I don't know, really, but I'll give it a shot. Uploaded a couple of videos and all of a sudden people from all around the world were hiring me to do like commercials, like television commercials, like things I always dreamed of. And I was still a college student. So I actually ended up dropping out my last year just to pursue social media full time. Um, but the places it's taken me, like over 40 countries, um, I want to say roughly 200 brands we've had a chance to work with. Mm-hmm. We got to do a Super Bowl commercial and it was all through social media, all through YouTube. So just from creating stuff I love and putting it out there, other people saw that. It resonated with them and I had much bigger opportunities happen from that. Yeah, I love that. And I was watching actually previously before this, uh, your Sonic video through Uzbekistan, just running yep. through the streets. Like, how was that? Was that like, I would be so afraid of tripping and falling and ruining my camera, but like watching the BTS video of you like holding the camera and running with the parkour, like the whole crew, like walk us through that process there. Like, does it blow your mind that like, here I am in this foreign country I've never been to before filming a video that like people are like, millions of people are going to see. Yeah, no, I, I know for me, it's just like, okay, I love Sonic, for example, what you just mentioned. And like, we had an opportunity to go to Uzbekistan, like one of the most remote places that people don't know about. And they said, hey, we're big fans of your video. Like, this is like top leadership in the country. They're like, we'll fly you out to the country yeah, so and give cool. you full access to everything that you want. So we actually filmed while we were out there, like this is a, a, a lifetime opportunity. So we actually filmed a Sonic video. We filmed an Assassin's Creed video. We filmed a yes. Prince of Persia, which we haven't released yet. And yes. then a Tomb Raider meets Uncharted meets Indiana Jones. So we shot four videos out there just because we had full access to this like ancient country with so much really <laughs> rich history. So we kind of took advantage of it. I mean, take a moment to think about that real fast. Like YouTube creator making YouTube videos, you know, starting off as a creator. And now you're being invited by a country come to our country and film content like that just blows my mind to think about like the power that an individual and a camera can have um oh 100 you know people don't think about that like people like smaller creators often think like oh i have to have a million subscribers or like hey i have to have the best camera in the world but like honestly it's a person and a camera creating compelling content that people want to see and look at you now how far you've come you know being invited by a whole country to come film content there that's dope so well, when I, and when I first started, like I was a poor college student, so I didn't own any cameras. I was borrowing my friend's cameras. It was a Canon T2i and a Canon 5D. I was just borrowing everyone's cameras when I started my YouTube channel and going from literally zero to like a full, I'm, we're in our office right now. We own like eight different like high end cinema Hollywood style cameras. And it all happened from just borrowing friends cameras and, and doing what I love to do. So it's definitely been a wild ride and a fun one. Yeah, seriously. And actually to that point though, like, you know, looking at the small creator, let's say I have a hundred subscribers on YouTube, you know, what's that like big piece of advice you'd give them, you know, as they're working to create a career out of, you know, creating content? Yeah. So one of the first things I'd say is just create content that you're passionate about, but if you can also create content, that's also trendy that you're po- or that you care about. So for us, like Sonic the Hedgehog was coming out last week. So we did a video based on Sonic. I love Sonic. So it was really easy to, to do something like that. And a few weeks before that, we did a big Uncharted one because the film was coming out and I played all the Uncharted video games. So I was like, 
if you could connect things you love genuinely and also with trending topics or topics that will be trending, um, that definitely goes in your favor. Yeah. So like that, that interior, like that passion to want to do it. Um, and they love it. Like Contra, like I said, growing up, playing the game and, yep. and being a part of that. And I would echo that as well, too. You know, working through my career and having the opportunity to launch a AAA title, like that's exciting. I'm passionate about that. You know, like I yep. play Apex Legends. I want to uh -huh. help launch the game. You know, it's, it's a fun thing to do with that together, um, which is awesome. So thank you for sharing your perspective on that one. Um, yeah. You know, as a creator, like what does that mean to you to be part of this community? Like you're one of, you know, the select, you know, massive creators who've been around for a while. What does that mean to you to be part of this creator community? I didn't realize when I started how many people I looked up to had also watched my content. So as I've gone through the years, it's like all oh, these people that I super respected, then I found out that they love our type of content. So for me, that's been one of the most like exciting things is knowing whatever I'm creating, put your heart into it because there's a high chance someone else is going to see that and then they're going to want to work with you. So just creating content that you really respect, that you love, and just knowing that there's a high chance that someone else is going to see that, that you also look up to. So it's been really fun seeing, oh, this person that I really look up to now, I get to work with them, you know? Yeah. So. It's just, it's been really fun seeing that happen full circle. Like Freddie Wong, one of the original OG YouTubers, like I saw his content growing up throughout YouTube. And then I found out that he was following me on Twitter. So I sent him a message and said, hey, let's do a project together. And then we ended up doing a big collaboration um, together. So it's just been really fun and exciting kind of seeing stuff like that happen within the creator, creator world. Yeah, but I think a key point that you hit there though is like finding someone else who's equally as passionate in like a certain vertical. Like, you know, for you is like producing this highly produced, like really nice piece of content, you know, and then finding other people who have that same passion of working together, you know, you're creating a masterpiece that people haven't seen before, which is awesome. And I think one thing I've learned through that too, is even like at that time I had a very small following, but I was creating content that other people respected. So for a lot of like beginner creators, like just make sure whatever you're creating, you're really, really proud of it yeah. and put it out there because if someone else sees it that has 10 million subscribers or whatever that is, and they respect your work, there's a high chance that you're gonna be able to work with them one way or another. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, Casey Neistat, I remember watching one of his videos where he talks about perfect being the enemy of the good, being perfect being the enemy of the good. And I'm sure you have to come, come to this point often where you produce this piece of content and you're like, oh, we could tweak that or we can make that better. And like, where do you, how do you find like that? Hey, this is good enough. Where do you like, how do you draw that line to like, you produce this piece of content, like is good enough. You get it out there. Like, you know, all the flaws, you know, no one's asking you those to do this, but like, how do you overcome that, that like perfectionism when it comes to creating content? You never overcome it first off. Uh, I think for me, what forces you to release it is you just set a deadline and say, okay, this has to happen by here knowing that it will never be perfect because you always notice everything wrong with it um so for me like honestly when i started launching or really growing as a youtuber is i set a deadline at that time that i would release a video every two weeks no matter what no mm. excuses mm -hmm. so i did that for two years straight and that's when i saw the biggest growth on our youtube channel is when i was consistently releasing content um, so it was like, it wasn't perfect, but I set that goal that every other Tuesday I would be releasing a video no matter what. Yeah. At what point during that process, you're like, oh crap, I got to hire an editor or I need to hire someone else to shoot content with me. Like when did the scale start to happen? Um, I would say roughly around year two, year three. And it wasn't like, I'm saying I'm going to go hire someone. It was more like, I'm just working with my friends. And okay, this brand opportunity came, so now I have a bigger budget, so now I can start paying them. And then I start paying them based on whatever the situation was. And sometimes I have the money to do it, sometimes I don't. And it's like the people that help me when I don't have money, when I do have money, I make sure to get back to them those ways. A lot of, a lot of times it was like working with different musicians and different artists in, in that world where they're doing yeah. things for dirt cheap or for free. But then when other bigger opportunities came, I made sure to take care of them that way. Yeah, I love that. I love thinking about like the creator community in general, just like helping each other out and taking people underneath your wing. You know, like I said, you've been doing this for what? We said, like eight plus years, nine plus years. And it's like, what is this next up and coming creator that I can help that helps, you know, can be the next, the next Devin uh, yeah. for the next 10, 20 years, you know? And so um, that's awesome. I love that. And, you know, thinking about like finding inspiration for these videos, that's gotta be hard. Like we talked about trending topics, things you're passionate about. Yeah. Um, you know, when you hit that like writer's block, like, okay, what next? How do you overcome that as well too? And continue to find ways to find, make compelling content. Um, I think a couple different ways. I have essentially like a list. I actually have like a blackboard over there. If you can kind of see it right over there. It has yeah. all my big ideas of things of, that I love. 
Um, so example is on that list. I have Metal Gear Solid because I grew up loving Metal Gear Solid. So I'm always constantly thinking of like, okay, what would be cool to incorporate Metal Gear Solid into like a live action, whatever that is that I can still do on my budget. So I always have like these different video ideas that I'm always working to. So I was like, okay, a sponsor video just happened. I'll focus on that. But as soon as that's done, then we're focusing on Metal Gear Solid or whatever else I have to that list. Um, so I'm not sure if that fully answers that question. Yeah. Or that kind of something that's helped me is just having like a wish list of things that I'm always kind of shooting for long-term bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Um, are you going anywhere cool? Where are you traveling next? If you can let us know. Uh, nowhere actually. We're shooting everything locally for the next really? five weeks. We're filming, um, we're filming two big Lord of the Rings projects. Cool. So we're making it look like middle earth. Um, and we're filming two big zombie projects. We're doing actually a big project right now with Jurassic World Dominion with them. So we actually got a film with Bryce Dallas Howard um, in LA at Universal Pictures uh, last month. Um, so that one we're also working on this two weeks from now. Um, so we just have like these really exciting things, but we're actually all shooting locally right now, which is exciting for me because I have my wife and our son so I can be home a little bit more than, than normal and I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's actually a, a big topic that like I constantly think about is like, how do you find that balance? You know, as a fellow dad as well too, like it's a hard way to like, cool, I'm passionate about my job. I really care about it, but yeah. also like I'm a dad. I got to take care of my family. So how do you help find that balance for yourself as a creator? Yeah. Well, cause I, pre COVID, I was traveling four or five times a month, like somewhere else in the world, not like locally in the U S but other countries. So the way I made that work with my wife is I was taking her into all the cool places. Oh, we're going to the Bahamas and we're doing some Marines. My wife's down for that, you know? So it's like when it makes sense, I'll always take advantage of that and bring my wife. And then COVID happened and our son was born kind of during that time span. So now it was, it's this little bit different figure that out. But example is uh, two weeks from now, things are going to get crazy busy. So this week, tomorrow, we're actually going to be leaving for, for Vegas for a week just to have fun as a family. So it's kind of knowing, okay, we're going to have some downtime here. Let's take advantage of that as a family. But then we all know that after that for the next month, I'm going to be working really hard. Um, they won't see me and I won't see them as much. Yeah, that's a really important thing. That's one thing we actually talk about often as a company too, is just like, how do you help empower people to have balance? And balance looks different for everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, some people do that in sprints, some people do as more of a marathon. And it's cool that you found ways to incorporate what you love, especially when it comes to traveling and creating content and bringing the family along as well too. Uh, yep. Are we are we going to see a family vlog channel happen soon? That's what we're all No, about. hard pad. I'm not a vlogger. I tried that world and I'm not passionate about it. Yeah. Like it might, it's a lot easier for compared to us doing like a full scale hiring 40 people production, yeah. but I'm just not passionate about it. And I've tried it, but it just, it doesn't resonate with the audience. It doesn't re resonate with myself just because yeah. I'm not, I'm not passionate about it. So I love that though. But like the key point though is like, cool. Could I make money doing that? Yes. Is there an opportunity for that? Yes. But am I passionate? Do I want to do it? No. And so I and love that you have that self-awareness. Yeah, go ahead. One of the biggest things I've learned is whatever you create, people are going to expect you to keep on creating that one thing. So when I got into YouTube, I started doing extreme sport videos and that's all the audience wanted me to see. And every time I veered off doing something a little bit different, like a more narrative story driven, they got mad at me and the views would drop. So over the last five years, I have slowly transitioned to more storytelling. It still has like extreme sport elements in it. But I'm shifting to what I love to do now, what I was mostly excited about or drastically more excited about. So just that's a, a word of caution, whatever you do. So if I start doing vlogging, that's what the audience is going to expect me to do. And it's a lot harder to get out of that realm. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense too, because like you have your passion that you care about, but then your audience is also passionate about that as well too. And, you know, there's not always that overlap. So making sure that you're doing that in the correct way. So uh, I think that's a really good insight. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate yeah, it. And I've, I've talked to several like top YouTubers that have 10 million plus subscribers and they were like, I hate doing this and I want to do this. This is what I'm passionate about. But they said, I'm stuck in this niche. Yeah. And I won't say any names, but it just like made me sad because I was like, I got to do what I love to do. And it may not yeah. get as many views as these other people are getting their subscribers, but I'm much more passionate and excited to be working on these projects than just doing something that I'm personally not passionate about. Yeah. No, I love that. That's super important. And that's something to definitely think about too for myself and just for other YouTubers and creators watching this as well too. find that passion, stick with it because for better or worse, that might be your, might be your life for the next 10 to 20 years. So be okay with that. Yeah. Um, you know, with that passion and looking at the content that you're creating and knowing that like, you know, there's a lot of emerging platforms out there. And one of the ones that comes to mind thinking about like TikTok, you know, how have you found ways to take your content and also apply it to the platform in particular, because we all know that TikTok is very different than YouTube um, versus like Instagram reels, et cetera. So how do you find ways to make sure that your content 
translates across different platforms that makes sense and i would say it's definitely hard um for us like when facebook started becoming bigger we, we jumped on that facebook bandwagon and it actually became we were making more money off of that through like adsense mm -hmm. than youtube but then, then that shifted back to youtube and then TikTok kind of came around like you said so we started getting into that but the problem with our content is it keeps on getting banned because it's too dangerous oh yeah um, so our type of content really isn't favored at all with TikTok mm -hmm. type stuff um and i'm not passionate to just go out and do TikTok dances like that's not who i am sure um, so i've just kind of mostly avoided our TikTok page um we'll post stuff every so often but it's not really stuff we're passionate about so yeah. we could probably make it a lot bigger than what we're doing but i'm just not excited about it yeah well i think the meta point from this whole conversation in general is like is that passion you know yeah. where do you care and finding the where that passion makes sense as well too like hey i'm passionate about gaming because i grew up playing video games and i love that I'm passionate about creating movies and, and doing something extreme. So I'm going to do that. I'm passionate yeah. about creating stories and finding a platform that also aligns with that is also super important because you're right. Like YouTube and Facebook make a lot more sense for you and your audience versus, yeah. you know, the short form content that is being produced on those other ones as well too. Yeah. Cause I, I've always tried to stay away from short form content. Cause for me, it was always telling longer, bigger stories. So for me, it's like, does that really make sense? I could get more trendy, more hits, but it's not bigger picture stuff that I'm, I'm more serious and passionate about. Yeah, no, I love that. Thank you for sharing. And last question for you before we wrap this all up, you know, thinking about the last, what, what do you say? 17 years since the first YouTube video was created, looking how the industry has changed over the last, like I said, 17 years and how things have been up and down and crazy and different and having this kind of the wild, wild west, you know, looking into the next five years, where do you see the creator economy going? Where do you see yourself as a creator? Like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I feel the algorithm, everything is changing month to month. And I used to put so much time into that and all my energy where it was like making me really depressed. And so what I've kind of come to my mind of is, as far as I'm just going to create content that I'm excited about, whether it's five views or a million views, like I'm proud of that. Cool. at that point in my life and whatever happens happens and obviously i still got to pay the bills and i still got a lot of other things to worry about but as much as i can just create what i'm excited about i'm gonna keep on doing and what i've seen is, is the stuff that i'm passionate about generally over time not necessarily the first month the first year but over time that takes care of itself and provides much bigger opportunities yeah so following that passion for yourself looking at the next five years um, continue to do it. And I love that. And I think that brings us all together, you know, looking at this conversation as to you as a creator, you're passionate about it. You want to do it. Looking in the future, sticking true to who you are. You know, there's opportunity to jump on trends and, you know, incorporate those into your content, making sure that it makes sense. But you as a creator, like you care about what you care about and you're going to make it awesome. So yep. um, thank you for sharing. Any last words for any up and coming creators out there and for our, our inaugural, you know, creator day here? Yeah. So, I mean, I've talked a lot about passion, but the reality is, is like, even with my passion is that my passion does change over time. Like I do so many hundred videos of this, it does change. And I do evolve as a filmmaker, as a storyteller. My audience doesn't always like that. And that's okay because I personally am happier doing things as, as I shift and change and I evolve with time and, and space and all that. So it's just, is this, finding what you love to do. And you may not know what that is. So just a matter of doing a lot of different content. Like if you look at my first 10 videos, each of them is drastically different. One's based on video games. One's based on like nature. One's based on like a musician. So they're all different types of content. And I got to figure out my voice just by doing a lot of different things. Yeah. So even now I'll have like that midlife crisis where I'm like, am I really loving this type of content. So then I'll create a bunch of different types of things and I'm learning through that process. So just definitely just get out there. Even if it fails, create different types of things to find out what you really love to do. Yeah. I think that's key because it's that word passion is actually yeah. a very daunting word sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Cause like, what am I passionate about? I don't know. There's yeah. tons of different things, but I think you hit it perfectly. You know, try out different things, see what I care, see what the audience, see what the people like to see as well too. And, you know, focus on that. So yeah. Um, Devin, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your insights. We appreciate you being a founding, founding father of YouTube and helping, you know, other creators, uh, learn their voice and find what they're passionate about. And, you know, you're an instrumental part as to what the creator economy is today. And so thank you for being you absolutely, and making it happen. We appreciate thank it. Thank you guys. And until next time over and out, see you guys on YouTube. Peace out. See everybody later. Peace. Hello. So what a wonderful interview. And um, just in honor of such a great interview, I'm going to give away some more stuff. Um, so let's give away some prizes.
What what do we have? What do we have next to give away? All right, let's do a two buddy legend level license. If you've been here for a while, you know the drill. Put the word legend in the live chat. You can copy and paste it and put it in as many times as you want. And I'm going to pick one random winner. So copy and paste the word legend. Legend, legend, legend. I may be having a little bit of a lag because I'm actually not seeing. There we go. I'm seeing some legends come in. There we go. All right. All right. Keep it coming. I'm going to pick one soon. All right. Love Abora. Love Abora. You're going to win the legend level license. So congratulations to you. Um, there is a pinned comment. Uh, find that pinned comment. And there's a form there. Fill out that form and we'll get the legend level license over to you. So congratulations to you. Let's do um, let's do another giveaway. What else do we have to give away? Channel reviews. Okay, so um, put the word review in the live chat. You can copy and paste it. You can put it in as many times as you want. And I'm going to randomly pick a person um, that puts that word review in the live chat to win a channel review. I'm still seeing some legends. There we go. Now I'm seeing reviews. Silver money bag. Silver money bag, you are the winner of a channel review. Um, make sure that you find that pinned comment, fill out that form, and then we will get that uh, channel review over to you. Do we have, can we do one more giveaway? Let's see, what else, what else do we have here? All right. Well, it doesn't look like the slides are changing to me, but I'm going to give away one more, get one more channel review. So we're just going to do this again. So put that word review in the live chat, copy and paste it as many times as you want. And I'm going to pick another winner. All right. Let's see here. John limited edition, John limited edition. You are the winner of this channel review. Find that pinned comment, fill out that form and we'll get the information over to you. All right, so that is gonna wrap up the giveaway portion of this. Next up, we're gonna be talking all about NFTs. So NFT is kind of a hot topic for creators. There's a lot of confusion around NFTs. Um, so we're gonna speak with um, uh, a couple of people who are very knowledgeable about the space. This is gonna be a live kind of chat sort of uh, engagement here. So a lot of Q&A for this one. Um, so in the comments, um, put your questions in for NFTs. What questions do you have for our audience? So first up, let's bring in um, John Ushai. So let's bring in John Ushai as our first guest for this. Hey, John. Oh, I can't hear you. I think we may be having some audio issues. Well, while we're sorting out the audio issues, so John is actually one of the newest members of the TubeBuddy team. So John is the head creator advisor. So super excited to have you here. You're Thanks also you. a creator in residence at Origin, which is focused on NFTs. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Oh. And can you hear me now? Is my audio coming in? I can hear you now. Amazing. Yes. Cool. Glad all, to be here. good. So super excited to have you here. I just felt like this was a perfect session for you because you're a creator. You're also focused on NFTs um, and have joined the TubeBuddy team. So yeah. wonderful to have you here. So to be here. Um, we also have uh, Jay Spennett. Um, is uh, is Jace here as well? Can we bring him in? Yeah. Hey, what's up, um, <laughs> my guy? What's up, John? Good to see you, buddy. So, yeah. Jace, I know that you have uh, a couple of different yeah. YouTube channels. Um, I know a family vlogging channel with uh, over three point five million subscribers. You have a couple of other channels, and I have this sitting on my desk right here. Yes. So this is something that was that your company helped to build. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. So for those of you who don't know, so I actually ordered this before I got before I got one for free. But it's a switch pod. Um, just something that's really cool for um, for vloggers, um, not just for vloggers. Even if you want to just use it as kind of a stand on your desk, um, like a little tripod. But like super cool. Tons of user research went into this. Such a great product. Um, so it's so wonderful to have you here. Um, you're a creator. You know a lot about NFTs, uh, and you're making products for creators too. So wonderful to have Physical you here. Physical and digital. Let's do this. Yep. <laughs> awesome. 
Um, and then Daniel Patel is back to join us. He's going to be my yeah. co-host for a couple of the sessions um, through this afternoon. Thanks again for joining. Are you um, are you recovered from our spicy challenge? Oh my god! Like I <laughs> literally got laid out on my kitchen floor after we were done. I'm like, hey, I'm fine. It didn't hurt my, but then went right to my stomach, and I'm like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so I'm I'm okay now. But yeah, that was uh, that was a little tough. A little tough. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not I'm not afraid to cry in public. I'll tell you. <laughs> well, you did win going. the challenge. I, well, you know, winning is a relative term when it comes you're to You're a winner that. and a loser on this <laughs> you're one. Right, you're, you're Look what you won, right? Yeah, quick trip to the emergency room. That's fantastic. I love it. My thumbnails yeah. always do way better if I'm crying. So I'm, I'm all in for crying. <laughs> crying is all good with me. Yeah, I made every YouTube face possible. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah, there was the that was it was fun. I did not go as hard this this year as I did last year, just because uh, I'm, you know, on the live stream for a long time now. now that, was, and... that was a smart choice because DJ actually texted me afterwards. He's like, oh, my God, <laughs> like, you're right. I'm, I'm on the floor, like crying. He's like, yeah, my, my face is on fire. I'm like, yeah, my yep. stomach is so That's We're okay. This is what you call uh, what you get a commitment to the cause. That's right. So speaking of hot topics um let's dive into oh, nice transition that was good huh? thank you very awesome. good Renee. <laughs> um let's uh let's dive into nfts so as i mentioned nfts hot topic for creators but still a lot of confusion a lot of people just are not really sure first off what they are and then also how to use them and what it really means for creators so i have a, a couple of questions lined up but i really want this to be an interactive session um so for the live chat make sure that you're adding your questions about NFTs uh, in the live chat. And then we'll answer a lot of those questions as we go through this. Um, so my first question, just to kick things off, um, and John, I'll give this one to you. Yep. Can you tell us in a simple sentence, what is an NFT? Yep, it's, uh, it's investment and verification all in one. And I think that takes different forms if you are a creator, a brand, but ultimately it comes down to those two things and we could go way deeper, but you said to keep it simple. So I'll start there. That's the ni nice, simple sentence. Okay. Um, Jace, this is, well, this one's for you. Why should YouTube creators be interested in NFTs? <clears throat> so NFTs, I, I dove in for about two weeks and read, listened, watched anything I could. And I had called a buddy of mine, um, Leron, if any of you guys know him, he's a rock star. I called he's him in the chat said, right now, actually. Is he? Oh, no. Don't read it. <laughs> um, but Leron. I said, bro, these are just baseball cards. They're basketball cards. I've got two Michael Jordan cards from like 1989 that are still worth the same as I paid for them in the grocery store. So what's the big deal? And he said to me, no, 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 JC, you missed the point. It's about access because of the verification part that John yeah. mentioned, now there's access. You can have access to different things because of that verification written inside those NFTs or in the metadata. I don't want to go crazy. But so with that access, YouTubers could create or have created for them a token that gives people access to all these other things that they have. And it's a whole, it opens up so, so, so many things because of that access. Yep, well said. I'm glad I'm that you called out Leron. I'm staying there for now. We yeah, can yeah, keep yeah, on there's... going, but I'll, I'll stay there. No, for that's you. that's perfect. I'm glad you called out Leron because I, I see him in the chat right here. So that's <laughs> that was perfect. Um, all right. So next question for you, John, is so YouTube has recently um, released some NFT functionality for creators. Um, how do creators use this feature? Yeah, I think there's still a lot to learn. I try to think of it as the first, uh, 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 the second mover advantage, actually. Like, because I think there's a lot of creators who have gone into this space and, you know, kind of burned a lot of like brand equity that they've spent 10 years trying to build like in Web2. Um, and I think there's still a lot to learn. And I think the biggest like reference point I go back to is like a, a big piece of my childhood, which is Pokemon, you know? And I think about what if you could have Blast Toys, you know, Charizard, you know, uh, Squirtle as an NFT and could get those cards before the Pokemon Empire became movies, became TV shows, became trading cards, became video games. And I think if you're a creator trying to think about NFTs, there is this whole initial trend, which I'm curious to hear. 
Daniel and, and Jace's opinion on as well. Like, I want to turn a video into an NFT. And I don't know if that's going to pan out. I think it's really about what piece of IP do I want to create that uses NFT technology to almost become its own business or an extension of my brand or a merch line that I may already have that I want to elevate. And I think if you're a creator right now, there's still a lot of learning to be done. And um, there's something to be said about jumping right in, but I think it really has to be about setting up something that's an extension or a separate IP and then thinking about that as a company that could really grow and you use your content as a way to do that. So John, that's John like, let me ask you a question here. Yeah, Cause yeah, I, you know, is. this is one of, I, and I, I you're, you talk to me like a three-year-old, which is exactly how most of the people <laughs> in my life speak to me. Um, I'm a NFTs, three-year-old myself, so we, 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 have been, we're on the same level. <laughs> they've been really tricky for me to comprehend because, you know, like I, 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 in general, it's like, well, wait a minute. It's like, I understand the idea that, you know, it's a piece of the blockchain and it's, it's, you know, that, you know, it's a permanent, you know, section in there. And I, you know, I get all the, the ideas of what it is and that behind them, they can actually open up access to other things if used correctly. Cause I'm, I'm always trying to think like, well, how does this affect me as a creator? Cause I'm always looking at things from a creator standpoint. What, what would, if in the, in the simplest terms, yeah, give me an example that other creators out there who aren't, you know, who don't have communities of, you know, 10 million, how would an average creator right now think about using NFTs in a way that could uh, effectively move the needle forward for them? A great question. And Renee, you put together such a good panel because my answer is Jace's sweatshirt. He's wearing something that has <laughs> Adam Bomb Squad on it. And Jace, like you, you could definitely like go deeper and elaborate on this, but I believe because you also own an NFT of that logo and you get a royalty of any time that logo is used in merch. Yep. So think about like web two is like, okay, I'm going to sell merch with my logo, my channel name, whatever on it. Um, people may want to get it to say, I identify with that channel. I identify with that community. Web three is like, I own a piece of that community. And anytime that piece of merch gets sold, I get a royalty, however big or small that is. Um, so I know Jason and I were going back and forth on Twitter to be like, maybe I should buy one of these Adam Bomb Squad NFTs. But I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a great example of something a creator could try out and give a piece of ownership to their community um, as opposed to just unilaterally selling them merch. But um, it's a great question. Yeah, Jason, I'm curious to hear how that resonates with you. So I, I want to go back one little step and then get into this step. I yeah. think like in anything, if you serve first, right? Because everybody's talking about creators doing these money grabs and all these what I call web one movie stars that are diving into web three, launching an NFT and it falls flat on its face because they didn't go through web two, right? They were too cool to, to get into all the web two social media. Now they jump into web three and they're like, my name holds weight. And everyone's like, I won't do that. But you know. They, they say, you know, whatever. So I think one of the things creators could do better than anybody because of their communities, rather they're big or small, is serve first, give something first. So go to some of these companies and there's some that'll create these little cheap NFTs for you. And what you could do is, because you don't want to teach your community how to set up a Coinbase and then they have to have all their accounts and then how to transfer to their wallet and then their wallet to this. And, but what you could do is what if they created a token with one of these NFT companies, just a token, it's, it's, it might have rarity or some of the other kind of more pump and dumpy type stuff. But if they have that token just with your logo, super simple in their wallet, which you can teach them how to get a wallet, there's no money or no crypto being transacted, that token now gives them access to your whatever, back end of your website, something like that. Shopify is integrating already. Other places are integrating. And so if they have this free token that you gave them, they have an NFT. You're the coolest person in the world because you gave it to them. Now they have an NFT that gives them access to these different things. And then you can drop merch releases early to them first or other things like that. And that builds that community, then come out with rarities and other stuff and go buy a bunch yourself and learn how this crap works. <laughs> But then I think if you give first, that community will jump all over you. 
And then you can make some money off it and do that if you're even interested or if your people are even interested. If you airdrop it to everybody and nobody knows what to do with it, your community is not there yet. Don't worry yeah. about it. Don't spend any money on it. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I think that's really confusing to people in general, right? Because first of all, I think when any kind of technology or anything, any entity, anything, physical thing or otherwise is introduced, whether it be Bitcoin or whether you're trying to enter the stock market or whatever it is, where it's not a thing, it's a, it's a, it's, you know, it's an idea. You, you know, I, I think I, I own that. I think I own, I own pieces of, of companies and stock, but I, but I don't physically have anything, you know, the, other than a, you know, a, uh, a spreadsheet that says, well, they took my money and it says that I own pieces of it. So I'm, I'm always interested in better understanding the NFT in general, because I think one of the um, the, the sort of um, miscommunications is people think, oh, an NFT is just a little uh, JPEG image, as Lee Ram would say. That's an image, right? You get to buy like, it's like art. You buy it, it's art. But the difference between real art is like, well, when I, when I buy art, like I, you know, uh, Picasso spent years and years perfecting a skill and I actually have something that he produced and I own it. And this is not, I, I mean, I think that's one of those comparisons that drives me insane because it's not that. There is art associated because it's easy to go, let's put an image with it and, and, and label it as that, sort of the packaging. But can we talk more about the accessibility? So I, so I buy into this NFT. I have an, I'm, I'm a creator and I say, I'm gonna create an NFT. What kind of accessibility can we think about as creators uh, so that we could use an NFT effectively? Can we give access to other things other than just video content? It could, uh, what other things, what other applications are we looking forward to down the line when this actually gets rolled out in a way that it's more universally digestible? Yeah, and I, 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 can, I have an initial thought and then, um... Jason, I don't know, Renee, if you want to hop in, but I, um, and one thing you mentioned, Picasso, Daniel, I want, I want to say this because today's creator day and I want to like go back to the perspective of the creator. Think about this fact. Picasso does not make money off of the resale of, or his estate doesn't make money off of the resale of those pieces of artwork. He only made money off of the initial sale. Maybe they bought back and then resold. But another big benefit of NFTs for creators is the fact that you're getting and you set the royalty of the resale value. So every time an NFT gets resold from somebody you've never met from the initial sale, you're getting money back to your bank account because that appreciation and value still speaks to what you originally started. So um, I think there's something to be said there. And that's it's a really exciting piece of the technology that I think goes like um, just under the radar. And it's a big benefit to creators. But in terms of accessibility, to answer your question, I think Justin Khan is a great example. And he's one of those people that started by putting a few of his YouTube videos as NFTs. I think three or four of his YouTube videos on his channel, his first ones are NFTs that you could purchase on OpenSea. But to me, the real interesting benefit is that he has a monthly board meeting or advisor meeting with anybody who's bought their, his NFT. And I don't know if he still does it, but that was initially the promise. If you buy it, he'll meet with you, talk about where he's going to take his channel, get your input on ideas, and you feel a closer connection to somebody who you may have not otherwise got access to. So I think that's an interesting example and one that is sustainable because I've also seen people just promise the farm and say, I'm going to give you a FaceTime call every week. And that's not sustainable because you have to think about your content and your audience at large at the end of the day. So I thought about like the sales as well as accessibility to answer your question. I want to ask a question from the chat here. I see the in the live chat, there's a lot of questions around the investment for NFTs and how much it costs to get started. Um, so Mike Shaw TV is asking, what is the minimum investment to mint an NFT? Whatever that creator sets it as, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I've actually um, minted a few that were 29 cents. The, uh, the fee, I'll call it, it's called gas, but that was a little bit more expensive than the actual NFT that I got, but it was 29 cents because he said, hey, I don't wanna charge a lot, but here's what I'm gonna do. So it was, it was really cheap, but there's one that my friend bought today that was, I think it was 100, 115 Ethereum. So upwards of 300,000, and that wasn't minting though, but that was what he purchased one. So this access thing there, a guy started um, called Proof Collective. Have you been listening and watching a lot of this, John? I'm sure you have. I haven't heard of they, no, Proof Collective. New, okay, so Kevin Rose, he got into NFTs a long time ago, yeah, forgot Kevin, about yeah. it, 
Let It Go, started this collective, and then they just launched another one called Moonbirds. That it was a, yeah. It was a raffle to get in. It was 2.5 Ethereum. And now they're selling for hundreds of Ethereum a piece because people want access to this alpha group that knows all the things that are going on. So it's more of an investor play. Yeah. So a lot of VC money went into this NFT because they're like, well, these guys know what's going on. I need access. I'm going to pay... <laughs> way way more money than I'll see to get access to these guys and so that's almost what I did when I got into NFTs this this oh it's flipped <laughs> it's so weird this little bomb on my jacket there was what's called a whale group and that's when you own different NFTs will say okay well if you own this many in our discord discord connects with your wallet it can see how many you have in there and check once you have this amount it opens up new channels to you. So somebody else will go into this Discord and they're chatting and that's great, but I'll have 15 other channels in that same Discord that I have access to that they don't because of what's in my, my wallet. And so these guys are the ones that are saying, hey, here's what's going on with this one, here's what's going on this one. So I invested a ton. I bought 30 of these that got me into their group and now I know more than I would have ever known had I just gone yeah. into this and kind of poked around for a little while. So again, for me, it's the access to different stuff. And then Daniel, for yours, there are already, I've seen, and they're launching soon, these incredible meta worlds, suites, offices that I've played with on my laptop, but I've also put an Oculus in and I've gotten in a car and crazy stuff that what is in your wallet will allow you to push the elevator to different floors in the building. If you want to go to the party on the top floor and have your avatar hang out with all the other people <laughs> that bought the Gucci NFTs that are on their feet, it will that 13th floor, the unlucky floor will only show up if you have a certain token in your wallet. Right. And so I keep going to access. I just the real world yeah. type utility stuff, but that's kind of a digital world. But well, well, I that I kind of stuff is what I think that's kind of one of the confusing points for a lot of people in general, never mind creator space, is really trying to understand application of these things like i it's it's hard enough to think about them in terms of investment like wait a minute i'm putting how much money in i just you know i saw that you know jimmy kimmel spent and leron's just 000. gonna screenshot it leron's yeah, gonna like what again yeah, and i can just phone. copy right click copy save like th th is that it so i understand like fr from the point of view that uh, trying to understand what they are to begin with uh but then understanding application in 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 real in real world scenarios for, for people like me, right? I'm just a content creator on YouTube. Here I am trying to figure out a way that uh, I'm just trying to grow my brand. I'm trying to do things in, um, in a way that I stay proactive. You know, a lot of times when people, you start talking about, you know, Web 3.0 and they're like, I don't even know, what are you talking about? So trying to stay ahead of the curve of the way things are changing as, as the as the world we live in and the, and the platforms we exist on and the internet that we that we talk to each other on keeps um, changing i'm always interested to see how these uh, how these can be applicable can you do you, do you have any either one of you uh jace or john who would you who would you point to to say listen this is who we think is doing it right right now this is a great example of someone entering the nft world and using it creator or non-creator just anyone out there that you think is really uh bringing nfts to the forefront and effectively using them to move whatever their goals are forward whether that's brand wise creator wise or the thing that they're trying to produce i got one i don't know if jace you want to hop in first but i i i, I no go for it john go 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 yeah well one daniel i think your question is hitting at the heart of like one of my favorite like uh the things that I say when people talk about, is it web two? Is it web three? I think we're in web 2.5. I think we're in this middle period right now. 100%. That, that, that like, tell me the real world application, as you said. So you're, you're spot on with your question and where you're, where you're leading here Two, I mean, it's not a surprise, but like, I think the board API club like pioneered a lot of this. And like, there's a, like it, at NFT NYC, a big conference, there's a board ape like party that you can only get into with an NFT. Boom. Real world access there's that elevator that Jace was talking about, but on a yacht, you know, and you have to like, uh, and they would check and verify your NFT. Um, so I think that there's a lot of that, like getting access to alpha, you know, like you could, like, like Jay said, like that, you could say that's a, like, is that real world? Is that not? But like the results of it and the access that comes and builds from that um, are definitely real. But, uh, and then yeah, merch and discounts. Like I've seen people say, Hey, if you have our NFT, 
you have a 25% discount to our gear, to our merch that you buy, you know, with regular dollars and you're able to purchase in the real world. So I think like if you're a creator listening to this, um, maybe Web3 is overwhelming, but what's Web 2.5 mean for you and your community? I've, I've seen sort of an interesting trend recently um, where there's a lot of NFTs for events and conferences. Yeah. So Daniel, I know that you are at social media marketing world. And as part of that, you got an NFT. Um, I know that uh, Joe Polizzi started a conference specifically for creators um, within the creator. I think it's called the Creator Economy Expo. NFT is part of that. And then Gary V has another uh, conference that you can only purchase a ticket um, as an NFT. So I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on like NFTs within conferences. And do you think that's just sort of a trend or is that like a good strategy? I have a hot take. I'm talking too much though. Jace, you gotta, you gotta. <laughs> I want your hot take. You can't drop that and walk away. I, what's the hot take? I gotta know. I, I think NFTs for just conferences and events are completely overblown. And if that's the sole value of an NFT, it's not going to last. And here's why. A lot of the value of an NFT is like if somebody buys it from the person who originally bought it, they want to make sure that the value appreciates. If the event happened, the value is done, at least part of it, a portion of it, you know, like be friends. Like there's a lot of value that goes into that. You get to interact with Gary Vee. But I think I, I think I was reading the fine print or like like a lot of these things are the next three years of conferences up till 2023. Well, For what, some of them. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. And or, or there's a two they, they either time box it, which, you know, we haven't gotten to the point where these conferences run out that they promised their initial NFT holders. So they can either keep reselling and the secondary will be strong until then or who knows what will happen or they have to keep doing events into perpetuity, you know. And it's like, what does that mean for a conference holder or somebody as busy as Gary Vee or somebody who's like trying to build other parts of their business? So um, that's why I think like if it's a party at, an, at a conference and like maybe there's an initial like pump so people like buy it to get into the party and then afterwards it dips. But if it's a part of the roadmap in, or sorry, a central part of the roadmap, it kind of makes me worried. And it makes me skeptical um, unless there's other things around it or if they'll really dedicate to making it ongoing. But all right. So let me ask that. that. Let me ask that question to you, Jay. Jay. So if you're thinking about availability, accessibility, things that an NFT can do. So like John is saying here, do we think that the value of an NFT inherently is proportionate to the short term and long term access and availability options that it's giving to the investor and not just the specific resale or turnover value down the road? Or wh what are we looking at? Are those two separate things that we look at completely different depending on why you'd buy into an, an NFT to begin with? I'm putting the gloves on, John. You ready? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's it's a great thing. I bought I bought a V Friends Series 1 and it was very expensive. Uh, it's, my most ex it's my most expensive NFT that I bought. Um, it does only in that thinking get you access three times but what gary did recently is i got another nft for free airdropped into my account because of that one that i owned and so it can go as long as they want it to but i did have and i won't mention the event but i had an event give me an nft for every year i have attended for five years running and like John, I have a hard I I have a hard time thinking of what that's going to do for me, unless the world is going to become more and more token gated. I think, yeah. Um, token gating meaning the token in your wallet allows you access to what you want to do. And so there's a lot more stuff like mentioning like this. Gosh, I can't do this for <laughs> screen. Um, my atom bomb right here the website, there's token gates and whoever owns this in their wallet, you go in, you click connect wallet. It looks in real fast as, yep, you've got what we need. Here's all the epic deals for you. And so conferences, I mean, I ran conferences a long time ago. And so I can think of a million ways I would use it. And I think stacking them and having them in their wallet like that, you would give more access. But at the same time, I think it's just a fancy thing a lot of these events have come up with right now. I don't think they even know why they came up with them, but they're doing it so that they're new age. They're up with what's going on. 
One of the events recently that was mentioned, they sent me one. I could not get the thing to download. And I have hundreds of these and I still couldn't get theirs to work. And so I know they're doing it to stay on the edge, to stay hip and to stay there. I think they'll create something that none of us could come up with right now and they'll make a use for them. But right now, same thing. I, I know there's nobody going in for my ClickFunnels NFT wanting to buy it for more than whatever it was given to me for free for until something gets released that says anybody who has this gets access to the pool party with Tony Robbins. If you have more than three years stacked up in your wallet of NFTs from our events, you got to go to the pool party with Tony Robbins. Everyone with less than three years doesn't. My NFT is going to sell for $10,000 that minute. So depending on the, what we call in this space, alpha, the, the most recent information that would help that company, that group, that collective, whoever has it, I think that's what pushes a lot of this right now. That's why there's a lot of pump and dump. That's why there's a lot of people who yeah. have a really bad taste in their mouth because everybody goes in, they buy it, they wait to make 50 to 500 to 5,000 to $50,000 and then they dump it and they move on and they didn't actually know what that company was doing, what their community is about, what they're trying to prove, what they're trying to go ahead and do. And there's some really cool groups that are using NFTs I have three NFTs in my wallet that give me 12 nights each for each one that I own. Um, every year it resets and gives me 12 more nights in this group of their rental properties around the world. That's a cool application for it. That's right. um, so there's really cool actual real world, not just Web3, but real world applications that people are getting very creative on how they, how they do all this. But every time, gosh, <laughs> every time this little guy sells during the merch drop, I've gotten three was it three checks in the last month from different merch drops on the Adam bomb squad site or on the hundreds apparel site. This brand's been around since 2000. I knew about them from my skate company. So when they had launched an NFT, I was all about it. I already knew them. I understood. I have some swag from them from years ago. And now I get paid when other people, when I see people wearing somebody posted on Twitter today with one of these on their back and they're like headed to the plane. I was like, I got paid for that. <laughs> so, cool. uh, so let me ask you that jay so so uh, and again i always say uh, if i said talk to me like a three-year-old you can talk to me like a three and a half year old now because i'm learning as we go i'm, I'm progressing <laughs> um it, it is is a portion of this when we think about nfts a bit of 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 a crowdfunding or crowdsourcing element where the money you're paying into this this nft and now this these things are being produced and put out there and you're getting a piece back are we looking that as a crowd or is anybody using them as a as a crowdfunding thing where they say listen it's something that i want to produce and get out there people buy the nft it gives me the funds to get back in there and start producing the things i kind of want to do or is that too have i broken it down to a point where it's like now you're thinking too small no that's great that's it's it's Go fund me on steroids. It's, it's all of, I mean, so you can create your NFT. You do have to put that up front because you do have to have something to offer. So you can't, just like you'd have to come up with at least a napkin drawing to go to Kickstarter. Yeah. This, you'd actually have to create the system, create all that. And there's lots of companies that are actually doing a very good job right now um, at helping people create all this. I know there'll be a lot more, but once you launch it, I mean... Gosh, the last couple launches I've seen made 30, 30 something million dollars launching their NFT. Then they have that to go and do what they call a roadmap. So they'll have their white paper, their roadmap. This is the legal stuff, all this. The roadmap is what they're trying to get done. And so they're like, hey, if you guys buy this right now, we're going to the freaking moon. And so everybody buys it and everyone goes, wait a second, they're closer to getting to the moon. I want to buy it from that guy. And so then becomes all of the crazy momentum and all of that stuff, which those people do get their five, 10, whatever percent on every resale, which I know all the baseball and basketball players. When I was a kid, they didn't pitch their basketball cards. They didn't pitch any right. of those cards. They didn't make any money after it sold in Walmart or the gas station. Now they can launch it. They get paid every time. That Michael Jordan rookie card is going to make money again and again and again and again. Sorry, now I'm done. <laughs> so uh, we, awesome. we do have to wrap things up. But Daniel, I hope that you're taking notes because we've gotten multiple requests within the live chat for you to create an NFT for your hot sauce. Uh, so hey, maybe, oh, man. 
maybe you have some exclusive hot sauce that you can yeah. only get if you have a certain NFT. Right. I know. So right. I expect to see an NFT <laughs> from you sometime soon. <laughs> We're buying at the floor. We're getting in. <laughs> Ground yeah, I need that alpha before it launches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You Wonderful. Right <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. Um, we're going to say goodbye to the guests and then we're going to do some giveaways. So thanks again, guys. Thank you. Yeah, much, absolutely. Guys. Thank you. All right. well, well, I learned something there. You know, I, I think, I, Renee, I think the whole idea of NFTs in the modern world right now is something that sometimes the world moves so fast that simple-minded folks like me, I, it, I really have to apply myself to keep up and learn these things. Well, I think part of the reason that there's so much confusion around NFTs is because there's also a lot of information that is kind of conflicting and doesn't really make that much sense from people who don't actually know what's happening. And so, and then you have people who are just using NFTs for everything. This happens to be my conference ticket, or this is how you sell my merch. Like it's just being used for anything and everything. So it's just causing a lot of confusion. I, um, I'm interested to see where, where, where it goes in the future for creators like us, because it's uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, very exciting. And again, you need to come up with an NFT for your hot sauce. Don't know what that looks like, um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see that evolution there. So let's give away some stuff. Yeah, so, let's do that. Um, next up, we have we have Spreadshop. You know, I've been giving a lot of things away from Spreadshop. Let's see what um, what 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 can we give away right now? Let's see. Let's see what's on my list here. All right. Okay. So we're gonna give away a hundred dollar Spreadshop voucher. Nice. So um, we mentioned this before, but essentially um, with the $100 voucher, you're able to use that money towards your own spread shop. So if you haven't started a spread shop, start one um, and then create an NFT so that you can sell your merch. Through, <laughs> <laughs> through, Let's complicate the issue. <laughs> through that. Um, but essentially giving away that, uh, that $100 voucher. So in the live chat, write the word shop, write it in as many times as you can. And then Daniel, you're up for picking a winner. Sweet, yeah, let's get it in. Let's give him a second to write it in. Boy, you know, and if you're wondering how you can use a hundred dollar um, gift certificate to spread shop, like wh what do I do with that? Yeah, you know, creating your own spread shop account is absolutely free. So you can go in there, you can set it up, you can actually start designing shirts and build your whole shop for no money whatsoever. But one of the things we were talking about earlier is I like to actually use my spread shop to make the kind of merch that I'm going to use in my own live streams and in my own videos when I pull up my own mugs and it's got my logo on it or if I'm doing anything like that where I'm where I'm trying to promote something and move it forward if I have the ability to get in there and go wow I can actually use my own merch for things that I'm creating on the platform uh, it can be super helpful that way so a hundred dollars goes a long way on Spreadshop too because um, the the numbers when you're when you're actually buying stuff for your yourself you're not paying the upcharge so you can get in there and do all kinds of really cool stuff so right. who, I, I, do note. I have to pick someone? Is that what yeah. we're doing? You, you get to do the honor. So you're going to make right. someone's day. Do the honor picking one person who is putting in that word shop. Okay, I'm looking. I'm going to go with, let me see. Who do we have here? Uh, some of these ones. Oh, I'm seeing some recurring names that we saw earlier on. Let me go with, uh, let's see. Who's got something interesting going on? Uh, Magic Flying Potato with shop and a couple of shirts right there. I got to give it to Magic Flying Potato right off the bat. Love the name. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's amazing. All right. Magic Flying Potato. Find that pinned comment. Enter in your information into that form and we will get you the $100 voucher from Spreadshop. I want to give away one more thing from, from Spreadshop. We're going to give away a t-shirt. If we can go back to that last slide, I'm just going to do one, one more giveaway for Spreadshop. We're going to give away a Creator Day t-shirt. Nice. Same word, use the word shop, put it in as many times as you can. Um, and then Daniel is going to pick someone from this list as well for a creator oh, day shirt. Pressure's all on me. What if I pick the wrong person and they get mad at me? They're all right. There's <laughs> yeah, no wrong answer right. here. There's no You're just going to make someone's answer. day. You get to, you get to do the honors of making someone's right. day. Um, I like, I'm going off of what I'm seeing on screen here because I like when they refresh. I'm going to give it a minute here. Uh, let's see. I'll tell you the one that really jumps out at me and it's going to be, I'm going to go with alter monster gaming shop, 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 alter, alter, Mon alter monster gaming. Congratulations, my friend. Awesome. Congratulations. Make sure you find that pinned comment, put your information into that form 
um, and then we will get you the Creator Day shirt. So we're going to have a lot more giveaways uh, later on. We'll wrap up this piece of it because we, we do have a guest waiting in the background. Um, so we're going to bring out um, Alec, who's um, going to be having uh, a pretty interesting conversation with Nico. So Alec, I'm bring you out. Hi, welcome, welcome back. Thank you. I was going to say, Daniel, thanks for asking the hard question for everybody. I'm three years old. Explain this to me. I've asked that like for the last year. And so thanks for taking the hit for everyone on that one again. So. That's all right. I don't mind. I don't mind taking one for the team. Thank you. <laughs> well, with, all right, with no Alex. further ado, let's, let's jump into this good stuff. So a quick introduction with Nico before we bring her on. Uh, one of the most dynamic creators on the space. Uh, for the last few hours, I've actually spent a lot of time reviewing content, getting to know um, the type of content she makes. And honestly, it's across the board when it comes to gaming content, when it comes to food content, when it comes to working with trends and what's, you know, is trending on TikTok and other platforms as well, too. So excited to have Nico come join us. Um, and let's bring her onto the stage. Hello. Oh, my Welcome. God. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. I'm stoked to finally get the chance to talk together. Uh, I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about you from everyone I've talked to around your circle. So I'm stoked that we finally get the chance to uh, have a few minutes to chit chat. Oh, thank you. That was, that's really nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. Yes. Uh, I was going to say, so I tuned into the stream last night. Hot pot. I still have not had a hot pot yet. So if anyone's listening that we're friends with, we need to go get a hot pot one day. So I'm looking at a few people because it's on the list. And so. Yeah. Thank it's you. really good. <laughs> I love it. And here's the thing. I want to jump into like kind of your backstory as well, too. So if you don't mind giving a quick introduction with yourself, um, you know, how long you've been making content for, um, and we'll jump into some other, other questions as well, too. Uh, okay. Well, my name is Nicole, but I go by Nico Lull, and um, I've been making content since probably, like, I guess steadily since 2020, but before that, it was kind of like kind of my job not really like it was a very unstable thing that I was doing but but yeah but very very dedicatedly since 2020 um mm -hmm. and I do a lot of different types of content from food gaming and cosplay and anything that's trending on TikTok including also Spanish content so I stream I stream in English and in Spanish and do have three different platforms in almost every platform english spanish and spam alt account so like i, I do a lot <laughs> yes i was gonna say that's one of the like one of my favorite things about your content is like you found a way to have your english community your english audience but also like going over into spanish um is that hard to keep track sometimes because i'm sure the communities might be a little bit different like how is that for you yeah you're kind of like multitasking almost because there's different trends like uh, there's like some crossover but it's kind of like you know that um is it what is it called a venn diagram or something yeah. like the two circles it's yep. like the crossover is like barely touching like that and there's a, a, some similarities but it's two different worlds yeah. so um so yeah it is very hard you have to kind of like almost be on overdrive on what's trending what does good on one platform because it's not going to do well on the other one so it's two different worlds but yeah, yeah it is pretty complicated i'm still trying to get the hang of it myself <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna ask like how often does it happen where like there's a really big trend in like the spanish tiktok of the world but like non-existent on the english side like does that hop happen often for you yes because uh just like on tiktok that there's like um there's a uh, some uh for example maybe like a lip sync that's super popular in english it's just it's not applicable or even uh, popular at all in Spanish so some people try to make some kind of, but it, then it just doesn't do as well but yeah there's barely some crossover but but there's very popular trends that do not make it into the Spanish community at all I love it and I see there's like a big like need for that this day these days as well too when it comes to creators who are bilingual or just translating their content into other languages as well too because it is applicable and other languages do want to see it as well too so kudos to you for yeah. being a being a big pioneer when it comes to straddling both sides of that content so Way to oh go. yeah, they, believe it or not, I think Mr. Beast is doing a far better job than I am, considering he has vo famous voice people for his different voice, like his different yeah. language channels. He's doing a amazing, like he, it's incredible. But but yeah, I thank like, you. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see about 18, 18 million subscribers on his Spanish YouTube channel, and he doesn't even speak Spanish. And it's like, how does that? How does that even happen? So yeah. Um, it's <laughs> Um, let's jump into a few other good stuff. So looking at like, you know, your journey as a creator is one thing we want to talk about. We said back in 2020, really getting into it. Uh, you know, as you've gone through this journey over the last few years, what does it mean to you to be a creator? 
Um, it, it's almost entirely like my life. Um, ever since I was a kid, I was a very talkative and creative kind of kid. Like I remember making YouTube videos on like this old camera my parents had and I would upload them to YouTube and they were like skits and then I would delete them because I'll be like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Like, but, um, but yeah, it, it really, it's everything to me. I can't, I've, I've got, I've thought about like, imagine if this wasn't my job and I just can't imagine my life without being a content creator. It's just part of me. It's a passion. I would have yeah. to say. I love that you say that. And I I'm sure you probably haven't seen all of them, but that's like been a trend that I've seen with almost every single creator we've talked to today. Like passion is that key word. Uh, I was talking yeah. to Andre about that in typical gamer, just like having the passion to doing what you do every single day. Cause it fuels you to want to do it and continue to create content. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the core of your drive for sure. Yeah. You have to want to do it. Yeah. But here's my question for you. It's like, what happens when you hit that wall though? The wall of like, I don't want to make a video right now or I'm tired or I'm exhausted or like, I need a break. Like, how do you help motivate yourself to continue to have that passion to overcome that and continue to create content? Um, definitely a lot of people do suffer from burnout occasionally and either they take the proper steps to take some time off or... Um, you just got to find it in you. I think that's kind of like what sets people apart and what makes someone uh, either pave a road for success or like eventually fall out is, is that want and that drive. It's, I remember um, being in like college and having three jobs, right? I had like three jobs and I, I wanted to get up in the morning because I wanted to be like, okay, well, I need to get to streaming by the end of the day because I want to stream. And I somehow managed to get my butt out of bed in the morning, <laughs> go to school, go to my personal assisting job. After that, go to a retail job. And then after, go check in on some dogs because I would take care of dogs on my spare time as well. Yeah. And then by hopefully like 11 p.m. Pacific, I was streaming till three in the morning. That's crazy. How did you like, yeah. have the, like the, the energy to do that? That's exhausting. To even you know, that. I was a different kind of animal at that time. Like I really, I don't, because right now I'm fairly comfortable. Yeah. So back then I was just a different breed of person. Like, I don't know something in me. I was just like, I want this. Like, I want yeah. this out of everything I want. I like, I want this. So um, yeah, at the time, obviously I wasn't doing like, the like you know it's as a, i think that's a part of the journey of being a creator is figuring out what works yeah. and how to do things um yeah. which is what later took me like to tiktok and stuff so like it's it's a journey it's yeah. a, it, it's different for everyone to some degree yeah yeah well i was gonna say it's it's a lot of work too uh you know it's it's funny like i heard a study where like uh they were asking kids in middle school and high school like what they want to be when they grow up and like so many of them was like i want to be a content creator i want to be a youtuber yeah. And like, I don't think they realize that like how much work it takes to produce a video, to edit a video, to understand like what is trending, to understand the analytics, to understand like who to create content with and like how to move things forward. So like, it's not an easy job in the slightest no. bit. <laughs> so. No, it, it, you know, um, my, um, I come from a very like hard working class family. So physical labor is kind of like something my dad always was like, you need you know, you get you need, you need to get your butt up in the morning and blah, 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 blah. But something about content creation is that you you have to be super disciplined. Um, because it is easy to just be like, well, I can edit that later. You know, you don't have to like clock in. Um, and it's really mentally taxing, which is why yeah. we come about the burnout and, you know, the lack of passion or the, you know, your passion dies. It's very mentally taxing. It's a different kind of, of, of labor. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's entrepreneurial 100%. Like I have my hard drive sitting next to me with like vlog stuff that I haven't edited yet. Cause I'm just, I don't have the passion yet to edit it. And I get that, yeah. I need to, but like, it takes a lot of work and I, I get that. And one of the things I was going to say as well, too, I think having surrounding yourself with people who are also passionate about it is mm -hmm. super helpful. And so I was going to ask you, like, 100%. since joining 100 Thieves, how is like your desire and like your content style changed? Like, what does that look like for you? Um, well, after like after joining, joining 100 Thieves, I feel like I've I look at content creation through a different lens because before, like before I didn't have to um, I didn't have like anything to like really 
stop stop me i guess i don't know i word this properly okay so before like i didn't have rules right i could just yeah. do whatever i want like yeah. you know i could say f this f that like blah 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 blah. you know a lot of shock value kind of content but yeah. now i feel like after you do after like a major blow up or whatnot you really have to find those people that really truly want to watch your content yeah. so that's when you start discovering your niches yeah. uh for example for me cosplay um food um a lot of e-girl stuff and i think that's the kind of lens that 100 thieves helped me see not only like my manager but also like being part of an org because not only do i not only represent myself but i also represent my org yeah. so yeah. i have to be uh kind of like get myself by my bootstraps and be like a leader instead of just like you know e-girl you know you have to also be a pioneer and a leader and an example and that's kind of like how you end up finding that road that really suits you and really like it's it's your area of the internet you know that's that's you yeah i love that and i love that story too and like the hundred of these people looking at jack looking at valk like the, that crew they're awesome and they're mm -hmm. some of the best content creators out there. And I was actually watching your, uh, when I joined 100 Thieves video uh, right before we jumped on here. And it was cool to see like that dynamic and how well you fit into that as well too. So stoked to have you there and um, be a part of that crew as well too. So excited. Yeah, no, they're so, they're really amazing like role models. Like just looking at just each of their stories is just very inspiring. As you notice, like if you want to, if like you compare like my story, Ray's story, Courage, it's completely different stories, yeah. but there's this, you know, similarity of like consistently going at it and hard work and yeah. just finding what works for you. Yeah. Um, so it's very different, but very similar at the same time. Yeah, I love it. And I love that theme that you're talking about, because I think that's one thing that we forget, like you said, is that that hard work and that passion working towards it. Like you didn't just wake up one day and here's hundreds of thousands of followers. Like it took time to understand that. Right. Um, and, and, you know, growing that audience, like, what have you done to make sure that, like, you're staying on top of the latest trends? Like, how do you how do you find that next trend that's going to blow up? Or how do you find the next trend that's really going to make an impact? Um, well, it has, you, ha you got to start out with what's already working for you already. Because there could be, like, an insane trend that's going on at the moment that is literally not going to work for you. What kind of, like, blows up a video is start off from what you have and that, like, then that put it throws you into the algorithm and then that like gets spread out everywhere so yeah. it really you have to start off with what what you what you already have for, for example i guess like the biggest obvious example is like with the okay boomer video i did not have a political following but i did have people <laughs> that i guess like found me attractive and uh e-girly so yeah. that's the niche that i came off of and just that's kind of like the people the people that initially saw it liked it which pushed it to other people which pushed it to other people and then it's like this effect so you have to start off like that niche that really is already working for you yeah and what's cool though is like you've been able to show like past personality of like cool e-girl yes i did this video that went viral but also like i love cooking i love video yeah. game content i love doing this and like sharing your passions with your community and growing that community has been a really big part of it as well too so that's oh awesome. yeah, no, and yeah, absolutely. Just showing people what you love and also make putting it into a very entertaining perspective. Like, yeah. hey, this is what I love to do. And look, you, I can make this entertaining and then people watch. Yeah, is it a lot of work though to set up the camera in the kitchen or do you just leave it set up all the time? I think when I first started, there was like a, a lot of like technical stuff, but eventually, it, it next next you know it's like clockwork like uh, i already know what what angles to put it at the cables yeah. to use just i already have everything set up so at first it is a little difficult but later it's kind of like second nature yeah well but what's crazy to think about those like you as a content creator not only you're producing content but like you're the technical person as well too you're oftentimes the editor you're the writer you're the producer like you wear so many different hats and i don't think people get that like you don't just show up and your your stream setup is ready to go. Like you made that, you created that. You had to research and watch YouTube videos to like, how do I actually set up my stream? How do I connect my camera? How do I make these things work? And that's a lot. So yeah, kudos to you to work through that as well. Oh too. my god, yeah. I was actually I had a sponsorship not too long ago, um, and of course when you get a sponsorship, they're like, hey, uh, you we're leaving it up to you. And I'm like, great. I love that you left it up to me. Um, 
so I have to come up with the idea. I had to come yeah. up with the angles. I have yeah. to record it. And yeah. then I also had to edit the sponsorship. So then I had to look up, like, how do I export uh, Adobe um, 18, 8, 1080 by 1920 yeah. phone dimensions? And then, like, I just, I had to do that all myself. Yeah. And I think they liked it. So I haven't heard, I haven't heard anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much work, but that's awesome. That we've been able to figure that out. And like, same thing for me too. Like whenever, whenever I'm in Premiere is like, cool. How do I, how do I cut? How do I quickly edit? Or like how to do X, Y, and Z. I just feel like Google and like YouTube has really empowered you as a creator to, I have my phone. I know what I want to do. How do I edit? How do I work through this? How do I make this even better? Um, and it's just cool that like thinking about being a creator, like if you have a phone or just a camera, that's all you need. Just start making content. That is one thing. I think that's the, probably the best piece of advice I could give someone. One of the best pieces of advice that is very, that you could just get it and just run with it is that the best pieces of information you could get are free. Yeah. Everything is on the internet. Yeah. If you want to learn how to catch, how to catch trends, how to like, how to even start, it's on the internet. Um, a stream like this, it's free. Like, you yeah. you just could get all your best tips for free and it's just up to you to find your groove and like just run with it and go yeah yeah 100 uh and it just takes that power though that motivation like to google it and ask those questions and figure it out so 100 mm -hmm. um i know we're getting close to time so i have one last question for you yeah. do you like do you like being a content creator L i listen i love i love with every fiber of my being being a content creator but i guess with everything you know, I think, you know, there's some kind of saying, I don't know, I don't know, know it word by word, but it's like, you love something till it's like your job. Yeah. So there's this level of responsibility in my mind that I always, that I kind of have to unfortunately be at the, I think not just me, but like almost every content creator kind of at, at the mercy of what's going to work. So sometimes yeah. not initially something that I want to do, like an idea that I want to do, even though I know I will do well, it's not exactly what I want to do. Yeah. So, so sometimes you, you, it, you, unfortunately it is something I love to do, but it's, it's, it's still my job. Yeah. And that you have to find that balance of that love and hate, the love and hate that you find with it being your job. So yeah. passion, all that love, but I have to meet deadlines. I have to yeah. make sure things do well. I have to make sure that I'm hitting my analytics correctly. Like, so it's like this little clash, but yeah. at the end of the day, like I'm like what I mean, like that's what sets people apart is the people that want to keep at it and want to like roll with the punches or the people that are like, this is not what I want to do. So yeah. it's that at the end of the day, it's like that passion, that fire in you. Yeah. I asked that question because like, I want to humanize it a little bit more. Like you're a person. You're a person that like you have feelings, you have emotions, you have schedules, you have a life. Like there's so much going on. It's a lot of work to create content. And it's just like yeah. I said, it's not just happenstance that like, cool, this video that just did really well. Like you put a lot of work into it and a lot of thought into it. And like I want to humanize the experience when it comes to being a content creator that, yes, you are a person who has an audience, who has a community, who has a following. But you work your ass off every day to make sure that happens and making sure that you have a following that people care about. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's very much a, a mutual um, – with the audience and the content creator, it's very much a mutual, like, um, connection there. Like, I want to make things that you guys love, yeah. but also I am a human being. So sometimes I don't – I can't stream, I swear to God. I, it's not that I don't want to. Is that I'm literally going to faint if I <laughs> – if I that day. Like, I just can't. Yeah. Um but yeah, not there's people obviously that have all these teams behind them, but most often than not, I want to say like ninety percent of the oh, content creators that you know, yeah. they're doing everything themselves. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah, one hundred percent. And so, and I also love that like the community is getting better at like supporting mental health of creators. And like supporting creators balance as well too. Like, Hey guys, I need to take a break. And you know, like a few years ago, people like ripped them apart. Like, why do you guys have to take a break? Don't take a break. And like yeah. people were so rude about it, but now it's like, no, give them the time, let them come back, let them get refreshed. And like, when they come back, it's even better. Like, I think that's super important to continue to humanize the people on the screen. It's so easy to look a square in the box and like make yeah. fun of them or say rude words about them or make fun of how they look or how they speak. And 100%. that's just a terrible thing to do. Like think about the person and I often think like that's someone like son or daughter up there. And like, how would I feel if exactly. I was one of my kids speaking that way, you know? And so 
Right. Uh, humanizing that experience, I think, is super important. No, yeah. Uh, something that some people don't know that I think streamers in particular like very greatly appreciate is, um, for example, I went to Coachella and there was I was gone from Thursday all the way till uh, pro it was okay. I went to Coachella last week and I didn't stream till yesterday. So it was almost like seven days that I didn't stream and streamers have this thing where it's like streamers guilt. Like I'm missing out on like all this awesome content I can't be doing. So when we come back and you guys are there and you guys are supporting, it literally means the world. Like it means everything. Yeah. So that's what we mean. Like it's a mutual like relationship that yeah. it's, we are human beings and we do want to provide the best for our audiences. So even if we don't stream, it doesn't mean we don't love you. Trust me. Like <laughs> we're just trying to also live a life, but also yeah. like, you know, make content. So hundred percent. Listen, we'll leave it there. I think that's the best way to leave it when it comes to continue to humanize people and working through that. And Nico, thank you so much for sharing your story. And honestly, congratulations and kudos to your success and the hard work that you continue to put in day in and day out. And we really appreciate everything that you're doing for the industry and for, you know, when it comes to having both languages, different channels, different platforms, and just continue <laughs> to make it happen. So thank you. Thank you, Alec. I very much appreciate you having me. And also edit those videos, Alec. I'm pretty sure you're great. One you day. Edit the videos. <laughs> um, hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. <laughs> well, right, thank you. We'll chat later. See ya. Bye. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for attending Crater Day as well, too. It's been a blast. Um, I believe we're going to grab Renee. Let's, let's keep on doing some fun stuff. And I'm back. Great interview. Uh, love the hard hitting question there at the end. Like you went deep with, do you enjoy yeah. being a creator? I thought that was fantastic. Thank you. You know, I do think that a lot of people sort of glorify what it means to be a creator and feel like it's kind of an easy thing. Yeah. It is definitely not. It is yeah. not easy to be a creator and to do all of, you know, the things that kind of go into that. And so it is, uh, it's an important topic. Um, yeah. yeah, I know me personally, I actually have a mastermind that I attend every week and it kind of feels like creator therapy. And I feel like most yeah. creators could benefit from something like that, having a good supportive group um, outside of just the the community that they're that they're creating yeah. content for. Hundred percent. And I remember the first time I met like a creator that like I followed for years, and I met them in person, and we were doing an event together, and like I spent a whole weekend with them, and I'm like, "You're a person," and that like clicked in my head. It was like the most simple thing that like I didn't think about because like you put them on this pedestal, or you put a creator like, "Hey, they're this like glorified human being that like you look at," but when you get the chance to like sit down with them. And recognize that like they have feelings and emotions, they have schedules, like they have other things that are going on. I think that's one of the most important things that we often forget. Like it's not just a billboard or an ad that you're buying on social media. Like it is a person, it is a human being that has a lot of things going on. And so, um, yeah. So Nico, we really appreciate those insights there too. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm always a little surprised when I meet creators and they're like energetic. I'm like, how do you have so much energy after all of the things that you have to do, yeah. which is just amazing. Yeah. Or like right. vice versa. I was going to say too, like a lot of them are also very quiet in person. And the second that camera ticks, like turns on, like it's, it's, it's another person too. So both ways, totally agree with you. Yep, yep, absolutely. Well, let's, um, speaking of turning up the energy, let's give away some items. Um, let's do it. Alec, I think you have something yeah. special to give away. I do. So if for those of you who tuned in this morning, had an awesome stream with Stev uh, talking about building communities, talking about uh, his work managing talent, working with Dr. Disrespect, uh, shot me a text message about 30 minutes ago saying, hey, I got a few doc packages um, I would love to give away. So if you guys don't mind, I have two of them we can give away real fast. Um, so I guess in the chat, if we can drop what? Let's drop in the, drop in the chat doc. Um, if you drive Doc in the chat, we'll pick two people. And Renee, you put me on the spot the last time. So I'm going to put you on the spot this time to pick two people from here uh, to give away some, some Doc packages, too, if you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Put me on the spot. Okay, what's the word that they're dropping in? Doc. D-O-C or D-R is okay, too. Either one. All right. So first one is Hushy. Hushy. Hushy doing it today. That, was, that was the first one that I saw that said Doc. So yeah, that's the first one. Um, And then let's see. Well... This isn't a winner because he didn't say doc, but thank you so much for whoever uh, said that they were happy that I've recovered from the spicy challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, the second winner is Super Mario John. Dope. So for for both of you, um, Alec, sorry, what it, what is the best way for them to redeem the prize? Um, can they fill out the form as well too? We'll just go grab them and we'll, we'll make that happen. Is that all right? Yep, let's do it. So cool. make sure that you find that pinned comment 
There's a form in there. Fill out the form and then we'll get your prizes over to you. Dope. Wonderful. All right, let's move on to the next prize. All right, so we're giving away some more two buddy legend level licenses. So for this one, um, again, go ahead and put the word legend in the live chat. You can copy and paste it as many times as you want. And uh, I'm throwing this one back to Alec. Alec, you get to pick the winner for this one. Oh, man. Okay, one of them? One. We're let's, doing one this time. Let's see. Well, let's go with, let's go with Scar TV. I like it. All right, congratulations. Congratulations to you. Make sure that you find that pinned comment. Enter your form. Enter the information into the form. Very important so that we can get that uh, legend level license over to you. Um, and I think we have another giveaway. Channel review. So we're giving away another channel review. Um, put the word review in the live chat. You can copy and paste it as many times as you want. So you have more opportunities to get in front of Alec over here. Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. I'm, see I'm still seeing some docs and some legends. I know. Enter, the <laughs> enter the word review. There we go. Review as many times as possible. All right. Picking this next one. Stanley Orchard. Oh, let's let's pick another one for this. Love Stanley, but he's actually oh. one of our he's he's on our team. So let's uh, Please, Stanley, get out of here, Stanley. Come he doesn't on. Doesn't need a free channel review. <laughs> let's, give it, let's give it to the next. Uh, one. Let's go with Gabriel Grassmeyer. Nice try, Stanley. Um, <laughs> congratulations to uh, to the winner here again. Make sure you find that pinned comment. Enter your information into that form, and we will get that over to you. Um, all right. So I think we're going to bring on Daniel and we're going to play a game with the audience. So thank you, Alex. That was a wonderful interview. And thank, thank you for uh, being a good sport about being in the hot spot and, and picking a couple winners for us. Yeah, no worries. And I think we have a few seconds. I think Daniel is, is on his way over here. Yeah. Um, I, I so actually, Renee, I have a question for you real fast. What Let's was like, your, what was your big takeaway from today so far? Seven hours in. Yeah, well, my big takeaway is to sleep a little bit better the night before. Um, but it really is around community. Like community has just come up so many times. Um, I know we talked a, a little bit more about this uh, earlier, but you know, I am just I'm I'm inspired by our community. I'm impressed by our community. Um, I've seen a lot of the same people over and over in the chat, which is great. This is a long live stream, which is wonderful, and we're here to celebrate creators. But the fact that we've had so many people stick around for so long is just so wonderful. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm feeling pretty inspired by our community. Yeah, likewise. Um, yeah, what what is it? What does it take away for you? You know, defining the word community though, like I've really just been like I, I I get into this word like this mode sometimes, or like I introspectively think about words and like because we use them so often, but like taking a moment back and like what does that word actually mean? And I think just like defining that word community, like having a group of people who are passionate, who like something, who can come together and talk. Uh, I think that's so freaking important. And that's been like really the biggest takeaway for me, having the chance to talk to Devin, talking to Andre, talking to Nico, you know, talking to Steph and all the different people we've talked to today is like finding something that you're passionate about, find that niche and sharing it with other people has been really, really important. So um, I think the same, I, I'm sorry if I take the same one with you that as well, but like working through that community, defining really what that is. And so. Well, it's so important that I think it's okay for it to be both of our answers. Yes. You know, I think in terms of community, the first time that I've like really fin felt like a sense of community is going to video conferences over and over. And I kind of see a lot of the same creators there. And then outside of those conferences, we connected virtually. Uh, sometimes yeah. it works the other way around. Like I've connected yeah. with people virtually and then I, I see them uh, at a conference, but I would see a lot of those people and it just kind of felt like we connected. Like I found my tribe, yeah. um, which is something pretty amazing. Uh, speaking of finding my tribe. Welcome hey, back. Daniel. Welcome back. <laughs> What's going on folks? Yeah, man, this has been such a fun day so far, huh? I mean, outside of the fact that I was crying in the bathroom floor for a while after the hot sauce <laughs> challenge and the hot peanut challenge. I mean, other than that, it's been fantastic. I, have hey, I, I blame you on that one. It's, I did. No. <laughs> I, I may have, I may have pointed the roadmap in that direction. I may have turned the <laughs> compass in the wrong place. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> All right. So All where right. are we at? Well, we're going to play some games. Sure. Um, Alec, it's up to you if you want to stick around and play some games or if you want to. Yeah, I'll chill with you guys for a second. Happy to do so. Let's do it. 
All right. Um, we have some, let's see, YouTube trivia that we're going to do uh, with the live audience here. Nice. All right. Let me let me pull up the directions. They're all very similar, but just a little bit different. Okay. Um, for this round, every winner gets a Creator Day shirt. Uh, so let me see if I can show it to you again. I am wearing a Creator Day shirt. Um, so you, you will win a Creator Day uh, t-shirt as part of this. Um, and remember, if you win, again, I know I've been saying this a lot, but very important so that we can get you your prize. Find the pinned comment and enter that information into the form if you are a winner. Um, so all of the questions are going to be themed around uh, YouTube uh, trends. So be sure to put the letter in the chat. Make mm. sure both the letter and the, and the answer so that we know it's for the right question. Sure. Um, and then we're randomly going to pick a winner as we go. All right. So I'll just, uh, I'll say the, um, the question for this one. And then Daniel, you get to pick the winner for this one. So uh, well, what, 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 is it random? Like I just get to choose like today it's going to be FIFA. <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow no, it's going to be NFL. You, you I, I'm thinking there's an actual answer. Not because I get to make it up the on the fly. Answer. You get right. to pick the winner. Oh, so okay. the winner. Okay. The, the spiciness is getting to your head or mine. I'm not <laughs> sure long, which. Actually. I'm here for you. Long, I'm here for both of you right Maybe now. both of us. It's <laughs> been a long day and my <laughs> intestines are definitely. So I'm going I'm to ask the question. And then in the in the live chat, live chat is going to pick the letter that corresponds okay. to the right answer. Sure. And then Daniel, you are going to pick um, someone from the live chat that got the answer correct. All right. I got it. You got it? I'm you in. Sure? Yeah. All right. Okay, so which sports-related channel has the most subscribers? A, NFL, B, NBA, C, WWE, D, FIFA. I'll just continue that route. So we'll give it a couple minutes. Put in your answers. Yeah, drop them in there. We'll give you a minute because I'm going to pick randomly. Got to give a shout-out to Katie Kiss's mom. Good to see you watching. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I, we have enough time. Coming in. This one. I got two thoughts on this one. I'm excited to see what the answer is. I, I, I know think, I know nothing I about I, sports. I don't know this one. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know a lot about sports, but I do know a bit about um, about YouTube, and I think I know the answer here. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that one. I think we're on the same wavelength. So let's mm. see if uh, – let's see, let's see what happens. Don't, right, do, don't, wait, wait a minute. Don't, wait. Renee – when you call, when you pull the plug and you say you're done, let let us guess what we think the answer is to which one has the most subscribers. Okay, so we're done. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, say your answer before. We I do think it's WWE. Ooh, I think it's FIFA. Just I'm just FIFA gonna say so I think good. it's NFL. Mm, no, FIFA's so NBA. global though. I'm gonna go with D on this one. So let's see what happens. Although, okay, don't listen to me. I don't. I don't have any idea. Let's see what is what is the winner here. No, oh, come on. All right. I'll give it <clears throat> Daniel, you can't pick yourself as the winner, though. You, know, you got to pick someone from the live audience. It's not my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> I do pay attention. WWE has been a, a strong contender on the YouTube platform mm -hmm. and done really great things. Um, let's see. I, okay, so no way. Let me see. Let me see. I, I'm trying to scroll. I'm, I'm looking on two computers here. Um, Just pick one computer and one winner. I know I'm trying. Black. I'm gonna go with loves loves reacts L U V apostrophe S reacts. Uh, who said WWE? That's a that was it 100. percent And uh, I love that answer. So we're gonna go with love reacts. Awesome. All right. Congratulations. Make sure you're finding that pinned comment. Fill out that form. All right. Let's go to the next one. Um, Alec, do you want to do uh, the honors and kind of read this one out? Yeah. So which kids content channel has the most subscribers? Ooh. A, Coco Melon, B, CB's, uh, C, Sesame Street, or D, Ryan's World? Wow. Tough one. Uh, you keep on pitting me between two of them. All right. Rock, paper, scissors? <sighs> yeah, you ready? Okay. All right. Now, whoever wins... All right, rock, paper, scissors, and then whoever wins yells out what they think it is. You ready? All right, yeah. Once, twice, three. Oh, we went to say, okay, you ready? Once, twice, three. Come on. What, what, oh, what come is... on. Now. Once, <laughs> twice, I'm three. I'm going to yell out an answer since I'm not playing right, rock. Take it, take it, take it. I, I think, think 
<laughs> as huge as Ryan's world is, I think it's Coco Melon. I think it's Coco Melon. I, I was between the two. All right. Which we're all okay. Uh, Alex, do you want to pick a winner for this yep. one? Yep. Is it? Who, uh, what was the answer? Was the answer? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see the answer. All right, oh we already knew the answer. All right. Uh, Cloud Gaming Dad. Let's send it over there. Yeah. You were much really? faster at that than I was. I get I get all into it. I'm like, I'm reading the do. names. But I'm I saw analyzing. dad. I'm like, mm, probably has kids. So good. Kokomel, that's a good win right there. So. Yeah, if it's, <laughs> it's in theme. All right. Oh, well, yeah. congratulations. Find that pinned comment. Fill out that form. Wow. Right. In the last 30 days, how many video views did the Oscars generate on YouTube? Now, listen, <laughs> we're factoring in. There was some man-on-man -man comedian violence involved, oh. so this may be higher than it has been in previous years. But this only happened. I've not been following, so. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you may have missed it. It was only it. sky written across your entire universe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was in shock. I yeah. was like, yeah, you were all that shocked. Was, that was craziness. Yeah. Yeah. He left some fresh prints. Oh, come on. <laughs> Not right now. We're seven hours into this and you can't be pulling that stuff. Come on. <laughs> can't be pulling dad jokes this late into it. Come on now. All, All right. right. Are you ready for the reveal? Wait, no, we'll get a guess. All right. I, I, and the count of three, I want you guys to yell out what you think the what the answer is. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, C. three point three million. B. I think C. Oh. I'm gonna say C, yeah. What? Get out of town. No, get out. Okay, someone's got to fact check this one. I'm going back. I don't believe that. That is crazy. We, we have a pretty good fact checker for this. Oh, my goodness. She may well, have been up really late uh, putting this together, but I'm confident in her ability. I, uh, right. I don't want to say that violence gets views, but I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to lay that out there for consideration. Like, I knew it wasn't A. No, no way it was B. See, I'm like, I can handle that. What do you that, mean, no like, way it was B? Come on, you don't know. 3.3, I mean, that's not that much. 3.3 .3 is like a casual video, like a casual, like, big creator video. Like, this is You and me need to get together and build a casual video together, my friend. I'll <laughs> well, tell you that right now. Anytime you're ready. Quick. Sorry pick to interrupt, guys. I want to pick, pick a winner, winner before it goes away. Go. Chris, an average guy making money, I think is what it says. Sweet. You are the winner for this one. So Congratulations. go over to that pinned comment, fill out that form. Love and we'll get you your Creator Day t-shirt. Man. All right. Do we have What's another? next? The last... oh, you want me to get All it? Right. I'll get it. In the last okay. 90 days, the most viewed food slash drink video was about A, chocolate, mm -hmm. B, cocktails, C, roast chicken, and D, coffee. Oh. I have my answer locked in. <laughs> Are you locked in? How many... <laughs> I, I've got my answer locked in, too, only based on personal preference. <laughs> Oh, I know. I know what you're picking. Yeah. yeah. Do you? I think so. <laughs> but I have mine locked in based on personal preference also. Look at you with your two buddy cup. All right. You do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's. All right. Let's see. What are we? What are we guessing here? Let, the count of three. Let's all say what our guesses are. Three, two, one. D. D. Coffee. D. I, yeah, I think. Coffee. All right. All right. All right. That, Daniel, that's not what I thought you were going to pick. I know. Yeah, I not my personal talking. preference would have been, you know, whiskey, but. Yeah, you showed the Peter McKinnon whiskey <laughs> cup earlier, yeah. and I've I got, like, forgot. coffee cups all over the place here. <laughs> I know. But, it, it, you know, I, I like to. Oh, chocolate. chocolate! Get it out of here. Are you serious? What happened? Man. Was that hot chocolate? What, 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 cho oh, it's food. Oh, food or drink. Did we miss something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we were all thinking drink, and it was food mm -hmm. drink. So yeah, I was thinking like hot chocolate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, who's all right, let's uh, let's pick a winner here. So yeah. these are these are going quickly, but I see Dizzy D. Dizzy D got this correct. Sweet. Um, chocolate, and it in parentheses it says Easter eggs. But you know what? Oh. We'll take it. You know what? That's really I smart. It. It's a great because Easter was just here, food and drink. Oh, man, you know, sometimes sometimes people are smarter than we are. I mean, most of the time. Some, some time. Yeah, I was trying to give us a little credit, but <laughs> every once in a while that comes up. <laughs> All right. Well, for the winner, congratulations again. Make sure you yeah. find that pinned comment, fill out that form. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Um, I'll do this one. Okay. So, according to a report by YouTube, there were over blank views of mask making tutorials in 2020. A, 1 million. B, 5 million. C, 1 billion. D, Five billion. What kind of masks are people making? Are we talking like about physical? Twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty. I understand. 
What was going masks. on in 2020? I mean, uh, like we had, we did have an election cycle. What were, what kind of masks? I can't take you seriously right now. No, like mud masks. What are we talking about here? <laughs> I can't. A, a spicy, the spicy peanuts you guys are eating. Oh. Do you get your? Do you have your answers locked in? Uh-huh. Do you want to guess? Locked and loaded. Um, I don't actually. Hang on. All right, I got my answer locked in. Alec, you got yours. Yep. 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 All right. On the count of three. One, two. Three. D. One billion. Ooh. Alec, what was yours? I missed it. I said it. D. Five billion. I said oh. D as well. Okay, I said C. All right, let's 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 do the reveal. What? Look at yeah. you. Sometimes Whoever I wrote these questions, uh, I think Renee has the answers ahead of time, so I think Daniel... And I, I actually don't. Yeah. I'm just honest. saying that someone may be wearing more masks than the rest of us when it comes to the <laughs> That may be true. World. That may be yeah. true. Yeah. See, my <laughs> rationale, though, is like if the, if the Oscars can get over 1.9, like there's right. no way. It's got to be over that number for 2020. But People making yeah, but, masks. But they're they're making their own masks as opposed to just buying them. So it's like a specific niche also. But it's still, that's a lot of views, though. It's a lot of views. Yeah, that is a lot. All right, let's pick a winner. Okay. Um, all right, so C is our winner. Yep. C, C, C. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Grasshopper Coding for Beginners. I would have picked the same one. That was a great choice. Great Perfect. channel name. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Find that pinned comment, fill out that form, and we'll get you a Creator Day t-shirt. Yes. Awesome. All right. So that wraps up the game component of it. Um, Next up, actually, I'm super excited to introduce uh, the next segment here. Let me uh, let me just kind of pull this up real quick. Bear with me for just a sec so I don't give you the wrong information. Um, So this next one is for um, Mr. Beast. So uh, Ricky Ray Butler. Wait, Mr. Who? Huh? Who? (laughs) Just a little YouTuber. Say the name again. Mr. Beast. Not ringing a bell. <laughs> Mr. Beast. Mr. Mr. Beast. Beast. You say he's a YouTuber. Uh, he is just, you know, he's a creator. Okay. You know, I, out for the, the I, I will keep a young, uh, an eye out for the young upstart called Mr. Beast and see how he does. I happen to know that on Daniel's Instagram, there may be a picture of these people together. I may have been stalking that Stop right before it. this. Yeah. So I did have the pleasure of taking Plug in your uh, Instagram real fast right there. I got well, you. Quick Mr. Beast story. When I, I spoke at Vid Summit last year, and of course, Mr. Beast was speaking there too. But because of COVID restrictions, you have to, before you can even get into the, the event, they make you have to go in and test to make sure that you are COVID compliant and that you aren't. Uh, a co- COVID positive, and I, t- I, I did the thing. They stuck a thing up my nose, and they did the thing, and I sat in the room, and I'm sitting there waiting, and I look over, and I go, oh, there's Jimmy right there, the two of us sitting together in the in the Vid Summit room waiting for our test results. Would have been, let me just say that I'm guessing if he had tested positive, it would have been different than if I had tested positive because I'm, <laughs> they were looking for a reason to throw me out. I'm just, I'm just saying, potentially. They were looking for a reason to throw you out. You were. You're looking for a reason a... to throw me out right now. I, I guarantee those <laughs> I guys. The moment, lower but bar. Lower I invited bar. you to the panel session at Vid Summit, which was great. You did which a was fantastic, fantastic job. I so. did sit on your lap. It was almost problematic <laughs> at one point. You know, I'm so small. It's easy to miss me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to the thing we're doing. What are we doing uh, right now? All right. Well, without further ado, so um, I am thrilled to uh, introduce the next guest. So. Um, Ricky Ray Butler, our CEO here at Branded Entertainment Network, that's the parent company of TubeBuddy. He actually had a chance to sit down with Mr. Beast for an interview. Um, Mr. Beast is actually in the process of uh, producing a video right now, so he couldn't be here live, but he really wanted to take in the celebration with everyone and to celebrate all creators, super passionate about Creator Day. Um, So we're going to play an exclusive uh, interview between Ricky Ray Butler and uh, Mr. Beast. After the interview, if you are interested in hearing more um, from their interview together, there's some additional segments on the Creative Disruption channel. So we'll put a link in the live chat um, so that you have access to that. So stay here, see the exclusive interview, and then if you want to hear more, uh, you can go over uh, to that uh, to that session. So without further ado, let's air the interview. Do it. Roll it. Right now, as, as, as this um, episode streams and is going to... be streaming for Creator Day on on the TubeBuddy channel as well. You know, we've seen a huge amount of growth on TubeBuddy where when we first acquired TubeBuddy, there there was a a little over 5 million users and now there's over 10 million users. 
in just a year and a half wow. years. Um, a lot of these creators are starting to just start their careers. I'm, I'm assuming some are going to be growing up on YouTube like you did, um, yep. um, you know, with, with your career as a creator. Um, what advice would you give yourself, let's say, seven years ago when you were starting out that could potentially help for these millions of um, you're gonna have to guide me in a direction because I could I could give infinite advice is the answer. Um, I mean, I don't even know. Well, what are I like the top two that. things that just come to mind that you wish you would have known seven years? ago? Your videos suck. You think your videos are good, but they suck. <laughs> you know, they just do. Um, and the sooner you learn how to make good, great videos that people actually want to watch, the sooner you'll get views. Um, I think is the biggest takeaway because like. When I was 14, I thought my videos were the best in the world. They weren't. They're terrible. Many people are making way better videos than me, but I didn't think that. And I think, you know, to be successful, you kind of have a, have to have a little bit of that ego where you're like, you know, my content's great and you got to believe in it. But also, like, if you have sub a thousand subscribers, like, there's a good probability your videos just suck. They just do. And you need to make hundreds of videos or a hundred videos. I don't know. It depends on the difficulty of your videos. Improve something every time and just like get to the point where they don't. Because, like, I, I very rarely like see someone, sorry, there's a fly in here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's like making great level videos consistently time and time again, year in, year out. Um, and they don't take off. Like it's very rare. Like usually, I don't know, like the videos are just boring or the ideas are repetitive or it's something we've seen before. But like, I don't know, like name one person who's doing original ideas, giving it his all. Like they're very well edited, great story, great retention, great pacing you know, boom, 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 consistently week after week for two years that didn't blow up. Like, I don't know, in my opinion, it's pretty hard to find, you know? Um, and so just that, you know, like when you make the, when you make good content, you'll blow up. It's, you, it's not the algorithm. It's not anything. It's just like most me and most people who are in my position, you just make terrible videos. And that's, that's okay because you got to make a bunch of videos and improve over time to be great. Like you don't just pick up a baseball and become an MLB level uh, athlete within a year you know it takes many 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 years and youtube's kind of the same way unless you're just like someone like emma chamberlain or or liza or these other people that just have phenomenal personalities and like then it's a little bit easier but for those of us who don't have the best personalities <laughs> <laughs> it takes I a while to develop that. that stuff yeah no and, and so i guess you know my my, my question um for you you know so the the, the process will be refined over time um, as you keep optimizing and, 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 you know, getting more and more aware of like, you know, how, how things must improve. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing, you know, when, when you look at data, like how, how does, you know, looking at the data come into all of this? Like, is there of course. any personal advice that you have? Wouldn't be a Ricky talk if data wasn't brought up. Um, <laughs> this guy's the biggest YouTube data nerd I've ever met. Um, so like, how am I using it to make educated decisions? Yeah. Um, honestly, I upload a video, I check the retention. I'm like, okay, how could I have done this better? And then I'm like, all right, it's the thumbnail as good as possible. Check the CTR. And besides that, that's mostly, it. I mean, you can go infinitely more in depth, but you know, for me, that's, those are really the only two things that this fly won't go away. I, I, oh, I got it. Um, I need to just determine whether or not a video is good. It's like, did people click it and did they watch it? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and but like when it comes to retention, um, that's obviously really important because I mean oh, that, gosh. So that's where you get. Are I mean, you gonna open the can of worms? How can you get better retention? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, that's where I don't know, man. You, I could tell you a million things. You can go down. Uh, there's another fly, apparently. Uh, infinite rabbit holes. Um. I mean, you know, the everyone knows the basics. You hook people at the beginning, but I, we really should drill this home because, like, if you look at any of your retention charts on any videos, you're losing like 30% of your viewers in the first 30 seconds. And then hopefully, if your videos don't suck, they level off. But, like, imagine if you only lost 15% of those viewers or 10%, you know, like the doing the number one thing is like retaining as many people as possible at the start. Because, like, envision a chart where you lose 35% of your viewers in the first 30 seconds, and then a vision one where you only lose 20%. That's 15% more people that are watching, you know, throughout the video than not. And it's not like you made the whole video like uh, a bunch better. You just had a more strategic intro that hooked them. I'm, I'm struggling to put this into words and like to really impose how important that is. But like that 15% difference in viewership really does make the difference between hypothetically like 2 million views on a video and like 10 in my head. Um, and so, yeah, like hook 
the heck out of people, you know, assure them what they clicked on is a clickbait, get right into it and over deliver. Those are kind of the, that's the thing. Like that's the beauty of YouTube is there's no such thing as perfection. You can always learn. You can always improve. Your videos can always be better. Even here where we're spending three to $4 million on some videos and I have giant teams and I've 10 years in researching this and I have no life. And um, <laughs> I still like learn stuff all the time. You know, when I talk to my YouTube friends, they'll teach me things like even little things like, you know, having more, having better lighting at the beginning is, mm -hmm. is better for retention, right? Like this guy, one of my friends, he went through and he mapped out all his intros where it was like darker, uh, like kind of dark, like he would film in a closet or like somewhere mm. where there wasn't as good lighting and compared him to videos where he had just phenomenal lighting, very evenly lit skin and bright. And the ones with better lighting, there was a clear correlation that had less viewer drop off. And that makes a lot of sense. Not everyone's phones all, all turned all the way up or, you know, everyone has perfect vision or it's like fully mm -hmm. paying attention. Like the brighter covers just do grab you and grab your attention. It's easier to see blah, blah, blah. Um, and like, that's something like I did what? I'm just going to wake up one day and be like, you know what? We're going to compare the brightness of or the retention <laughs> on our videos with intros that have dark intros to our videos with bright. It's like, no, like that's not something I would have thought of, but it's like, that's, you know, I'm always learning things because I just surround myself with freaking natures that just study the dumbest stuff and they just always teach me things, you know? <laughs> um, and so anyways, that's, that's kind of the beauty of YouTube is there's like, there is no end game. It's like, you know, I'm about to hit 100 million subscribers. So I'm, I feel like we're just getting started. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's going to be like more iterations people, that come. Yeah, most people would think like, oh, 100 million is the goal, the end point. You know, like I think one day people have a billion subscribers. And mm -hmm. even then, whoever hits a billion first, their videos could still be way better because there's no such thing as a perfect video. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Well, yeah. let's talk more about that. I mean, where do you think, you know, you know, this is going to progress in, with, with the creator economy and the creator community? Um. How are creators going to continue to drive impact? I mean, you have this channel that's obviously doing great, but mm -hmm. you also did Team Trees where you uh, raised more yep. than $20 million to plant, you know, 20 million trees. You, you did Team Cs where you were able to help collect over 30 million pounds of trash raising over. We also million, which... did Team Bs. Did you see that one? No, I'm not very familiar with Team Bs. You mentioned it earlier. That was a lie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I believe you and I have talked about Bs in the past, though. Uh, yeah, I don't think enough people care about Bs, though. Uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, there's probably better causes, but yeah, yeah, we did. We did do Team Trees, Team Cs. Actually, like the beauty of those campaigns is we never turned them off. So like people can still donate and every dollar donated a tree is still planted. So Team Trees is actually on, Team Trees is almost on 24 million trees, which is pretty crazy. What's wow. Team C's on? Yeah. And then Team C's is on 32 and a half. So yeah, basically um, we started uh, the campaign. Most people have probably heard of it where every dollar donated was a tree planted and then we followed it up with the C. Every dollar donated, we pulled a pound of trash. By we, I mean, we partnered with some charities, pulled a pound of trash out of the ocean. Crazy. Um, I know what's interesting though is you would think like because of the wild wild successes of both of those 55 million basically raised for for, for those charities between team trees and team c's you would think more people would kind of copy it and do it but i don't know and honestly maybe i just haven't been paying attention but i haven't seen anyone try to like em emulate the the success you know what i mean like it's clear you if you get enough influencers together around something their viewers care about like people will respond and you can do crazy stuff um and uh, yeah, I mean, it shows the power of, of influencers and also shows just like how much viewers actually care. You know what I mean? When you give them an ability to do something good, you're like, hey, yeah, because like a lot of people want to help the environment, but like they don't know what to do, like go buy a shovel and plant a tree, to, you know? Um, so when you're like, hey, you know, here's a way you can help for every dollar the Arbor Day is going to plant a tree, you know, um, then they respond. And so that was that was really cool to see. But, but it was interesting as, as we were like working on that um, Team C's, you know, obviously there's no creators paid to, to be a part of that, but nope. because you and Mark like really like started the initiative and got people just excited, um, you had, you know, tens of thousands of creators that are like, Hey, we want to be a part of this. Um, do you see, you know, in the future, bigger projects like this happening? Yeah, 100%. And, and I agree. It is important that it was creator homegrown because it's like, when we message people, um, and also thank you guys for helping us blast out emails and reach out to people. That did help bring in a lot of uh, smaller creators and volume, which is important. So it doesn't just look like a top thing. It also, we had people from all sizes doing videos, which was great. Um, but uh, yeah, like, 
you know, none of the creators were like, oh, how much money are you going to pay me? What's in it for me? It's like <laughs> almost all of them. We were like, hey, you know, Team Trees did well. We're doing TMCs. We want to help the ocean. Like, you know, are you down to make a video on it? And they were just like, sure, when? That, that, the question was when, not how yeah. much, which is very beautiful to see. And like, I, I can't think of a single negative experience I had with someone besides them just not responding to my message, which is fine. They might not have saw it <laughs> uh, with TMCs. Like, the, yeah, creators are, are, are awesome, honestly. Yeah, no, for sure. And hopefully, you know, this catches on as a trend where it's not, you know, just you and Mark Robert, you know, doing this, but where you have thousands of creators figuring out how to do this. And I think that is happening. Agreed. I think it's happening a lot, specifically in gaming and live streaming. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm excited just to see that trend, you know, pick up um, because because I hate Mark Rober. Uh, and I don't want to have to work with them. So please, someone else take this stuff I, over. <laughs> what are you the most excited about? I don't know, man. Everything. It's beautiful seeing YouTube still growing year over year. Um, like you said, more money's coming in. Everything. Um, I, I I do think we're due for some people to like come in and like really do something different. I don't know if you feel it, but YouTube, I don't want to say stale. There's more creators than ever. And there's a lot of people doing unique stuff. But I don't know. I haven't. I don't know. I'm ready to see like what that next wave is. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, and so that would be interesting because there always is another wave. You think like, oh no, people are too solidified. There's all these big creators, and then someone always comes up. You know, and I still think, like, I think the last wave was basically like the TikTokers and you know and all that stuff. Um, and like, I feel like we're due for something else. And I'm I'm excited to see like what or you know maybe it was like the the Dream SMP. They came after the TikTokers and they had a, they had a huge. Uh, impact but yeah the the point is what i'm most excited for i'm excited to see who who's on the come up and who's about to like really shake things up because i feel like i don't know i feel like things are getting a little stale like we're due for some fresh stuff you know have you ever thought of having your own platform or having your own site that is different than what you're doing on youtube that's different than what you're doing on tiktok yeah i mean i've i've thought a lot about you know i, I love youtube i'm youtube's always gonna be my main priority but but for like the hardcore fans um well, I, I'm not opposed to doing like a beast world or some, some other thing that's like $10 a month. And, you know, we do exclusive content and some live streams and stuff like that. And, and just make this really kick-ass things for people who want more of us. Cause I mean, like we're talking about the videos are getting so expensive that that would be a great way to um, generate more revenue for them and more predictable revenue. Cause like, you know, these videos are so big and we're working on so many that like, if I knew like, Hey, I have 10,000 or a hundred thousand subscribers paying 10 bucks a month. I, I have a guaranteed million dollars coming in next month from this thing that would allow me to be a little bit more aggressive and do bigger videos on the main channel. So if I did do it, the ultimate goal would be to use the money to make better main channel videos, but also obviously add value because everything we do has got to be great. Um, but yeah, no, actually I, I'm honestly seriously considering it. I think it, <laughs> it, it would be a good idea. That's amazing. That's just a whole other level of thinking. Um, yeah. So, as we wrap up, I, I want to ask you about, you know, your, your businesses, like, you know, you have Beast Burger, um, um, you know, you have your, 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 your um, Beastables. Um, what are you the most excited about right now when it comes to like your brands? Because you've proven to not only build your own Hollywood, but you're also building a bunch of brands too. I'm excited. We're Feastables is going to launch in thousands of stores later this year. I can't say which ones, but I'm excited about that um because i i kind of i call it like irl thumbnails like if when i was 13 if i walked into we'll just say hypothetically 7-eleven gas station parents are getting gas i walk in there if i stole a hershey's bar and a pewdiepie bar i'm buying the pewdiepie bar a hundred times out a hundred times like that's the coolest thing ever to me if i'm 13 14 15 16 it's like oh my gosh why you know especially if the if it tastes just as good high quality ingredients it's a good chocolate bar right i'm buying it every day of the week and so I think we're going to get the similar effect as we start to get, we've done over $10 million in sales and we're not even in retail yet. That's wow. Just straight online. That's amazing. Yeah, with, uh, All around the, with the, the feastables. Bar. Yeah. Just around feastables. And so I think, you know, I call it IRL thumbnails when like, you know, our audience is walking through these stores and they see it, you know, cause people buy chocolate bars. They do crazy amounts of revenue every year. Why would they buy a normal one when they could buy one of one of their favorite creators? You know what I mean? Because I know if I was in their shoes, I would do the same thing in a heartbeat. And it's cool. It's really cool. And our bars are high quality ingredients and they're not super processed and, and they taste great. So it's like, uh, anyways, I'm excited to get our bars in as many retail stores as possible and just hopefully expand it to where we're in 10,000 different locations one day. And 
I think, like I said, IRL thumbnails, the fact that it's ours and, you know, we, they're great quality and they taste great. I think it's just going to destroy. I, I agree. I, I love, I, I love the Feast Bowls product, you know, being, you know, that we discussed, you know, your successes and you're someone that so many creators out there idolize. Um, who, you know, did you idolize growing up? It doesn't have to be a creator, whether it's an inventor or business executive you mentioned steve jobs earlier it kind of changes throughout the the years i think you know obviously pewdiepie just because of i liked how humble he was and how it, it didn't go to his head he, you know at one point um when i was really young it was even like the the paul brothers a little bit the fact that like logan made like a video every day for 500 days kind of just helped me realize like you know if you want it you can make it happen stop being a, a lazy you know I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. <laughs> Stop being lazy. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, and then, you know, after that, it was, you know, a lot of like Elon and, and Steve Jobs, like probably the last few years have been my, the people I look up to the most, just like Steve, he, you know, he's mean to his employees. I don't think he should have been, he could have been nice and accomplished as much in my opinion, but his unrelenting obsession with making a great product and like this iPhone, you know, iPhones is like the most successful product in history ever created. You know what I mean? And it's just so beautiful and so far ahead of its time. And he was so just obsessed with making a great product. And I, I want to have that kind of obsession with videos. I want to make the best video, period, no matter what. The best videos on the fucking planet. No excuses. And so Steve really inspires me in that way. And then Elon and just uh, the way that, you know, he built SpaceX, Tesla at the same time. Like, that also <laughs> kind of, you know, opened my eyes that, like, really anything's possible. It's just kind of like, how bad do you want it? You know what I mean? If he can put you know, build a company that's going to put people on Mars while also weaning us off of gas cars at the same time, you know, I can get a YouTube video out the door. You know what I mean? Wow. No, that, that's amazing. And it's amazing who inspires you and what drives you. Um, you once told me um, that your goal um, was to make a billion dollars and to give it all away. What, what's your updated goal in the last couple of years? Um, well, I know that dying with a bunch of money is a complete waste of time. Uh, or not waste of time. It's just dumb. You know what I mean? Uh, I enjoy helping people. And so if I'm going to spend my whole life making money just because it's kind of fun, before I die, I want to give literally 100% of everything I own away. Because just why not? Who cares? Mm -hmm. After I'm dead, I'm dead. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I wouldn't, I, instead of putting a dollar amount on it, now it's more just, I just want to make as much money as I can in my life and then do as much good with that money before I die. That's basically what I want to do. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, Jimmy? Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And, um, and to be a part of the celebration of, of Creator Day, April 23rd. Um, we celebrate the anniversary of like the first YouTube video, which is, you know, do you know which video that is? Yeah, of course. Meet me at the zoo. Yeah, meet me at the zoo. Um, just like that video is history, you know, historic. You know, I really believe the stuff that you're doing is going to be stuff that's oh not Oh my just, gosh. Hey, hey, hey let, let me do Say this. Say something let me do this. Hey, I'm not no. up. I'm, not I, second I'm leaving. You know, I'm... Uh, hey. <laughs> well, anyways, he's still on. He just turned off his, his camera. But I, I, I think what Jimmy's doing is historic. And it's going to change um, how entertainment works. And it's going to be something that's gonna, not going to be remembered for decades. But I think it's going to be what he is doing is going to be remembered for over a century. And so thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please like this video and subscribe. And um, see you all soon. That was so inspirational. So one of the things that I really love about Mr. Beast um, is that he's not only just a, an incredibly successful YouTube creator, but he's doing so much good in the world. Um, you know, he's an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, like, and just an inspiration to a lot of people out there. So i um, super excited that we were able to get him to, to do an exclusive interview specifically for Creator Day. Um, if you want to watch more content from Ricky Ray Butler, and uh, from Jimmy, Mr. Beast. Um, you can watch that on the Creative Disruption channel. We will put that uh, a link to that um, in the chat. Make sure you stick around here first. Don't go away because we do have some giveaways and we're still going to play some games. But if you want to continue uh, watching that content, uh, we'll make that link available for you. All right. Daniel, let's let's jump into some Mr. Beast trivia. We're oh gonna... boy. Who's been paying attention? Who's been following along? Who knows what Jimmy's been up to? Um, well, we're going to find out. We're going to put, we're going to put our audience to the test. This is right, for our let's audience. Do this. All right. So I'll read the first one, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you pick the winner for this one. Okay. So, 
Um, for those of you who have been here for a while, you kind of know how this goes, but for everyone else, I'm gonna read the questions here. Uh, this is trivia, so you're just gonna pick one of these answers. You're gonna put the letter that corresponds to the answer, you're gonna put that in chat, and then if you're really nice to Daniel and he likes you, he might pick you as the winner. Um, <laughs> let's see, we're gonna give away some yes, creator <laughs> Random acts of compliments, uh, actually <laughs> alongside your choice may potentially sway my decision. Yeah, just putting that out there. So we are gonna be giving away some Creator Day t-shirts. Um, let's see if you can see the Creator Day logo That's there. That's a good looking mug. That is a good looking mug. Yeah. All I right. met your face, but that, that <laughs> cup is nice too. I put it right, right in the mug in front of my mug. <laughs> there we go, the mug in front of the mug. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Beast trivia. All of this is related to Mr. Beast. How many official YouTube channels does Mr. Beast have? A, one, B, three, C, six, D, 19. All right, give him a second. So put, by the way, C6 is the spot in my vertebrae that I've been having the most amount of pain since I uh, had those death nuts and fell over on my kitchen floor. <laughs> Just want to I blame no there. one but you for those. You literally I, were the one I, who suggested those. <laughs> there are times that is all when, your fault. There are times when you set the bear trap and step into it. This was one of those times. You know that chip <laughs> was hotter than I expected. I actually didn't even make it through the full chip. Right, I, I took a, a bite chip. and I was like, "No, right. this isn't happening." <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. It was a tough. Sometimes we think these things out just on the fly. Like, how bad can it be? And you're like, "Wow." Yeah, that uh, that went horribly wrong. That was much worse than I expected. I actually so people. Are... Oh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I would have kept going with that one, but um, I hadn't eaten lunch yet, and I knew that I was still gonna be on this live stream for hours. So I was like, no, "All right, so how I... how hard do I want to go for this? We should have done I, it." You know, congrats end. to you. You've been you've been doing this all day long. So I came in later on, so it was easy for me to go look at me, the hero. <laughs> You're like, "Oh my gosh, I can't even keep up right now." We're getting yeah. a lot of. I'm looking what's popping up here. C C D C C. A lot of people think it's C. All C6. right, well, let's, let's reveal the answer. Let's do it. That, in fact, is the correct answer. C6, he has six channels. He's got the main channel. He's got the gaming channel. He's got the uh, environmental channel. He's got, got the uh, the home the home cooked meals channel, um, the one where he does uh, cross continental biking. I'm making all of this up. I don't even know what the other channels are. He just oh, well, he's got up. one for shorts. <laughs> so you got you got a couple of them right in there, and then a few made up ones that kind of yeah, sounded well, real. You know, listen, it's not the first <laughs> time I've told a, a fabrication here on the uh, Two Buddy channel. Listen, I'm gonna try to pick someone. I'm gonna see how these roll over. I'm gonna go with. Barbara Angle. Barbara Angle at C6 with six in parentheses, writing it out so that we understand it. Barbara Angle, let her know how she can make sure she claims her prize. Yes. So congratulations to you for winning your Creator Day shirt. Um, you can find a pinned uh, comment in the live chat. There is a form there. Make sure you fill out that form and we'll get that shirt over to you. Nice. Awesome. Let's move on to the next one. All right. What state is Mr. Beast from? Ooh. A, Kentucky. B, Kansas, C, Vermont, D, North Carolina. I know the answer to this one, so I'm not going to guess. Oh, I hate that you know this stuff. I don't know. So this one I would get completely wrong. I'd be totally guessing. Um, all right, I'm not going to say. I don't want to influence. I don't want to influence anybody's guess. Kentucky, Kansas, Vermont, North Carolina. All right, I'm going to. I want to throw. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to say that he's. I'm going to guess. Because I'm from the New England seacoast, and I don't think he's from Vermont. But, man, look at those. Kentucky, Kansas, North Carolina. All right, I got my guess dialed in. I don't think it's C, but. What do you think it is? Let's lock in. Yeah, what do you think it is? I'm going to say North Carolina is East Coast. So it's either Kansas or Kentucky, because I know he's a little more Midwest, but Kentucky's more East Coast. You only get one answer. Just pick one. I know. I'm trying to work my make, way through make this. Make a decision. Stop? Why are you gonna be? Why are you gonna put the pressure on me like this? I'm gonna. I'm. Mm, I should know the this. Heat is too. on. I'm gonna say can't. Ah, uh, no, it's not Kansas. That's too Midwestern. I'm gonna say Kentucky. All right. Let's see the answer. Oh, I had the K. It so was the close. K. So close. All right. You want to pick a winner? Yeah, I do want to. I'm gonna go with who's got B. I'm looking for a B. A lot of D's. A lot of people thought North Carolina. 
you know, I, it's a great place to live. Wow, a lot of people thought North Carolina, the first BIC. I'm a, no, I can't give it. To, I uh, yes, Miguel Pereira. Uh, I'm going to give it to you, Miguel Pereira. Uh, he's the first B that I saw. That was a fantastic guess. I would have gotten it wrong. All right, congratulations. You're one of the few who got that answer right. So congratulations. That was a tough to one. That was a tough one. Make sure that you find the pinned comment, fill out that form so that we can get you your Creator Day t-shirt. All right, let's 100%. move on to the next question. Yes, when did Mr. Beast create his first YouTube channel? A, was it in 2014? B, was it in 2012? C, was it in 2008? Or D, was it in 2020? Give us your guess, drop that into the chat. I think I know. Now, I think I know that I wasn't so good on where he's from, but I think I know when he started. Yeah, I can't play this. I made a video about where he started, so oh, I know no, this one, yeah, too. Yeah. Are you guys dating? What, is there some is there things that <laughs> no, we're going to develop later on? It. In he a follow-up stream, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you'll find all the sort of details of the Renee. Does it Jimmy. count if he doesn't know? No. He's like, wait, what did I sign up for? I don't remember that happening. All right. Do we got enough answers in? Yeah, let me guess before you let me give my okay. guess. I well, think we had enough. I yeah. think if I if my memory serves that it was 2012 B that Jimmy started on the platform. All right, let's reveal the answer. Boom. Well done. Well done on that one. All right, I want you to pick one though this time. You're going to pick the winner. I will pick a winner. I'm going to pick LA Math Tutor. LA Sweet. Math Tutor, congratulations to you. You are winning a Creator Day t-shirt. Make sure you find that pinned comment, fill out the form and we'll get that over to you. Love it. You know that I found, I found my, hold on. I found my, I found my t-shirt from last year. I didn't wear it because I went with TubeBuddy, but I was right there. I was so close. I have last year's Creator Day t-shirt. Aw. You I know. I love the merch. I saw, I, I was using the Creator Day mug um, yesterday from last year, and it was great kind of seeing the two of them together and see how we've. We're evolving. I, I, you know what? It, it, I'm one of those people that I really love um, picking up these things along the way, as you can see behind me. <laughs> you know, like things that remind me of those moments of uh, uh, in my life. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. Like anytime I collect, I collect those things. And my girlfriend yells at me like, "We need to get rid of some of this stuff." All right, not all the T-shirts, guitars, and everything you've ever done in your life. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I am. I've made space in my closet for the new Creator Day T-shirt, so I'm looking forward to when that comes my way. Good, and we may we may be able to help save some space and make uh, make your girlfriend feel a little bit better. We can we can launch an NFT for Creator Day next year, and you just have a digital collectible. Count me in. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but you know I'm learning. <laughs> we'll see. All right, uh, next question here. So name his two major team fundraisers. And by his, we're talking about Mr. Beast. His two major team fundraisers. Yes, everything is Mr. Beast. So gotcha. first one A. Bees and trees, mm -hmm. uh, B, trees and C's, mm -hmm. C, C's and B's, mm -hmm. the tongue twister, D, go. C's and please. All right. Please. Please. All right. Listen, I'm, like I said, I can't I'm not help the but chuckle a little bit. I'm not the brightest guy on the panel, but I don't think he was raising money for please. You know what the problem is? There's not enough please and thank yous in the world. And Mr. Beast is going to solve that for you right now. That's true. He's, he's just trying to be polite. Come on. Give him a break. Politeness is completely <laughs> underrated. And we're going to raise the elevation of awareness. All right. Do you have your answer locked in? I have mine. I mean, I know what it is, so I can't. Stop I can't it. lock it in either. Why, so. do you keep, why are you such a know-it-all? These I poor believe... people out here are just trying to play along. And you're like, I know everything. I, you know what? I, I, I'm not trying to be a Monica over here. Hopefully people get that reference. <sighs> She's totally I, uh, Monica. She's friend. totally Monica. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we've done some work with Mr. B. So yeah, so I know a few of these things. All right, let um, me guess before you count it down. You ready? I'm thinking it's because uh, I've been part of at least one of these. Mm -hmm. I think it's B, trees and C's. You think it's B? Yes. Let's show the answer. Oh, All thank right. goodness. If I there got that go. wrong, I would have well felt, felt horrible. Trees and seeds. Yeah, so he raised money for both planting trees, a dollar a tree. And that was the one. I love that one. I followed that on Twitter when Elon Musk out of nowhere, like they just kind of like, hey, why don't you donate? And he dropped a million dollars on Twitter. Like, what is this? You know, you're going to plant for every dollar you plant a tree? He goes, all right, count me in for a million. 
That's when you realize the power of creators across social media. When you go, did he just get Elon Musk to drop a million dollars in the same sentence where he went, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that team trees and team C's, one, it just shows how amazing Mr. Beast is, but it also just shows the power of creators and the community. Yeah. So that yeah. was just such a wonderful thing about both of those programs. I love it. Um, and, and, all, right, and, 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 and putting the power of creators towards a good cause, like the, the, the not just always about, um, you know, trying to build your own brand out, but actually trying to affect change in the world was just such a good, uh, it was a really great thing to watch happen. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a really special thing. Let's pick a winner. So okay. I want to pick, pick a I'm winner. I'm going to pick them this time. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go, oh, I just went really fast. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to let it roll over one more time. I'm going to go with Dream P. Dream P, who chose B, right? Yeah, Dream P. That's the one I'm going to go with. Dream P, who chose P. All right, Dream congratulations to Dream P for choosing, Dream P for choosing B. Um, make sure that you uh, check out that pinned comment, fill out that form, and we'll get your Creator Day t-shirt over to you. Nice. Um, so that wraps up the game, but now we have a ton more giveaways. So we we're kind of wrapping things up here. Let's just give away everything we have left. Let's go full Mr. Beast. Let's give everything away we have left. So we're giving away your guitars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Take them. Giving it all away. Let's go. All right. First up, uh, Spread Shop. Let me see what we got here. Um, let's uh, let's start with a bang with this one. So yeah. we have another Team Awesome um, uh, strategy session to give away. So Team Awesome is... Uh, basically, work, uh, part of Spreadshop and working to figure out, working with creators to figure out their merch strategy. Oh, so a there's a lot time. of creators out there who are creating merch. Sometimes they're not that successful with it. And so oh. Team Awesome can help you really build out that strategy to be successful. Um, they were actually a big help in uh, partnering with us for the Creator Day merch. So we got a session essentially with Team Awesome, um, and it was amazing. So it's really something special to give away. Um, so for this one in the chat, put the word shop. You can copy and paste it as many times as you want. And Daniel over here is going to pick a winner for us. Yeah, shop. I'm looking for it. I'm going to give it a minute. I'm going to let the roulette wheel roll over. Uh, shop, 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 shop. What do I want? Who do I want? I'm going to go with uh, not ship. You can't get ship. Come on. You got to at least get the spelling right. I'm going to go with uh, T-R-X-B-E-Z. Pronounce that for me. Who said shop? Trexbez? Trexbez? Uh, I'm going to hand it to you, my friend. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Again, find that pinned comment. Fill out that form. We'll get you the information. Hook you up with Team Awesome. Yes. All right. Um, next up is still from Spreadshop. We're going to give away the last $100 voucher that we have that you can use for your own merch. Ooh. If you haven't created a Spreadshop account, you definitely should. Um, and then you can buy some merch from the spread shop. And they really have a lot of different offers, um, a lot of different uh, types of things that you can buy. Yeah, so, you know, I think that people don't understand. Mug. You can make anything you want for your own production set. A hundred dollars worth of, worth of merch is a ton of merch. So you can be building all the kinds of things that you might want to use for yourself or send away like this wonderful DB mug. Um, or or you know, there's another piece of merch right there. Or I got you know t-shirts. Um, the the ability to make your own merch and either use it, wear it, give it away. A uh, hundred dollars will take you a very long way down the road towards promoting your own brand. So that was very generous of the good people at Spreadshop to give these away. Yep, absolutely. So put in the word shop. We're going to do the same word again. Shop. You can copy and paste it as many times as you like. And Daniel, you, you get to do the honors again. Sarah Chung with an accent because that name is awesome. Sarah Chung with an accent is the winner. That was so quick. That's the quickest that you've picked a winner I so know. far. I'm so, usually indecisive. Well done on that name. So congratulations. Find that pinned comment. Fill out that form, and we'll get um, we'll get that hundred dollar value. Wait, were you being passive aggressive right there? Like, oh my gosh, you were finally fast. Like, it's not passive it. aggressive. That, that was, was just that aggressive. was very blatant. straight out aggressive. <laughs> just there's no passive forward. part. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next giveaway. What do we have here? All right, social blue book. I'm going to start moving a little bit quicker because I know yep. we're kind of hitting time here, but I still want to give away a ton of stuff. So, let's do it. social blue book. Um, for this one, you're going to put in the word blue book, blue um, book. copy and paste as many times you want in the chat. 
blue book, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and we're going to pick a winner. Drop it. Who's picking? Me, you. You're going to pick all of them. I'll announce them. You pick them. All you right, get- cool. Blue book. I'm going to go with Luva Bora. Luva Bora. L-U-V-A-B-O-R-A. Luva Bora, you are our winner for that particular prize. Awesome. Congratulations. Find that pinned comment. Fill out the form, and we'll get that over to you. All Congrats. right. What is next? Ecamm. Um, Ecamm, if you haven't done any live streaming, Ecamm is a great resource for that. And if you have done some live streaming, want to check out um, a new tool, Ecamm is perfect for that. Um, so put in the word Ecamm in the live chat, copy paste, do it as many times as you can, put in some comments, some compliments for, uh, for Daniel, see if he'll pick yeah. you. The first person who mentions something about my hair, I'm going to pick them. I'm telling you right now, that's where I'm going. I'm just like, if you mention hair, I'm like, it's you're the winner. I'm watching. I'm watching the chat right now. I'm right. I know we're on a delay, so I'm watching. I'm watching. I know I'm making this harder. I see. You know, I asked Air Force. Oh, it's it's Magic Flying Potato. I'm sorry. I'm giving it to him. I know he won earlier, but Magic Flying Potato said Hair Force won. That is a winner in my book. Oh, that's good. That's a nice pun. Fun. Yeah, yeah, compliment, pun, everything kind of wrapped into one there. Get you know, I did it. ask people to give you a compliment, and one person just said bye. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> a story of my life. Can you say one nice thing about me? I'll see you. Bye. No, was, I'm out of you here. <laughs> you've asked too much. You've crossed the line. All right. Well, congratulations to the last winner for Ecamm. Make sure you find that pinned comment. Nice. Fill out the form, and we'll get that over to you. Cool. Uh, what else? All right. Channel reviews. So we're going to move quickly. Channel reviews is by TubeBuddy. It's going to really help you understand what's working in your content, what's not, so that you can do better. Um, put in the word review into the chat. Copy paste as many times as you want. Daniel, you're up. You could pick pick someone that gives you a compliment or just doesn't leave and say goodbye. I want you to say something nice about Renee. The first nice thing I see review and a nice word said about Renee, no matter what it is, I'm going to look at and go, what's the first nice thing that's said about Renee? And if you say something nice that I spot, I have to be able to see it. Review, 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 review. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. My eyes are scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. I know it takes, we get a little bit of delay here. Sometimes that seven second delay can really be worked against us. Review, explore, E-X-P-L-O-R-E-R. Explore said beautiful. Called you beautiful. You are the winner of this particular event. I'll take it. Well done. Forced compliments. (laughs) Listen, we gotta we have to if we have to scratch and, and beat for them that we will we will do that. We'll, we'll make it happen. All right. Well, <laughs> congratulations to you and me in certain ways. So uh uh-huh. congratulations to you. Uh, find that pinned comment, fill out that form, and we'll get the channel review over to you. All right. Well, look at, no, look, she I, the beautiful kept coming up. So I want to say that that wasn't just a whatever throw out compliment. People find you to be particularly attractive. And I think you should take that home with you tonight. Thank you. The end I'll of the take stream. that as a compliment. Hmm. Um, two buddy legend level license. Ooh. All right. Put in the word legend. Legend. So legend, copy paste as many times as possible into the chat. Daniel, you're going to pick our winner. All right. The first person who puts in um, legend and asks and adds the word Mr. Beast. I'm going to pick you. I'm going to pick you the first one I see because uh, the the only legend that I think we've had in the last few minutes here, it certainly wasn't me, was Mr. Beast, who just did a great job of giving us so much legendary uh, information. So I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm looking for Mr. Beast. Oh, there it is. A petty, pretty combi, pretty combi, P-R-E-T-T-Y-K-O-M-B-E, pretty combi, uh, pretty comb, combi. Please uh, fill out the uh, the pin comment. Uh, Was it a pin comment? That's where we have it. Yeah, we have a pinned comment in the live chat. You can fill out a form. We don't know how to pronounce your name, but you yeah. know who you are. Pretty cool. You calm. won. Go to that form. Right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I think this may be the last giveaway. I'm not I'm not sure. We'll see what comes up. But uh, we're going to give away another Creator Day bundle. So the all right, let me, all right, let me pick the, wor- the word and you pick the winner. How about that? Done. Done. Okay, the word I'd like you to drop into the chat is bundle. Nice and simple. All right, let's see it. Copy, paste, copy, paste, bundle. Copy, paste, bundle. The first bundle you see, Renee. Man, you first a, bundle I see. You get a nice bundle. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to you. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, like, why do they let him on air? I don't even know. Don't we have filters? And, a, and I requested you. What is wrong with me? All right, we're going with, uh, oh, it moved too quickly. Oh. Uh, we're going with Lori Meeks. 
Lori Meeks, great name. Lori Meeks, you're the winner of our Creator Day bundle. So it's a awesome. free two buddy license. Uh, also two months free of Social Blue Book, two months free of uh, Soundstripe, which is a great uh, audio resource. So really um, wonderful. Oh, and two months free of Ecamm. So you get all oh, sorts huge. of stuff yeah. in this creator bundle. So congratulations yeah. to you. Find that pinned comment, put in the information in the form, and we'll get that over to you. Wow, a lot of winners today. That was I'm amazed how much people have really uh, have, have, have stuck around and really uh, enjoyed the festivities that have occurred here on the TubeBuddy channel for Creator Day. Yeah, we, well, we were giving away all sorts of stuff. We pulled out all the stops for this one. We got some great creators to come join us. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, Is TubeBuddy covering my hospital bill for the colonoscopy that I'll need after eating all that hot sauce and stuff? Or, or, or no, that's all You know what? Mind. I'm going to say it again. That is on you. All right. Okay. Well, I'll remember <laughs> that. Was that was by your request. You <laughs> sent me the items. All on you. We have no liability for that. <laughs> Listen, people, sometimes you need to read the fine print before you say yes. I'm just going to throw that out there. Listen, this has been a ton of fun. And I, 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 I got to say, Thank you for having me on, Renee, and th huge thanks to everybody has who've uh, who's participated along the way today. Everybody in the chat, people have been following along, people have been uh, playing along and entering all of the crazy contests that we got going on here. This has been really great. Yeah, this has been so much fun. So I am I am all cons consistently like humbled by our community and how uh, wonderful and amazing. What do you say? Um, we do it again tomorrow. Let's do it. Nine uh, hours this time. <laughs> I need a little time for my digestive tract to recuperate. You were gonna, you're gonna live stream from the island, <laughs> yes. so we're we're back at it again uh, tomorrow. So I'm gonna wrap things up here, but thank you again for everyone who participated. Congratulations to all of the winners, um, and thank you so much for helping to celebrate you and the creator community. Um, if you like this video and content like this, make sure to like and subscribe so that we can see you in future videos. All right. Thank you, everyone.